happy birthday to me. It's uh, my 59th birthday here at the Hotel Orloff. And what a better place to be celebrating my 59th birthday than the historic and beautiful Hotel Orloff here in Roll Retreat, Virginia. Thank you, all zero of you, for showing up. I'm, I was going to wait till 11, and I should because friends of mine are doing a live stream over on another network. But uh, it's unfortunate, but we're going to have to go live now here on WWTD TV, Channel 47, the Grotto Orloff Memorial Inspirational Network. <laughs> we. Uh, because we have birthday presents that just arrived, and I want to open them. I'm not going to wait till 11. Are you mad? <laughs> yeah, I got two uh, boxes here from Gotham City Comics because uh, several friends, I think maybe three, possibly four friends, kicked in and were getting stuff for my whole pile there at the historic Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona, run by owner and proprietor Kevin Johnson. You need to, you need to stop by there and. If you live there locally or fly there, if you don't, or just call him up. His, uh, you can call him. Up. I've got his refrigerator. I've got a refrigerator magnet here on the uh, refrigerator. So let's see. Uh, where can you see it there? There it is. Can you make out that phone number? I don't know. I, um, we have a, uh, we have the upgraded stream yard. So the question is, does it look better? Oh, let me try cleaning the lens because sometimes that is important. How's that? How does that look? <laughs> so uh, let's see. Gotham City Comics says happy birthday, and Meyer Greenblatt says happy birthday, and someone else is watching because it says three people, so it must be another person. So uh, let's open this stuff, and uh, I've gotten presents from spinner rack studios some vintage issues of the flash that he got from captain strange life to give to me captain strange life sent me bags and boards that were very appreciated and then he sent me a 50 dollar amazon gift card uh, yesterday and so i gotta figure out what i can get from amazon i mean there's all kinds of amazon's got everything I'm hesitant to order books from Amazon, which is ironic because it started as a bookseller, but they they send you heavy books and a big box with no packing, and they all get dinged up usually. But but they sell a lot of other stuff than books, so I'm going to find something cool for that. So, um, and and, and uh, John Goris sent me a cool envelope full with neat stuff, and uh, and uh, Meyer Greenblatt sent me. Uh, a mysterious gift, and uh, George Soros at the World Economic Forum sent me some as well. And um, my wife took me out to see Godzilla X Kong, whatever that means. But we saw that last night, and it was—I enjoyed it. I mean, it doesn't really look like Godzilla, and it doesn't really look like King Kong. I don't know why they don't try to make them actually look like the actual characters. I mean, I can tell they're. It's almost like, you know, someone didn't have the rights to the characters, so they make it almost look like King Kong and Godzilla. But they have the rights to the characters, so I don't really get it. But it's fun. It's like watching... Uh, I don't know. It's like watching a video game for a couple hours. Or, like, it's got a little... I don't know. Maybe it's better than that. A little bit of Richard Corbin colors and stuff going on. I... I it's, it's better than sitting at home and staring at the wall. Um, so, yes, that's my review of Godzilla x Kong, And they had a review for Civil War. I, I, don't, I don't know if that was just attached to the print of Godzilla x Kong, or, if, uh, or is it Godzilla times Kong, like a math problem? I don't know. I don't know but if they're actually going to play that Civil War movie here in this small town, I... <laughs> But um, they're trying real hard. Yesterday, some guy lit himself on fire. Um, some some guy that if you look on the Internet, you can see a picture of him uh, standing next to uh, Bill Clinton. So you're wondering what political affiliation he was. 
Oh, who cares? We don't talk about politics here. Um, so let's open up this box here. Let's see what's going on, man. And again, I apologize. Uh, I'll go back and watch the, the that uh, comic book memory show later. I gotta open my 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 Christmas presents, man. Uh, this is great because we're having real financial trouble here at the Hotel Orloff. Um, we're uh, there's a graveyard in the back that's uh, got a bunch of uh, Civil War soldiers buried there, and we're trying to. Uh, we're trying to uh, keep the great the, the tombstones up, you know, clean them off and everything. And there, are, luckily, there aren't vandals here that like to topple tombstones. We don't have that problem here in rural retreat, Virginia. But. Okay, so the box says fragile. Let's take a look at what's inside. Um, I, I actually got this box a couple, these two boxes a couple hours ago, and I just was going to wait till 11. I can't do it, man. I'm sorry. So I'm going to be hated for that, but I, this is something heavy. Let's see what it is. It's heavy, man. It's far out. Let's see. I'm never really good at this. I hope it things live. I'll like play this is just towards me and I imagine anyone watching the live stream how does the view how does this expensive uh stream yard look because I'm gonna start broadcasting like 24 hours a day because I'm gonna get my money's worth I used to have this friend who was an HP Lovecraft character uh, collector he weighed at least 500 pounds uh, and that's not hyperbole um <laughs> We go to the like furs cafeteria, all you can eat. <laughs> I would put this much food on the, you know, chick fried chicken, mashed potatoes, everything. It was deli- it was it was great. And then he would do the same thing. Of course, he's not alive now, but uh, who knows how long it'll be for me. But anyway, he was always saying, "Well, I've got to get my money's worth," and he he talked very. Uh, <laughs> he talked like those people in the old movies, what they call it, the mid, mid-Atlantic mid accent. You know, in the old movies, it's not quite a British accent, but it's not quite the way we speak in this country. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> the, he, 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 he was just like a guy from another century. He was crazy. How could you even do this? Weird. Okay. It could be a bar of soap, but it's very heavy. Possibly it's a block of uranium sent to... Uh, exterminate me let's see what could it be man because it's heavy like seriously um let's see oh we got people here man uh oh 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 okay all right all right i gotta get to the top here gotham city comics says happy birthday my greenblatt says happy birthday Brian Hosey says, just wanted to pop on and say happy birthday. I hope you have a great day. Gotham City Comics says, I have books on Amazon. You know how I ship. Yes, very well. Look at this. Yes, well then, give me a link to your Amazon account and I'll spend the $50 with you. That's perfect. That's I, that's best of both worlds. Acquisitions of Dr. Fives. Happy birthday, Gratu. Yeah, Dr. Fives was just made peanut of the day over on the Comic Book Memory Show. That was pretty neat. Oh, man. <laughs> I see what he did. We, we broadcast live. This is a gift from Kevin at Gotham City Comics. He sells these for a dollar each. This is probably $50 worth of magnets. Thank you so much, Kevin. This is why we were doing a live stream from a comic book show about a month or so ago, a couple months ago. And there was a guy that had made refrigerator magnets from board games. And I kept, uh, and, and so I was virtually there at the convention. It was like I was next to Kevin and he was, he had the camera. And so he was buying up, uh, I think he bought five or maybe 10 of each wholesale from this guy for a store. And I was telling him, hey, let me get, um, put one of each of these. We were deciding which ones were the best. So uh, 
And of course, this isn't a game I actually own. Yeah, look, my hand's still shaking from the other night, remember? I noticed this is probably a sign of neurological insanity damage. <laughs> Grave damage. So I don't know. But yeah, this is. So yeah, so this is a new thing. Me shaking. Oh, look at this. <laughs> So I upgrade the stream yard for the video quality, and then I can't keep my hands. Look, look, looky. Look at this. Um, Friar Tuck says, happy birthday. So, well, how do I do Friar Tuck? I'm trying to, I think Robin Hood voices. It's got to be a British accent, but it's got to sound tough. Happy birthday, sir, Friar Tuck says. And uh, Last Avenger 85, happy birthday, Gratu. Dr. Five says, video quality looks great. Friar Tuck says, Oop, I didn't click on it, did I? Okay, Friar Tuck says, are the Gravestones Confederate or Union soldiers? Well, we're in, we're in rural retreat, Virginia, so I'll let you draw conclusions on that. And uh, Meyer Greenblatt says, congratulations, Fives. And, and Dr. Five says, thanks, Meyer. It's probably one of the greatest accomplishments of his whole career. <laughs> um, let's see, Twister. I've heard of that game. <laughs> the thing is, all these games, you know, so, some of them are still made. Young know, Twister's still made, but I doubt they use the cool original art. This is a game I own. I just saw it about five minutes ago. I've been moving jukeboxes this morning and pinball machines. It's a fun thing to do. Here's uh, Planet of the Apes. Man, I am shaking. This is a game that I doubt any of us can afford because I would imagine this. I, I don't know. But I'm guessing a Godzilla game would be at least a thousand dollars, wouldn't you think? Charlie's Angels, I would think that would be 75 to a hundred dollars. I'm just guessing. This bewitched game I've never seen in my life, and I imagine it's up there. This is a game that my wife would love. Well, she loved that Bewitched game. I would love this, too. I always liked uh, Twiggy. I got to get something to steady my nerves, man. Maybe I need I need to try this uh, stream yard out. I'm going to try to drive around and see how it, it works if I leave the house. Bullwinkle hide-and-seek game. Howdy Doody TV game. I need to go put these on a... Oh, I know where I'll put them. I'll put them on the cart over there in the library. Land of the Giants. I don't know. Am I boring you? Actually, let's look at these later because there's all these books here and I don't... Okay, remind me we'll look at these later. I want to look at them. Oh, look. See, that's how King Kong's supposed to look. They try to make him look like this old guy, you know. But the one, like kind of like me. But, uh... Yeah, the movie's, movie's okay. What I really want to see is the, the real Godzilla movie uh, that's out uh, called... Uh, I have no idea what it's called, but the, the real Godzilla movie, the one that's been out that's from the point of view of the people looking up at him. What is that thing called? Maybe it's on some kind of streaming channel that my wife and I did. It never came to the local theater here. There weren't that many people in the theater, a town of almost 2,000. I don't even know if there were a dozen people in that theater. All right, look. It's a Gotham City Comics sticker drawn by John Gorris. And John Gorris on YouTube. You've got to subscribe to him. He's got an amazing channel. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, this is a magnetic frame. Oh, look at that. It's a John Gore sticker in a magnetic frame so you can put it on your refrigerator. And then this is what it came in. I can use this on a comic. Okay, so that's that. Then there's this. I don't know what's in here. We can only dream. What do you guys think in the chat? All eight of you <laughs> well that's, that's what it's become eight people watching the network well it's higher ratings than cnn has had in years so 
It's all right. You guys can watch me later. <laughs> but time waits. See, here's where I'm pushing the scissors towards me again. Don't try this at home, kids. Um, we, we point the scissors away towards the uh, audience, towards the people in the chat. Um, let's see here. Okay, it looks like a whole bunch of comics in here, but I don't know what they're going to be. Okay, what will it be? Oh, cool. Okay, so this is part of that um, universe... Uh, Geiger Universe, Ghost Machine that I'm wanting to check into. Oh, he sent me some. These are presents from Kevin himself. This is uh, these are some of the Geiger books that I don't have. I'm once uh, now. I think I have enough. I need to start reading them. And because uh, uh, apparently this is like the best stuff coming out today right now. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is a. Uh, also part of that ghost machine kind of universe, it's uh, Rook Exodus, but apparently it's not related to the Rook, the Warren Rook. That was another great Rook. Ah, oh, someone went away. <laughs> Seven people watching. Um, Godzilla Minus One is the new Japanese movie. That's the one. That's the one that I would like to see. And he's, I, uh, this is the new, it's a new Archie comic, but to me, something's really cool about the Hot hot, the hot Wheels kind of logo and the Hot Rods, just, uh, and it's drawn in the old style. It's not this modern, dark, realistic style that they're using. And, and so, these are some secret books that have been given to me in advance. These are free comic book day books that are coming out soon in a couple of weeks, but um, shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, so probably shouldn't have shown those. <laughs> but I didn't pay for them or anything. Okay, so that's the box one. Now box two, I have not all I did was open the lid. Okay, so there's one of these, I think they call them butterfly boxes. So this is from Jeff who's a regular viewer, and he is actually lucky enough to live near Mesa, so he goes into the the store in person, and sometimes he'll, he'll make contributions to the poor. The poor not. But uh, this is great. I, I have no idea what's in here, man. Guys, thank you so much for making my birthday a uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, it's a bunch of comics. Oh, it's a facsimile of when they killed Gwen Stacy. Amazing. It's a facsimile of an issue of Young Romance. Yeah, these facsimiles are pretty cool. Here's a facsimile of X-Men number four. And this is a weird experience because here's a facsimile of a book I actually own. My mother bought this for me when it came out because I was homesick from school and she she would always go out and buy a few random comics and she happened to pick this one up. Of course, Marvel screws it up with the little UPC code on the front, which DC doesn't do. I'll open these books later when it gets... You know, when we get bored later, there's a lot of stuff happening today. There's a Trump rally that starts in a little bit. Um, anyway, see, DC does not mar the cover. The only thing they mess up that they have to is the price. Although, actually, they don't even do that. There's not a price on the cover. 
So the price and the UPC code barcode are on the back. So the only way you can really tell it's a facsimile, well, it, well, I can tell, but also, also uh, it's uh, it just doesn't have the price tag on the front. Um, and then this is this one I never got because I I should have pretended to be sick the next month and maybe my mom would have grabbed this one but this is the one that modern collectors consider to be the first appearance of wolverine and they only do that because they slab their books and hang them on walls like trophies and this has wolverine on the cover technically wolverine's first appearance is the one that i my mom got me <coughs> um, first appearance justice society at uh, x-men 101 it looks like uh jeff bought all the facsimiles that were in my hold box for me that is so cool thank you so much jeff this is the giant size x-men these are all the books i never could afford to buy um when they came out or actually i didn't really know about spider-man at this point i was buying comics like crazy when this came out but i would have been buying the monster comics next to this and i would have been ignoring this because i just didn't know spider-man yet i didn't really discover the marvel superheroes until marvel treasury edition number two with the fantastic four reprints then that made me realize wake up and, and start looking at the marvel superheroes okay so the um, reprint facsimile of the first issue of superman and that's great thank you jeff thank you kevin thank you meyer thank you spinner rack kevin strange life thank you my wife cleo who else um well uh let's see oh wow this is for Missing Mars. Thank you, Missing Mars. Okay. It's like a bunch of people uh, made contributions through Gotham City Comics. And I mean, some of the, oh, Charlton 66 uh, sent me stuff too. It's probably in this box. And I know Five said he sent me stuff too. So that's probably for coming up in this box here. See, I'm doing it again, pointing the scissors towards myself. That would make for an interesting live stream, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, well. What would be... Oh, wow. oh, this is the stuff I was... Yes, yes, yes. An older lady brought these books into Gotham City Comics. And, oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is my time period, the early 70s. I have... I bought Vault of Evil number one off the stands, but... I never had this one. We'll open this later. It's Vault of Evil number two. Vault of Evil six. I have this. I bought it when I was a kid, but I, I looked at it through the virtual reality of my phone or my computer, and it looks like this one might be better condition than the one I got because the one I got when I was in third grade, I would put notebook, I put notebook paper on the top and traced over the logo Vault of Evil and, and over the monster and made, so mine has indentations on the code these are all great reprints from the 50s vault of evil number nine i never had that one son of satan three i wasn't sh I, I think i have it but I, I think this is an upgrade so i asked him to put that in my pile <laughs> this is like my wife and i's uh, wedding because she's like 13 years younger than me secrets of haunted house this is a title that gets confusing because there was a Secrets of Haunted House and a Secrets of Sinister House. And I keep forgetting if it was the same comic or two different comics. Let's see uh, what the humans in the chat are saying. I love Disney and comics. Oh, hey there. Hey, all. I read that Rook, Ex I read that Rook Exodus was pretty good. The art was good, too. See, that's kind of what I need. I need comics to have good art and good writing. Uh, that's kind of important. I love Disney and comics. Happy birthday. Acquisition of Dr. Fives. Sounds like you had a very sweet mom. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Acquisitions of Dr. Fives. I'm lucky that my mom is still alive and she's also a very sweet, kind heart. 
Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I lost my mom in 2001. And I still have this ritual, much, to, well, I'd say much to the chagrin of my wife, sometimes the chagrin of my wife, but she got into it. Every summer, I watched this horrible show called Big Brother because my mom was so into that the first year it was on and the second year it was on. I would watch some with her in the hospital. And then every year since then, I've watched that show, even though it's, especially the last few seasons, they started to make it really political with different people fighting, t teaming up by skin color and knocking people out of the house based on that. You know, that's completely antithetical to Martin Luther King's uh, whole, whole deal. Oh, Dr. Fibes, this is a heavy, <laughs> heavy one here, man. Thank you, all of you, man. Let's see. Uh, Paulo Costa says, happy birthday, Gratu. Oh, by the way, the link's in the chat. I think it is. Maybe I need to put it there again. At least it was there earlier this morning when I started the stream. Uh, shit. Yeah, buddy. I can see this is some good stuff. I have to go put it all on top of the pinball machine so the dog doesn't chew on it. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so this is Action Mystery Thrills. <laughs> they don't make it like this anymore. <laughs> All it is is covers of comics. Really, ideal, ideally, you've got to... The ideal situation is to buy two of this book. One, you cut the spine and you start framing these covers. And uh, one, you keep on your shelf. Uh, it's almost like that. That's always the joke they made in, the Mad, in Mad Magazine. They say, you've got to buy two copies. One, you keep perfect with the specials that had all the stuff you tear out. Um, okay, so here's a book uh, a few months ago. I said to Kevin, uh, there's this amazing book coming out. Are you going to order it? And he says, well, I don't think I'll be able to sell any copies of that in my shop. And I said, but I'll buy it. So he said, I'll, I'll order one for you. And then I started saying about a week or two ago, everybody's showing on like the uh, Facebook or Instagram. The, oh, look, look what just came out. And I, I, I called Kevin I said, or I texted him or something some kind of communication i said did you get that book i've seen everybody showing it it's on amazon he's, and he was like real kind of cryptic that's because he had gotten it and dr fives already bought it for me thank you so much dr fives and kevin for being so secretive it is reprinting venus which <laughs> those those early 70s marvel monster comics would would reprint occasionally some um oh this is done so well some it, some stories of venus and uh and it uh they were so cool and so um so this is reprinting the whole series and this is done by not marvel but by um Fan fantagraphics and so they, they've done several of these books that are really just super beautiful. Um, this, I, I can actually move the camera. I don't know why I'm not. Um, okay, there we go. <laughs> now it's even more awkward for me to show. Anyway, this is a book you guys have got to get. It has the ads in it. So, some people are smart enough to realize that you know, the, there's the stupid morons like uh, like Statue Bob on YouTube. Statue Bob that has gold chains and backwards cap and goes yo, yo, yo and has walls of what are those thick books called? Omnibus. They're, they're, they're real thick books that are, I, they're, I have some. They're very unpleasant because they're too big. They have like a hundred issues of a comic in one. And it's just too big to hold. You're afraid you'll nod off to sleep and drop it on the floor and destroy the book. They're bigger than your family Bible. And 
they don't reprint the ads, although they do reprint, I must say they do reprint the letter pages from those. Um, but a real comic fan knows you got to have the ads for fireworks. And it's all part of the comic book experience. How to hypnotize. That's why, you know, when I first saw Captain Strange Life channel, I mean, this guy gets it. He loves the ads just as much as the stories. And some people are just like, oh, that's, it's, it's, you, you don't really understand how ads are so important in your life. And I mean, you, what you remember about growing up a lot of times is the advertisements that used to be on TV, like they just that, that annoyed you at the time. But now it's, and it's like I remember when I got my first VCR, which is on the elevator right now. I'm taking it upstairs to put it in a prominent spot. You know, I'd edit the commercials out of shows and now you can get those shows on disc, but it's the com commercials that are what you want to see. And it's like, but you just don't realize it at the time. Someday you'll love these commercials. Uh, some people that didn't cut the commercials out now have YouTube channels where they just have all commercials. People love it like me. You know? Anyway, this is a book called Venus. And thank you, Dr. Fives. It, Dr. Fives. Leave it to him. He got, I mean, you guys all got the crazy stuff, but he got the <laughs> shit. <laughs> this is an expensive thing. God. Thank you, Dr. Fives, man. I, I, I've got great friends here in the comic book neighborhood. We, we don't call it a community here on this network because uh, we're, we're very right wing. The community sounds like communism. So we say the neighborhood. We're in the neighborhood, man. You're solid with me. You're from your neighborhood. Oh, a heavy box, man. Whoa, man. I'm going to just start working out. Work my noodle arms with this, man. Oh, it's Charlton 66, man. Another great. He's working a, He's working today at a comic store. I asked him if he's working on three, but, but he didn't realize I'll still be on at three. So maybe he can come on. I'm hoping you guys, you jokers in the chat, can come on, man. Ask your nurse if she'll allow you to come on, man. Um. Oh, cool. <laughs> he books that I've had for a while. You guys are getting all the heavy stuff sent out to me. Now I think what I've got left is some random... 1960s Fantastic Four comics. I've got some famous monsters. I've got a bunch of uh, all of those uh, really cool pre-code horror action figures. <laughs> those are so warped. I've got all those. i got a lot of stuff still on hold. But, but things will get better financially soonish, I'm hoping. Okay, here's the Sugar and Shike. Sh sugar and Shike. Sugar and Spike archive. Volume one. I always love Sugar and Spike. Yeah, this looks great. Thank you. Fantastic, I tell you. This is a one of those archives that they probably only printed fifty of them. I'm, of course, that's hyperbole. I mean, because there aren't many people into this. Uh, there's only a few work people like me into that. Oh, <laughs> that's what was heavy. Is this gigantic super weird heroes? Should be the name of this channel. Uh, <laughs> this got to be fan. Of, oh, it's Craig Yo. That's why it's great. So more heavy books to probably eventually cause the collapse of this whole structure, like the fall of the House of Usher, probably by the end of this episode. <laughs> this <laughs> shit. Whoa, man. They've got the original artwork in here from Jungle Comics by, uh, <laughs> I always forget this artist's name, man. Uh, <laughs> forget. He signs it Barkley Flag, but uh, what was his name? This insane artist that drew, drew stuff like that. What is his name? Man, come on. It'll come to me. I've got a whole book of his art. Um. It's um, that's embarrassing to you know, remember things like that. Um, 
that's how I realized that um, what's his face um, the guy that made the Guardians of the Galaxy movies that everybody's hating now that's making a Superman movie even though it looks great oh Fletcher Hanks thank you Paula Paulo, not Paula. Man, it's not my day, man. Um, yeah. What the hell is that guy's? I can't remember anybody's name today. Uh, anyway, he made a movie called Super, and that was. I saw that before he made any of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. It had that girl that used to be cute that's now a guy in it and i don't remember her name uh and i oh, sorry his name sorry that's, that's funny. I hate crying. um she was he was in it and it was super was this guy that wanted to be a superhero and he just went around with a hammer hitting people with hammers and the hammer up the superpower not like thor but like a literal hammer from a hardware store and uh and there was a whole thing, subplot, about Fletcher Hanks in that movie. So I knew that James Gunn. Thank you, thank you John Gorris. Okay, let me go back and read what these people are saying here. Um, yeah, anyway. James Gunn, I have, I trust him to make a good Superman movie. And, and there's a picture I just put on Instagram of him reading a copy of Superman number one and this guy, I think his name is David Corn Sweat, play, uh, playing Superman. He's got a cap on, so you really can't see his Superman here, but you can see he looks like Superman. And he's reading some 1960s Superman or early 70s, I think. And then the actor's playing uh, Lois Lane, who another name that I can't remember right now, but she was in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which was really good for the first three seasons, and then dropped off the rails into stuff I don't want to talk about in the last season, politically correct, you know, the stuff that we're forced to, to, to you know, that they, you know, stuff that they talk about in June. Um, a lot of that, you know, that totally anachronistic, but anyway, it was a good series there for a while. And she's a great actress, has a lot of charisma and she's playing Lois Lane. I total, uh, total, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Let's see what people are saying here in the chat. <sighs> I hate I hate people in the chat. It's so hard to read their stupid shit. Let's see. Let's see. Happy birthday, Gratu, says Paulo. Oh, I didn't click on it. It's just a click on it. I'm doing this on my phone now. I'm sorry. Gotham City Comics. Dr. Fives, I have another copy here if you want one. Oh, let me go back and see what what he's talking about. What a copy of what? Uh, I have to go back. Maybe, I don't know which one. I'm curious which one he's talking about. Great job. Picking out gifts, Kevin. You rock. Yeah, absolutely. And then, oh, man. See, I thought that <laughs> you're giving away the secret. I thought you guys picked them, but he, apparently you guys just, oh, man, you're not supposed to give away. I thought you guys selected those things. <laughs> um, happy B-Day, John Gorris says. Uh, you got my little package, right? Yes, I showed it the other night on uh, the live stream. Thursday night at the beginning. You you were watching, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I think you were. Yeah, it was great. I really loved it. That was, a, I mean, original artwork. That That's great. I love it. You guys got to watch his channel. That's Jim. I was trying not to say his name, Last Avenger. I was going to get me in trouble with Cowboy. What's his name? Um, Statue Bob? Um. The acquisitions of Dr. Five says, I agree. The omnibus books are too big. I only have one because I got it for a song. Yeah, I've got about five or six. I'll show them to you in a minute if you guys, because I can move around with the camera now. So many great gifts from great friends, says Meyer. The Gratu gang. Yeah, <laughs> says John Gores. We should call it that. It's like the Brady Bunch, the Gratu gang. Well, it's the Gratu army. And I can get 10 people on at a time now, so. 
Meyer Greenblatt says currently being dialyzed in the iron lung. Oh, okay, when you get out, uh, call, a uh, call, the text, uh, appear on the show if you want. Paulo Costa says, is that Fletcher Hanks? Yes. James Gunn says John Goris, and John Goris says James Gunn, and John Goris says I like Slither. I never got to see that, but I wanted to see that. Bronco, Bronco Bear says Super was a great James Gunn, very dark. Yeah, I guess it's dark, but to me that's just a funny. Uh, <laughs> I don't even get that as being dark because that's how dark my sense of humor is. So, uh, Gotham City Comics. I just heard Target is ditching DVDs like Best Buy. Yeah, of course they are. Um, because it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's always Gotham City Comics. We can buy everything we need from him. Uh, send me, if you haven't already done it, and if you've done it, I don't know because I can't go to anything on my phone because I'm stuck on the stream yard. But Kevin, send me a link to your stuff that's on Amazon so I can uh, spend the $50 with you. Now let me get these books off the floor and uh oh and maybe we can look at the rest of the refrigerator magnets here uh here's lost in space did you guys know there was a johnny quest game did any of you ever have that that's that's one that's got to be valuable a king kong game i was hoping some We'd get some uh, cool uh, guests this afternoon because, man, look at me shaking. Huh? <laughs> look at this one. Look it. So I dream of Genie. That would be great to have. Collecting board games, that's a whole nother, uh, I hesitate to say rabbit hole. But uh, Here's Twilight Zone. This is one, What Shall I Wear? A fashion game for girls. Uh, <laughs> G.I. Joan Marine Paratroop game. I think this is one that Meyer would like. Next time Meyer orders something from your store, I mean, he wasn't a Marine, but he was a paratroop. Never seen this Get Smart game, but then again, I was born in 1965, so everything I've seen has been in the second-hand market. Gilligan's Island game. Oh. I just heard Target is ditch. Okay, I can't find a link to my Amazon, but I can put whatever you want in there. So I could put, like, that Fantastic Four where they're all pointing, or... Uh, that famous monster, those fam the famous monsters that you just bought, I could, I could get that to you, from you through Amazon. And you just, well, you'd have. I'm afraid if you put it on Amazon, what if someone buys it right the second before I you put it up, then someone buys it out uh, from under me? I mean, is that possible? Or can you provide a private link? I don't know how that shit works. Here's Gilligan's Island, because I heard someone just talking about the. Comic book memory shows. I'm just saying, I, I, I've had a book in my hold, my uh, my uh, cart, and someone bought it right before I could, you know, get it. Here's combat. They were probably talking about my comic shop.com. Here's weirdos. I'm recording Christmas music in April because I want to. Here's Kabbalah, which is apparently what uh, Madonna's really into. Not, not this game, but the real stuff. Some kind of witchcraft. Here's the Outer Limits. Here's a... Here's a game I actually own upstairs. Barnabas Collins. Indeed. All right. Here's a few more. Star Trek. The merchandising when Star Trek was actually on the air is 
really interesting. <laughs> There's, there were some toys they sold like that really are not like anything that was in the show that they just slapped the Star Trek name on that are hilarious packaging. There's a Frankenstein game that, oh man, this is, they, I hear she used two hands. It's really disturbing how I'm starting to shake. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, that was pretty neat. Um, I think I'll... Now, you've got to... Here on YouTube, you've got to subscribe to John Goris. You, you really need to, ladies and gentlemen. Ow! Standing up. Hurt. Let's see, now I'm mobile. and I can move around. I'm going to test it here in a second. So I think I'm going to put this nice framed magnet thing. I'll try to put it right here. On. Ooh, it really has some powerful magnets there. How about that? Looks. Oh, what? Everything's backwards on this stream yard garbage. How do I get... Uh, whatever. Okay. So... Let's start moving these books. All right, it's 11.22 here on uh, Grouch Orloff Inspirational Network. This was given to me as a gift. It's the 2016, this is when he was running for president the first time. Wow. Look at this garbage on the back. Who will get your vote? Uh, can you believe they made a Bernie Sanders Funko Pop? My wife and I, it's weird to call them Funko Pops because my wife and I always called them embryos because they look like embryos with the big black eyes. And... All right. Let me get these books moved. Forgetting someone that sent me a birthday gift. Oh, Jambo. Yeah, Jambo also sent me a birth like amazing stuff. How could I forget that? Um, let me go reshow the stuff that I get everything off the floor. And I'll show you that, so that there's one stream that shows everything just for, uh, let's go upstairs. I'm not going to be able to record this Christmas music all day. There's just a, a playlist on this guy's uh, YouTube. These videos have only had about 300 views and it's great. Uh, I got to explain something. Okay. Okay, so you've got Seaberg jukeboxes, right? You know, you know what a jukebox is. Seaberg was a huge company. They also um, made something called library units that were made for the home. If you were a rich person like Frank Sinatra, you see uh, uh, a lot of times they were blonde wood. They didn't have flashing lights and everything. They were made to look dignified, but it was so you could put a whole bunch of records into a big box and then they would play one after the other or you could select certain ones and they play in a certain order so you could play music all night for a party or something and you can play it in your own order 
just like having your own home jukebox. They were also in the backs of stores, department stores, grocery stores, um, people that worked in factories. Those are the called the industrial, and they all look like this. They were big uh, records, and they were on 45, and they were also on, uh, you see that? It says 16 and two-thirds RPM, so they would you could get a whole lot of music onto a record. And this is from their uh, Seberg Music Library Incorporated. This is Industrial Christmas Library. So industrial means this was not played in, you could tell the ones, I forget what, how you know that they're meant for stores. Industrial means this was meant, you're on an assembly line at General Motors and they're playing this music in the background. <laughs> if you happen to be lucky enough to have lived back then. And I mean, I guess really the only drawback to living in the 50s was, I guess, asbestos and civil rights wasn't fully in place yet but beyond that the, it was sure better than today but you know these these young people don't understand that so these young people that are cool that collect 50s furniture and music they'll say the vintage vintage what do they say i can't remember the stupid thing they they say vintage style not vintage values they, we're, we don't have 50s values here and they, they just rendered this impression that the 50s were only, you know, racism and everything. Um, you know, I say the same stuff on every episode. Are you guys, when are you guys going to get bored? This card I just got yesterday from John Goris. Uh, Meyer, I didn't get your, your card yet. Because the mail are, is mail are evil. Though well, I'll probably get it Monday. This is, um, this is really good. What's it say on the back? Was perusing Etsy's store of vintage film posters, and they had the one sheet to Dead End Drive In, one of my favorite films in the right price range. Sadly, the poster design was total cringe. So be it. Yeah, I, I've never seen Dead End Drive In. I, I bet if you say it's good, I believe you, and I, I need to add it to my watch list. Uh, okay, so let me. Uh, I guess nobody's coming on either. Everybody's uh, okay. I'll put it in the chat. Uh, post comment. I was hoping people would come on today, but maybe if people don't, I'll just make it a short stream. Let's see, done. Chat. Okay. I can't find a link to my to my Amazon, but I can. Okay, yeah, it's the magnetic field making you shake. Probably what? No mystery date. I don't know if they had mystery date, Meyer. What would be cool would be one of those wind up walking little toys that breathe fire, like King Kong, Godzilla, or the Nun, but with Trump. I used to have a walking King Kong that that breathed the sparks. I don't know what happened to that. There's the link. The poster got hiked from like 20 bucks now to 60 just as well. I think, as I recall, the poster didn't have some guy with like an evil Joker kind of grin, kind of looking like Jim Carrey. I think that's what I remember of that poster. Okay, all right. We got to go upstairs because... Uh, uh, hold on, I'm going to put some some of these on the library card over here i picked a few and i'm going to be moving a jukebox i'm going to go to an antique store i don't know if i can i don't know if that's even possible i was gonna wanted to get a trump flag i saw they had one um okay I'm uh, yeah. put the Star Trek one on here. Barnes Collins Outer Limits. Yeah. Um, 
this library card. I put some, put some of them here. All right, fantastic. A lot of stuff to do today. What is this book? Uh, this book's called Lefty Plays First. That's what I didn't even realize that it's a my grandfather was went by Lefty in the major leagues. I'll put that up there. Got books everywhere, man. Um, So, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Is anyone waiting to come in? No, oh, it just doesn't show any. No, no one's coming in. <laughs> well, um, I can't contact anyone through Instagram because I'm I'm on here. That's the one tries to evoke a clockwork orange too much. So, yeah, well, maybe I guess the movie's good because you say it's good. So I have total confidence in you. That's one of those things that would always show up at the video store. And I just figured, oh, it's a modern movie. How good could it be? But if it shows a drive-in theater, you know, it's probably neat, right, Drew? I'm going to do an experiment. I was wishing someone, one of you would be on here in case my camera dies, that you could kind of take over the show so it doesn't go dark. But uh, I don't know if it, how cold it is out here. When I woke up this morning, it had gone down to 30 degrees. It was 80 last Sunday. I put my uh, sunglasses on. This uh, jukebox here, I'm planning to move that up to the comic book room. Uh, I can deal with this. I'll just go out without my... Uh... Yeah, how about that? I'm testing to see the range of StreamYard. So we should have already... Tell me in the chat if I'm breaking up. I probably am. It looks fine on the phone, but that's because I'm not watching it on YouTube. I'm seeing what my phone is seeing. But I don't know. I'm, I want to see if I can drive around town. So I'm just going to make an experiment, do an experiment to see how mobile I really am with this upgraded plan. Paulo says, as long as you're using your data plan, you'll stay in StreamYard. Um, I'm downstairs and having a morning meet. Should be in, in there about 30 minutes meeting. You'll always go out of range if you're using Wi-Fi. Well, yeah, but I thought maybe it will uh, attach to my uh, satellite. I probably should turn the... Isn't that great to have a radio station that plays music like that? But I was afraid that it would uh, set off the copyright police uh, detector. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, tell me how things are looking, man. No one's telling me. Nobody's. Oh, it looks like we have a guest. I see a red dot. I'll get you to that man. Be patient.
doll. Well, really? Are you kidding me? I think that's sarcasm. Up to 25 miles an hour. Tonight, mostly cloudy until midnight, then clearing. Widespread frost after midnight. Lows in the upper 20s. Northwest wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Sunday, widespread frost in the morning. Sunny. How's it looking, man? Back to good now, really? Northwest wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Sunday night, clear. Let me park. Areas of frost after midnight. Lows in the mid 30s. Southwest wind time um, 10 miles an hour. Monday. Yep, now sunny. you're breaking up. Back to good now. Rain showers in the afternoon. Oh. How about that? get a shot of the movie theater playing a Godzilla versus King Kong movie. It is a little cold out here. Oh, they're playing the music out of the speakers. They started to do that again. Yeah, that's cool. They play music through the speakers in the town square. Let me see who this guest is. And the uh, chat. Oh, boy. oh, there's two people here. Paulo, add to stage. What's up? Add to stage. Dodger Fibes. Um, okay, hold on. Um, how do I do this? Add to stage. Hey. That was weird. Uh, it, it said, uh, I was trying to add Dr. Fibes, and it said, oh, it gave me an option to change your name. It's like, that's a little <laughs> dangerous. You can change someone's name and edit their name before they come on. Oh, well. How Hello, you Dr. Hello, Paulo. Hi, Dr. Fibes. Is can the, you hear uh, us? Is the video choppy? Uh, yours is a little bit. Okay. At times. I'm just experimenting. This is just an experiment. Wanted to see how far I can go. That's pretty decent. Pretty decent video. It's not. I may just go buy some uh, Trump flags right now. Um, well, you guys are here. So, what, uh, so thank you. Dr. Fibes, and congratulations for being a peanut of the day. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Gratu. And well, you're very you. welcome. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a fun <laughs> celebration. You have a lot of uh, a lot of good people that um, sent you gifts and well wishes. It's a good yeah, crowd. Yeah, that's really neat. Uh, oh, I was going to go upstairs and re-show what Jambo uh, sent me. Yeah, Jambo's uh, gifts were awesome. Yeah. So, yesterday, so I've, I've been trying to download this video last night, and I'm having issues with some of the editing. Um, again, this is all new to me. So, um, I've got a video that I'm going to download 
of Shelby and I, we went to this amazing tiki bar. And the reason we found out about this tiki bar is because of you and your lovely wife. And when you posted that website or the uh, the YouTube channel about Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour is the name of yeah. it. I went to that channel, watched a few of the videos and happened to see a video about this restaurant that they called it uh, one of the world's largest tiki bars. Um, anyway, turns out this is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is an hour and 45 minutes from us. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so we had to go to it. We were just like, wow, we got to check this out. So we did that yesterday. We went to a couple of uh, bookstores, went to a really cool old comic book shop that I'd never been to before in Grand Rapids. I took video of that. And then I also took video of the Tiki Bar, which is just amazing. It's incredible. So I got video of that, and I'm going to post it. Um, but like you said, I'm just having some issues. I'll probably have it posted tonight. But it was a lot of fun. And I also picked up some uh, comics in a few magazines. So um, yeah, let me. Uh, I'll give you full screen. Let me. I'm going to give myself full screen here for a second. Hold on a second. Uh, how do I do it? So we'll lay out just to show you a Trump sign that someone has here. And uh, I'm going to drive through a cemetery real quick. And then I'm going to give Dr. Fibes the uh, the uh, full screen to see the new stuff he got. Uh, did, did, are you saying that you shot footage in the Tiki Bar? Is that what you're trying to upload? Yes, I did. I shot footage of us inside the Tiki Bar. And, um, and I'm trying to do some a uh, little bit kind of clever editing, and I'm just having an issue with it. Um, I've switched computers, and that's part of the problem. Um, so I've got this newer computer, and I'm trying to figure it out. But anyway, I will have it taken care of it probably sometime today, and I will download it tonight. So it'll be on my channel. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Yeah, um... That my wife really likes that that Tiki Channel guy and uh, um, <laughs> um, oh this is perfect that's the antique store there and then the <laughs> there's another Trump sign man that's great uh, the antique store is right there um, oh boy how can I do this I'm gonna take it off the tripod. I'm just going to, I'm going to go in there, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm just going to hold it in my hand. I'm not, don't, you guys just be quiet. I won't, I'm not going to be talking to you. I'm just going to go in there and buy some. Uh, sure. sure. Nah, I'm, this is the right way to, <sighs> hold on. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. Um. Oh, they're closed. Oh, well, so much for that. I guess I won't be getting the, the Trump flags. Um, hold on. I get 10% battery. Uh, oh, well, if I, if I disappear, I'll just go home and recharge. Uh, it'll take me a couple minutes and I'll reappear. But, uh, I think with 10% battery, I can, So what do people think of Trump in Portugal, Paulo? Uh, nobody. Well, uh, it's the, it's, since we get our American news from CNN, uh, everyone thinks uh, uh, Trump is a racist, a sexist, and a, and a homophobe. Really? How do they get homophobe? Doesn't matter. It's everything packed together. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the whole package. It's a nistphobe. <laughs> Yeah. Do they like Biden or are they just? Uh, they, they don't. Well, they, they don't really care. It doesn't matter. 
the as I've explained in other times, the every the the average perception of, of the American in Europe is that you are illiterate cowboys. Yeah. Okay. And that's why you let and that's why you let people get murdered by guns. Well, how insulting. Yes. Not that we, not that we are, are going to treat Americans bad when they come here. We don't. Uh, in fact, when individuals come here, we, we're very, we're very, we all want to talk to them to find out what it's really like. Be because apart from from whatever news we get, which are basically filtered through th through the lens of, uh, of CNN and and MSNBC, because nobody uses. None of our uh, media outlets use Fox as a source. Uh, what we get is from Hollywood, which is, of course, not real. So we like to talk to to people when we when we have them. Although we are baffled by the fact that you guys still ha uh, have not caught on to the to the metric system. I mean, the, the metric system is very easy to use. It uses everything is multiples of 10, and we have 10 fingers. It was made specifically so that the people could count with their fingers. So something that is three of something, but the next unit is 12 of something, and the next is 16, and the next is eight. Uh, it's kind of confusing. Well, since I have the, uh, the screen, I'm going to take the opportunity to show something. Uh, this is a biography of Louis Chevrolet uh, with comic book parts. So this was made by the Studio Graton, who makes the Michel Vaillant comic book. Yes, Mario, I know you use it in the metric, metric military, uh, the, the military, the medical, and the industry. The industry uses the, the metric system for everything because, because of international standards. Uh, what we mean is that we don't use bushels anymore to, to measure anything uh, in real life. So, and, and you still use the imperial measurements, which are outdated in... And even now, they've been re the, the the imperial measurements have been redefined according to metric standards, which is which is why now an inch is specifically twenty five point four millimeters, or a pound is zero point five is five hundred and fifty four grams. Of course, the the gallon is different because the you the british gallon is smaller than the american gallon or is it bigger i can't, I can't remember yours is 3.87 liters i think that's it so anyway the louis chevrolet book the chevrolet brothers were immigrants from switzerland and they and louis was the first to settle in the united states in 19, 1900 i believe Here he is. And, and Louis Chevrolet, he, he became acquainted with William C. Durant, founder who, who owned Buick. And he had already, already had a background uh, taking part in auto racing events. So he moved to Buick. He started designing his own engine. And he won a lot of races for Buick. And while he was at uh, working for Durant, he founded uh, the Chevrolet Motor Company. So here are some. So this is the, these are the comic book parts. Is the 
this red car is the one that, that Chevrolet, Louis Chevrolet turned into a winning car, the Buick Bug. The first Buick six cylinder car. All right, so here's a, an actual picture of the Buick Bug from 1909. 19, 19, 19, 19. And let's see if we can get some actual Chevrolet cars. So this is the uh, oh. Uh, so this picture, this picture is after uh, Louis Chevrolet had left the Chevrolet brand, and he and his brothers founded the Frontenac company to build racing cars out of Ford Model T parts. And this is uh, Louis, Louis's younger brother uh, Gaston. Uh, Gaston won the Indian, was champion. In, he won the Indianapolis 500 in 1920, and, but he died uh, later in the year. What did he die from? A uh, racing, uh, racing crash. Ah, and here, here are the Chevrolet's exploits, early exploits in Indianapolis. I wonder what it. I always wonder what it, what it would have been like to drive one of these at a uh, 120 miles an hour. With no protection whatsoever, and with those flimsy wheels, this, they they didn't they didn't wear helmets yet. Oh, the yeah the this so this part shows. Uh, Gas uh, Gaston's deadly, cra uh, deadly crash. The other brother was Ar uh, was Arthur, Chev Arthur Chevrolet. Uh, Arthur and Louis, after the in, during the 1920s, they tried their hand at at, at an aircraft corporation. Here it is. But it did not go well, so they, they ended up back at back at Chevrolet working in the in the assembly line. I mean, they they founded the company and they 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 ended their their days working in the in the assembly line. Ridiculous. All right. So the this was okay at the time. At, at the time this book was made, uh, Sh Chevrolet was uh, General Motors was, was trying to turn Chevrolet into a worldwide brand because uh, they didn't. Ha GM never had one. Uh, they they always used whatever brand sold better in that particular area of the world. Uh, and the way they tried to do that with Chevrolet was by using uh, Korean products because they had bought the Daewoo Daewoo in two thousand and two. <laughs> Uh, but but because of that, they they took part in the World Touring Car Championship uh, with the Chevrolet Lasetti and then with the Cruz, and they were qu uh, quite successful there. But the Chevrolet never had the the expected sales boom that that they hoped for, and but and ultimately what they did was pull out of every market altogether so now you can't general motors does not exist in europe australia uh southeast asia they also left india they left africa they have a tiny presence presence in the middle east uh, so apart from north america you can only buy uh, general motors products in in in, in latin america and china and the chinese ones are made in china for the Chinese market, even Latin America is now using more of the uh, Chinese General Motors pro uh, products instead of the American ones. All right. So that, then they have other Chevrolet's other exploits. So NASCAR, 
This was Montoya. Yeah, this was when Montoya was driving for Chip Ganassi. You're a big NASCAR fan, aren't you, Paulo? Yeah, uh, I like uh, motorsports in general. We got into uh, when Nigel Mansell went to IndyCar in 1993. Uh, that opened the the door for uh, for uh, a lot of European interest in American motorsports. And I also got into NASCAR, so I knew uh, all of the guys who who, who were driving. Uh, I think it was the 1995 season because uh, I remember Ernie Irvin moving from the Kodak car to the Texaco to the Texaco Evelyn car uh, because the, um, one of the Allison bro- the, it was being driven by one of the Allison brothers and he died in a helicopter crash. Mark Martin was still driving the Valvoline car, uh, and Bill Elliott was still around. Jeff Bodine was still around. Uh, Jeremy Mayfield was still around. Uh, both of the Burton brothers were still around. Uh, Richard Petty's son, Kyle Petty, uh, was still driving the, the was driving the 42, not the 43. Oh, but one American car that we always had at Le Mans, the Corvette. The Corvette was always the car that you that you'd find running uh, running around here. Um, oh, also this one. Uh, so sh- the Chevrolet engine was the one that was most used in the Canadian American Challenge Cup, better known as Can Am. Uh, and this is one of the. Although M- McLaren ended up dominating the scene bef- and then Porsche, the Chaparral was the was usually the biggest American manufacturer in that championship, and they. Um, they were crazy, always ex- exploring new avenues to, to make the cars more competitive. They focused a lot on, aer- on aerodynamics. And so can was the first major championship to adopt rear wings in, in racing cars, in, in, starting from 1966. And the, these engines were good. So they, they had no displacement limit. Uh, and most people... Most people used 454 or 495 cubic inch engines. Oh, this is a, a, Baja, a Baja truck. Baja trucks are good in, in Baja events, but they're not competitive in a, a in world in the world all terrain racing because because they're only two wheel drive usually. Oh yeah, one of my favorites. The, the Corvette C5R GT1. Ah, and this is the car that, that was most mostly seen in Europe, but took part in the World Touring Car Championship. So this is the Chevrolet Cruze. Uh, the car was built in England by Ray Malek. The team, but, well, the team was run from England, but the the people in charge of the project were headquarters in headquartered in Switzerland. Um, and the car was very competitive because Ray Malik is one of the most successful racing car builders in the UK when it comes to touring cars and sports cars. And his, his father, uh, Major Arthur Malik, used to, in the late 50s, he started building these crazy little cars uh, that you could build in your backyard with, with leftover parts. And you just needed to install a, a Ford side valve engine, a 1.2 liter, uh, and you'd have a racing car. And that was the the, mo- the cheapest way that you could race in the UK at the time. Uh, th- those cars were called Clubman class. And, and that's how the, the, Mal- the, the Malik family got into it. Okay, so this is in, oh, I think this is here in, no, this is Macau. This is in Macau. So Chevrolet took part against Seat, which is a Spanish brand that was owned by that's owned by Volkswagen. They have mostly morphed into Cupra now. Uh, BMW were present in the championship at the time. Then they left, uh, and when they left, uh, Citroën and Volvo took up the slack. So this was very competitive. It also got very expensive. These cars at the time they had with the two-liter engines they had 320 horsepower. Then they got 1.6 turbos, and although supposedly limited to 380, they had well over 400. Because uh, the this guy here in the yellow in the yellow car is Portuguese, Tiago Monteiro. 
uh, and he was always complaining about the the lack of power com compared to the to the Citroens. Ah, so here's a. So he, th th these are modern scenes, in comic book form. They they mostly talking about Ala Menu. Uh, Menu is a, was a Swiss racing driver. Uh, he is retired now. Uh, and his teammates were Eva Müller from, from France and, and Robert Huff from, from the UK. Uh, and one thing that, that they did, so when the Michel Vaillant series uh, went through a soft reboot, it was relaunched with a new number one, which is not something that happens in, in the European comic scene. Uh, and to advertise that, so they, they painted one of the cruises like a, like a Vaillant car. The, because in the comics they have their own their own brand, uh, and they dressed up Menu as Michel Vaillant. So this guy was dressed up like this character. <laughs> Out of all the forms of uh, car racing, Paulo, what mm -hmm. is your favorite? Uh, I usually like uh, endurance sports car racing. Uh, sports car racing, because uh, my favorite race in all the world is the Le Mans 24 Hours. Uh, I I was lucky enough to cover it for my newspaper on seven occasions. Um, now nobody now nobody goes there anymore from Portugal, uh, and I got to do some interesting stuff there and talk to to a lot of people in the racing scene. Ooh, some prototypes here. Corvette prototype. I don't think they talk here about Zora Arkus Duntov. So Zora Arkus Duntov was a um, Russian Jew who grew up in Belgium, then immigrated to the United States and became a, an engineer. And he was and he was in charge of making the Corvette a fast car. But then there, I don't think they mention him here. They should. Zora Arkas Dantov is one of the great names that, that the general public doesn't know about. Okay. Oh, Camaro. The the Camaros at this time were, pre, were pretty good because there was the so the there was the car that was called the Pontiac Trans Trans Am. Now the Pontiac Trans Am was named after the Trans Am Championship, the the Trans, Trans American Challenge. Which was which, like Can Am, was also one of the S Sports Car Club of America's uh, professional championships, and and the the all of the American manufacturers were there. Um, they the so there was Camaros, Mustangs, uh, the the AMC Javelin, and and the, what did Dodge run? Hmm, I Dodge was there, but I can't remember what they ran. Usually it was Camaros who were the most competitive. Then they opened they opened the floodgates for for different types of modifications, and Porsche ended up dominating the series for years until they were banned. Now those cars they kind of look like NASCAR stock cars, but not really. So they, they because they do they they race in regular circuits, and and you can race a Corvette or a, or a Camaro. You can race a Mustang. Uh, most most cars are. Are, Cam are Camaros uh, nowadays? This is good. There are several Corvette prototypes that, throughout the ages that they're interesting. Ah, and here, one thing that the that they do in the Michel Vaillant comics, they produce ancillary drawings that they then they use for a. Uh, for art exhibits or for special editions of their books. So they end up doing this comic book versions of the cars. <laughs> so this is the Dirac V8, which is one of the first cars that Louis Chevrolet raced in America. And the Chevrolet 6 from 1911, one of the first cars that Louis Chevrolet designed for the Chevrolet company. All right, the Cornelian. So this is a, a racing car that Louis Chevrolet designed on spec and he raced it himself. Yeah, 
And this is, yeah, this is for basically the predecessor of midget racing. <laughs> ah, the, the red one, the Buick Bug. The Chevrolet won lots of races with it. And this is the Frontenac. So after the Chevrolet brothers left General Motors, they founded Frontenac. Um, and that, in this, at this time, and so it was the early 1920s, most of the American manufacturers pulled out of auto racing, which was in complete contrast to what happened in Europe, uh, which means that a lot of people, a lot of the racing material that appeared in the 1920s were, was made in woodsheds and, and garages. And they would use parts from here, parts from there. And, there. and then there were the people who were able to design racing cars. So the Chevrolet brothers did the Frontenac. The Duesenberg, bro the Duesenberg brothers did, did the first the Mason. And then they started building cars with their own name, uh, Duesenberg. And then there was this crazy guy called Harry Arminius Miller. And he adapted his uh, boat engine, which was a basically a copy of the Pojo Indianapolis, Indianapolis winner. From the from before the the World War One, and he, he, and all of a sudden Miller was winning everything, and in spite of selling a lot of cars and a lot of engines and winning everything, he kept running his company into the ground. He went through several rebrands and and, and always and always having to to go to apply for bankruptcy protection. Uh, and one one day, uh, his foreman Fred Offenhauser. Um, so Miller had an engine designer called Leo Goosen, and Offenhauser ended up buying the the company from from when Miller ne needed to go bankrupt, and he kept Goosen, and then he dis de and Goosen designed the most successful engine in American auto racing history, the the Offy. Which was a big, a fairly tall four-cylinder uh, four engine that was used from the from basically 1934 up to 1982 in, in its basic in its basic form. Ooh, oh, right. So the Impala, which is the car that people outside America think of when they think American car. It's not the Cadillac; it's the Impala. And uh, this is a Chevrolet touring car from Argentina. Uh, That's from, cool. Yeah. Uh, and this was the car that was driven by Juan Manuel Fangio, who was Formula One champion uh, in, five times in the 1950s. All right. So we got a 57 in the Bel Air. They always make these drawings very realistic. All right, so in the cor in several types of Corvettes. So the the original. Oh, I'm back. The, the, <laughs> the original Stingray. And the C5R, which was when the C6R, which which was very successful both in in America and Europe. All right, so ah, this is the IROC car. The, the International Race of Champions uh, used the spec car, and they got uh, the top drivers from all of the major champions from all of the major championships to take part uh, in a series of races. But usually, the NASCAR drivers were the best because th this resembled the uh, uh, NASCAR car more than than the other types. These are pretty. Ex they they had a limited. This was a, a limited edition racing model, uh, so they're quite expensive because everybody wants one. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Very cool. Nice. I've been trying to watch, but my it took this long for the phone just to. Uh, oh. <laughs> to have. Uh, to charge, we're gonna come back on because uh, the. Apparently, StreamYard sucks all energy out of your phone down to the very yeah. core of it. So it takes like, <laughs> never had it take that long just to, for that stupid Apple to appear on the screen. Yeah, so um, you think you're mobile, but it's sucking power out. Like it said, I had yeah. 10%, and then 10 seconds later, it was gone. So 
you're, you're pretty much having to walk around the house with an extension cord to keep power <laughs> going into the phone. But at least you're not stuck at a desk. You can move around a little bit because that's that can be rough on the back on a on a stream. I'm trying to get a better. Yeah, that background didn't look good. I'm trying. I'm playing around with this because they give you different options. I guess that's the best. Uh, let's see. Oh, these pop up in front of you. I, let's see. <laughs> I'm just playing around, seeing what I've got here. What? Okay. Um, yeah, eventually I'm going to have to uh, get into that as well, Gratu. Learn how to use this. Well, it's <laughs> it's not hard because I'm able to do it, but you can put pictures in that can pop up in front of you. You can put in videos. Um, you can change the little thing up there at the top uh, right instead of the duck. Let's see if I can find something in my library that's appropriate. Um, yeah, the, the thing I used uh, for for the four color fossils was the the is an app called uh, what's this? Ah, Image Glass. Because uh -huh. I can line up, I can line up a bunch of images in it, and uh, I can have them go automatically, or or I can move them manually. Yeah, so it's a slideshow, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um... Yeah, I want to learn more on how to do some of the effects. Um, I thought that was really cool. How uh, Comic Book Memories does the, you know, how they. Well, I was the the. I got chosen today to join the peanut gallery, and uh, I thought that was cool. That was that was pretty neat. Yeah, they did one of. Um... Hold on, that's not what I want to do. Um, um, they did uh, they did one of me a while back, and and they had a picture of the town square. I don't know where he got that picture of the town square. It's from about ten years ago. When they had a different restaurant in there, and and I've looked for it online and can't find it. I, he, it's I don't know how he found that. Interesting. Um, yeah. So it's Doctor Silver Age that puts that together, right? Yeah, and he 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 didn't know anything about it. And Graphic Man taught him how to use Streamyard, but I think he's taught himself some other tricks. And uh, very uh, cool. Yeah, they do they do a good job. Yeah. Um. I, I guess he took shots of you from this show and from yes. your show. So. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was shots from uh, when I was on the other night on your show. Yeah, so I'm just trying to find a good picture to put at the top right. Um, so oh, let me give you the while I'm playing around with this, I should give you the full screen seat. So Unless you showed it while I was gone, uh, I missed a little bit. I'm gonna have to rewatch. Did you uh, let me give you full screen so you can show the stuff you got and tell us about the tiki bar? Oh, okay. Well, I just uh grabbed uh, the bag and I've got it right here. So, yeah, I went to this uh Argos uh comics and books, never been there before. We found it on the internet and it's in a real nice, kind of exclusive area of Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids is a is a nice town. It's uh, it's crime has increased a bit. It used to be virtually no crime, but of course, like most cities, uh, the crime rates going up. But it's still a decent city. It's it's nothing like Detroit and some of the other cities in in uh, Michigan, like Flint and Saginaw and, and so on, Pontiac, that have been you know ravished with crime for for decades. Um, so Grand Rapids is a good place to live. It's a, it's a great city to visit. They have a uh, comic convention every year. They just uh, had one last weekend, but I'm not really that into going to the, to the big comic conventions as they were talking about on the uh, comic uh, memories uh, channel. Um, most of them, you know, they're way too expensive. You got to pay 40, $50 just to get in the door. You got to pay for parking. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And a lot of it's about, uh, kind of 
toys and things that I'm not into that are more modern. Um, also, yeah. you've got uh, a lot of the cosplay, which some of that I enjoy. I get a kick out of some of the cosplay and seeing the people dressed up. That That's cool. But it just seems to be more geared towards all of that as opposed to comic books. And, um, and most of the yeah. comic books that are vintage, they're going to charge an arm and a leg for. You don't really get deals at the uh, conventions anymore because the tables are so expensive for them to rent. Right. So, yeah, you get a better deal when you go to a comic book shop. Or yeah. obviously finding uh, rummage sales and garage sales. But, uh, yeah, so one of the comics that I was looking for, I had this uh, when I was a kid, but mine's missing the cover, is this uh, Iron Man. Oh. And, um, yeah, it's uh, numbers. What is it? Number... Um, Number 50. And uh, I also got this one I, I've never had. I also have uh, several Twilight Zone comics. And so I always look for Twilight Zone to add to the collection. I enjoy these. Yeah. Got this one. Oh yeah, that that was one of my favorite comics when those were coming out. Yeah, I don't have that issue though. I don't. That one's one I didn't get. Yeah, this is in uh, really good shape. It was three dollars. It seems like the ones that I got had skeletons on the cover. That one doesn't have a skull, and that may be why. Well, either that or because I didn't have all the money in the world, but I didn't get that particular issue. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't doesn't have any kind of a skull or a skeleton. Um, treasure chest. Ah, uh, yeah, that was that was a like a Sunday school Catholic school kind of comic. Here's another one. These were just a couple dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> wow. Well, that looks pretty good. The EC logo up at the top right instead of the duck. So I'm playing around with different ones. There's the duck. But I think EC is my favorite for right now. Let's get EC back. This is a cool one. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, it looks like a pretty good store to have this stuff in. Most uh, comics. Oh, they stores. have a lot of vintage. You'll see in the video. Um, they have oh, a lot of vintage. video of the store and of the I TV do, bar. I do. I shot some uh, video of going into the store as well. And you're having trouble uploading it? Uh, just some of the effects that I'm trying to, uh, that I was trying to add. I'm having a little bit of an issue on it. And, oh, uh, I just, see, I don't even know how to do that. I just, everything I upload is, uh, that one I bought when I was a kid. I just put up everything completely raw with no editing. But <laughs> that's just how I do it, caveman. Yeah, style. no, I appreciate that. I like the fact that uh, that you guys do a lot of that, where it's just completely raw. Uh, yours and and I like how Meyer also will um, just uh, you know film whatever. It's just a lot of fun. He'll just that was a great cover, but I don't remember if I have it. But I know I didn't buy it when I was a kid. I think I may have bought it later. Yeah, I got this one for. Uh, Four and a half dollars, four fifty. Is that an old price sticker that's actually? It is. It's a Kmart. Cover? It is. <laughs> it's a Kmart sticker right on it. Yeah. Right How much does it say? It doesn't. That got uh, faded off. It looks like it says key, and then it has some numbers like seven five zero four seven three. Yeah, Kmart would always say key. I think. And uh, but it, the, the, the actual price has faded, you can't even see it, it's just white. Yeah, I have a couple of comics with Kmart stickers on them, that's pretty weird. Oh, that's beautiful! I've never seen that cover. Now, 
And then I also got some uh, famous monsters. Um, oh, wow. They have a great mm -hmm. price on these. Uh, this one. I ended up getting most of these for around less than ten dollars. This one was like eight, and they're in really good shape. This one is uh, number sixty-five. I just remember I've forgotten people in the chat. Friar Tuck, does Paulo feel that way? I may have missed. It. <laughs> How do I go back to the other old comments? This is the oldest one I can click on. I guess I guess about the uh, illiterate cowboy thing. No, no I think I think I think I, th I think I explained it. Then we then we talked a bit a little bit about the metric system. <laughs> oh, you've already mentioned the comments in the part. Okay, haha, ha, metric system will never happen here. We like so well, that was dozens. Yeah. Oh, dozens. Okay, we use yeah. Those are great issues. Yeah, the great covers. We use the metric system in the military and the medical field. And the industry as well. Correct on metric system. Very stubborn country. Kind of makes us think we can do anything. Yeah, it's just <laughs> too hard to learn that shit. They yeah, multiples of ten. Imagine that. Grade. It didn't work. <laughs> I, I, I still don't know the the American style, much less having to learn the metric. Funny, though, our sodas are in liters, i.e. one or two liters, at least here in Ohio. Yeah. So yeah I think I it's because the, the bottles are mostly group. the same around the world. That's another great one. Yep. Yeah, this is number 37. Meyer says, resistant to standardized measurements. We also hate to ask for directions. Yeah. And we hate soccer. No, some people like it. I know metric uses kilograms, but stone always <laughs> confused me. He, he weighs 15 stone. Yeah, that's ridiculous. How many, yeah, how many, how many pounds is a stone? I don't know. I think that's those <laughs> horrible people in England. Meyer the says, British, I'm yeah. sorry, Dr. Five says, Meyer, I'm not familiar with the mystery ship. I'll Google it. Thanks. I, I, I don't know what you guys are talking because I didn't hear any of that part of the show. Mm -hmm. I'll watch it later. Disney and Comics says, I never asked for I never asked for directions. I've told my wife I have Google Maps. Who needs to shop, stop for directions? Meyer <laughs> says, I just found postcard of the mystery ship recently. The name of the ship is actually the Alvin Clark. Dr. Five says, interesting, Meyer, uh, card reads, built 1846, sank 1864, raised 1969. Great knowledge, Paulo, says Meyer. Dr. Five says, Paulo knows racing, that's for sure, yep. In high school, Meyer says, I had a neighbor with a very loud, souped-up Shelby Cobra. Every time he started the car, you could hear it from blocks away. Dr. Five says, the Shelby Cobra is with a fortune now. Yes, says Meyer, and this one was perfect at the time. It was something special, but it wasn't valued in the same way as it is now. I grew up in Monterey Peninsula, right next to Laguna Seca. European yep. sports cars are very popular there, especially in the 60s through the 80s. John Gordis says, we watched Christine the other day. Yeah, they trashed like over 20 Plymouth Furies in the making. Yeah. Charlton says, at work, just stopped in to say happy birthday. Yeah, come by after work if you feel like it, Charlton. I know it's hard working in a comic store. You guys think it's fun, but looking at all those 90s comics and uh, having to look <laughs> down all the time, it's really hard. I went up in the chiropractor's office. Um, but he's looking at a bunch of Silver Age comics today. His owner just bought a major buy of Silver Age. Meyer says, hey, Steve, I have that treasure chest with the dancing natives. I enjoy treasure chest and have a pretty good stack, says Meyer. And thanks, Fibes. I don't edit anything. Gotham City says that's a key issue. My wife is here. Uh, I was catching up with the chat and I saw. Okay, cool. Sorry, Fibes. You're being oh, no. patient there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what else you got there? So here's the last one. This is uh, Oh, weird excellent. Tale. I don't know and, if I have that one. <laughs> you know, um, I know that the artwork is is not the greatest, but you know, I love I love that kind of uh, carnival. You know. Uh, Yes, exactly. Artwork that that it's just. In fact, my I had an uncle back in the uh, in the seventies, who owned a one of the haunted rides, one of the dark rides, and right. uh, so he would enter it. He was the booking agent for W. G. Wade shows, and so when I was ten years old, he wanted to know if I wanted to work with him, and so of course my mom was worried that you know, well, I don't know about you, being at this carnival. He said, no, we're, it'll be totally safe. We're going to be um, staying in a hotel. And uh, so my uncle took me 
to this carnival and I basically I was a carny and and as you know some of these carnies I mean they're crazy it's just a whole nother world so these guys are you know a lot of them are just they, they travel with the show um very few of them are married or, or have families because again they're just uh just going from city to city to city and a lot of them even sleep in the rides they'll have like little areas where they'll make a bed so here i am 10 years old and i'm working the detroit state fair and this thing is huge now they don't do it anymore um a lot of things stopped it it was crime and so forth but back in the day it was it was amazing and they used to have bands like sticks i mean fairly decent sized bands that would come there and play at this little coliseum and um I, yeah i had all kinds of crazy stories but my my uncle one of the things that i would do because again i was a kid I, would, I did it for until i was like about 12 years old maybe 13 and uh he paid me cash i loved it made some extra money during the summer um but i would go inside the haunted ride and i would put a mask on and um you know scare people and so forth i'd be behind plexiglass one particular time a guy pulled a gun on me literally oh. pulled the gun out and pointed it at me and i dropped on the floor after that guy left i i come running out and i told uh some of the other carnies because we had a, they basically said if you have any problems you just come out and you wave and we'll be there and these carnies they look like prisoners i mean these guys were you know totally built worked out all the time tattoos everywhere hair down to their you know midway beards mustaches they just look like total bikers and they didn't fool around so they ended up trying to catch that guy they never did catch him he got away but there was another guy that was trying to get through the ride for free and here i was taking tickets and the guys would come up hey man you let me let me go through for free and i'm like no i'm sorry you gotta give me a ticket and they're like no no so this guy pushed his way through and all i did is wave and these guys come running from the other rides went inside there grabbed him beat his ass and dragged him out and threw him into the midway it was unbelievable i couldn't believe it so as some of these i knew better than to tell these stories to my mom because if she heard any of them she'd be like you're, you're never working there so i kept <laughs> it quiet for a while and then eventually i would tell the stories and of course my uncle didn't know about this either because he worked in the office he was the booking agent so he had a nice office job he'd be sitting there air conditioned area but oh yeah i kept these these stories quiet because i knew that it would be the end of my working as a carney <laughs> but i love that it was it was a great experience it really was it was uh it was a lot of fun and i have fond memories yeah those those uh books from eerie publications the, that weird that you just showed yes yeah don't ever apologize for the art because to me that art is great and, and i love because it because it does evoke those carnival freak show kind of uh dark ride kind of things and uh and it's it's wonderful and any comic store that has those eerie publications in stock is an outstanding store did they have more than one of those yeah they had uh they had a few others um he says he's going to be getting more um because i'm <laughs> always looking for those I, I in fact i bought that book that just recently came out with all the covers on yeah and did it's a he, wonderful book but he have that at a huge inflated price the book that no okay. the one that you just oh showed. no the, the, no the, absolutely not in fact i got this one um i i bought this for six dollars okay that's the way they used to be but apparently there's i guess on ebay they're charging really high prices for those yeah now. they're going for like a minimum of twenty dollars and up is what i'm yeah. seeing I mean, i'm seeing a lot of them just starting at twenty dollars twenty five dollars and uh and then up from there so if i can find one for under 20 I figure that's a good deal. Yeah. Do you have much of a monster magazine collection? I do. Yeah. That would be cool to see that sometime. Yeah, I definitely will. I'll, I'll definitely show that. I, I love uh, monster magazines. Is that stored in your office with the comics? Or do you keep your magazine somewhere else? Oh no, they're, uh, they're, they're, yeah, they're stored. There's some that's in my office and there's also some that are in the basement in a, uh, in a box as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a couple of famous monsters that Kevin at Gotham city just got that. Now I realize I can get them through Amazon from him. That's a great thing. 
Um, yeah, I want to. Uh, I'm going to be getting a hold of Kevin as well and ordering. Uh, he mentioned that he had another copy of that book, so I'll be getting in touch with Kevin. Which which book were you talking about? Um, I believe it was the book that uh, that he got you. Uh, that um, I got you. One of them that the I Venus got. Venus book. Yeah, I believe so. I think that's the one he was talking about. Oh, okay. All right. See, I. And see, if he I, does I, have I, that, I am going to get that book from him. Okay, so, so yeah, I was so he was the one making the choices. Is that how it worked? Because yeah, I was basically, thinking, I call, I called him and I told him uh, that I wanted to uh, get you a birthday gift and that I wanted to you know contribute this amount of money towards his pile. And so we talked about it a little bit, and and he, you know, basically said, okay, well, this is this is what I'll do. And I said, okay, and and hold right. off until it gets close to his birthday. Yeah, that's cool. The Venus uh, book is great, and um, I can't believe that actually exists now. So, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I, I didn't know what book you were talking about earlier when you said uh, said that. Let's see. Uh, John Goris says, "I imagine Fives having a bookcase that swivels out, leading to tunnels." Yeah, do you <laughs> have any bookcases that open up to other rooms? No, but I, that is definitely on my. Uh on my list of things to do. In fact, when I, when I start finishing the basement, I do want to have a hidden, hidden bookcase where, yeah, you <laughs> put the case out and there's a little area back there. And I have plans to do that. Absolutely. So you, you know how to build things like that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I wish I could you get know, you here for a couple of weeks. And you know oh. what? Uh, <laughs> Gratu, I mean, it's the thing is, is that, as you know, I mean, you go on YouTube and you can just about learn anything. I mean, I have fixed so many things in our home from water heater to, you know, whatever. I mean, it's just unbelievable the things that I've learned by just going on YouTube and yeah. what they do on YouTube. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff, well, car repair and so on. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, that's how I... I figured out that's my first way to try to figure out if I'm confused about something. And, and they'll, there's people on YouTube that show you plumber's tricks. Like if you've got a toilet that's stopped up or clogged, yes. that you use the dishwasher detergent and just yes. puts them in there. And then it's yeah, put it, some it greases Dawn the down there, greases yeah, it up, basically. Like, wow, I, I didn't ever know. Yeah. That. Yeah. It, and it's great that these guys are willing to share their knowledge. You know, there's a lot of tricks of the trade that people held on to for years. And now you've got people out there that are saying, Hey, I'll share my secrets with you. I'll, I'll show you how to do this. And it saves us a lot of money and time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. And speaking of dark rides, uh, I, I just love channels that are nothing but taking a camera through different dark rides and there's a channel called dark ride dracula he's a toy collector and he and his girlfriend or wife i probably i don't know if they're married yet they go around to different uh dark rides and, and different conventions and flea markets looking for monster stuff and i i was hoping i could get them on today but now i don't know how to contact them oh because i don't know um i, I can't contact their instagram when i've got my phone clogged up with Streamyard. Meyer says, I had a friend in the Army who had grown up as a carny. He had lots of bad homemade tattoos and great stories. Jambo says, hey, guys, good to see everyone. Happy birthday, Gratu. I'm doing lawn hey, work Jambo. today to so, so in so in and out of the house. Hope you guys have you guys playing on the TV. Well, come in later if you're trying to get some uh, rest. John Goris, I imagine Fives have I already read that. Ricky Swangle says, oh, wow, LOL, I thought this was tonight. Well, it's probably going to still be going tonight. I just <laughs> happened to check YouTube. I have some stuff to finish around the house, but I'll try to make it in a bit later. Happy birthday, Orloff. Good afternoon, peeps, says Missing Mars. Thank you, Missing Mars, for the gift that I opened earlier. If you were watching, I don't know if you were. Ricky Swangle said, hidden passageways are the ultimate and cool. Hi, Mars, says Ricky Swangles. Missing Mars, says Mr. Swangles. Okay. My Green, I'm so confused. My Greenblood, I'm still learning about my car from YouTube. Ricky Swangles, I'll be back as soon as I can. Cheers, everyone. Uh, my wife says, okay, Ricky. Hello, everyone. 
by the way, I'm half awake now. <laughs> I'm half awake now, too. Let's see. Oh, got some cities here also. Let's get him in. Grat to, uh, real quick, what was that site again about the uh, dark rides? Oh, they- it's it's just called, dark, it's on YouTube, Dark Ride Dracula. The, the guy okay. that... The guy that it's it's a guy named Andy Halloween and his girlfriend is named Amy Vampy, and they're just um, they they're monster Very collectors cool. and they they love monsters and I think that's his job is maybe twenty four or uh, <laughs> like his his job is sell is buying and selling monster toys and toys I think so um, I just pulled him up so I'll definitely be checking that out subscribing to that yeah. channel. It's a fun channel, and there are other channels that just go into dark rides. Um, I think most dark rides that I know of, at least the ones that appear at, one that used to be at the state, or still is at the state fair in Texas, and the ones that pop up at these traveling carnivals that will show up in uh, supermarkets, they're all German-made, I believe. Um, and, oh, I've got a great book about fairground art. I need to go upstairs and show that to you because it, it yeah, I love that the exteriors. You probably have it. It has a bunch of uh, exteriors of dark rides and I, uh, my phone is barely charged up to 10%. Let me, uh, Drew, I'm going to move. I'm going to move, Drew. I have to let Drew know I'm going to move when she snuggled up to me because if I move, she gets... She she thinks she's being attacked. <laughs> she's most dogs just kind of wake up and you know, she wakes up in snarling, angry mode. Speaking of dogs, I will be right back. I'm- sure. Hey everybody has to take care of the dogs. <laughs> um. Okay, Kevin, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Happy birthday. Thank you. And man, look at all. <laughs> Look at all the stuff here that I got to clean up. All the boxes. <laughs> that yeah, that was really nice of you and everybody. That, that, that's fantastic. I was tracking your package and it said it would be there by eight tonight. Yeah, it was. It was here. I got it about. It just uh, got to the main morning, city this morning. 10, and then I didn't know. Maybe about nine, and I was thinking I gotta wait until uh, after um, after the comic book memory show, and then I just couldn't wait anymore. So I want—I think I may have gone on and during the last fifteen minutes of their show, but I'll watch the rest of that later. Oh man, I'm trying to stand up. Okay, I may uh, move that other jukebox later oh, I need a water uh, yeah oh I better give him the full screen cool stuff um, okay Kevin I wasn't paying attention oh you're, oh smoking Joe is gonna be at your free comic book day huh yeah he, he made a new uh, flyer for me yeah that last time he had such cool stuff. I just like I think I spent a lot of money on that. Martian assault. That's funny. Wow. Okay. Missing Mars says you're welcome, Grow Two. Happy birthday. And Missing Mars says it's the Paulo show. <laughs> I don't know. Why did it freeze on your face, Paulo? I, I thought it would leave both of you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was awkward for you, but it looked like you were having fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, well, if, uh, we didn't lo- if we didn't lose a- any viewers, that's okay. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, that's interesting, <laughs> the stuff you were talking about. Uh, but, uh, i got to get one of these. Brought you, you got to get one of these. What? You got to get one of these for your phone. Oh. You can walk around. Yeah, my wife has told me about those things. Yeah, that's real nice. (sighs) 
Oh, my back. Oh, boy. How much does that thing cost? Probably not much at all. Maybe 10 or 15 bucks, probably. Oh, yeah. <sighs> this is a piece of original art, my friend, Mike Mayhew. He's a good friend of the store. He did it for us. Or not for us. He actually did it for, for this comic. Mm -hmm. That's the page right there. Yeah, that's <sighs> Thanos' son. <laughs> yeah. That's real nice. Yeah, that's great. Before he became famous, I was buying his art. What's his name again? Mike Mayhew. Oh, I, I've heard of that name somewhere. Yeah, he used to do those. Um, he used to do some of the Vampirella stuff. You've probably seen it. That was some of his early stuff. Uh, remember, do you ever remember Toy Fair magazine? Yeah. He used to do a lot of covers on that. I was buying those covers from him back oh. in the early 2000s. I mainly remember photo covers, it seems like, on that. His style's pretty realistic. Uh, one of his styles is... Uh, oh, yeah, they did photo covers like, uh, what was that show? Uh, Robot Chicken kind of came from Toy Fair, if you ask me. Yeah, I agree. Meyer says, wow, I wish that we were closer to you, Kevin. My son and I would like to go to the shop for the free comic book day extravaganza. Yeah, well, we're going to broadcast it live. And are there going to be bands playing, too? I have five bands there, yeah. Do you think they'd mind being recorded? The bands? Yeah. I don't think they would mind, no. Are they going to be in the parking the lot or in the store? Kind of like right up against the store. Okay. But yeah, not inside. They'll be outside. Do you have to get uh, permission for that uh, from the city? I don't think so. I just do it. I think I'll ask for forgiveness later. Rather than ask for <laughs> There you go. That's the way. Are there businesses around that are pussies that could complain? I don't think anybody would care now. Because it's Saturday for one thing. And my wife says, do you need some vittles, Gratu? Care for some chicken Florentine? Um, they'll, they'll be like set up out here. Oh, okay. Well, Cleo, I'm not sure if I'm hungry yet. I might be. I've got to think about whether I'm hungry or not. <laughs> I don't. My first thought is I'm not quite hungry yet, but I. I but the, the fact that I'm thinking about food may make me hungry five minutes from now. So. That's cool. The EC logo in the corner it says I'm not. That means she's not hungry. No, I didn't. Did you put that logo in the corner? Oh, yeah, I thought you said that. I, did you see the EC logo on my door? No, oh, yeah, on here. Yeah, I put it there because I have, I have, a, Cleo helped me get the uh, pay stream yard. So now I can basically broadcast 24 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> so I, I can really create problems on YouTube. Paula says, now I'm hungry for chicken Florentine. <laughs> Well, yeah. hey, it's chicken and pasta. If you mention chicken and pasta, I want to, I want to eat it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having some of that as well. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. Well, in in about one hour, I will be having dinner. So, here's here's something. I've got a gigantic garage that's bigger than a lot of people's houses. That's fantastic. Uh, 
Is that for sale? This is one of those ones that uh, Statue Bob collects. Yeah, I know, but that's <laughs> that's so incredible. It's not. It's, yeah, you're right. It is kind those, of thick. Those those are cover, terrible for reading, but it's so it's so cool to have them. <laughs> is that a Darwin Cook cover? It's got to be. Yeah, I think I think it's from the t the Titans Lost Annual. Okay, is that a hundred dollar book or a fifty dollar book? I could put this on Amazon for you if you want. Yeah, but what if you put it on Amazon and someone snipes me and buys it out before I can get on it? It's What's normally a hundred, but I'd do it for fifty. Ooh, that's a deal. Uh, yeah, but how do, how do we do it where someone doesn't buy it before I can get to it? So it does, you can just buy anything on that's fifty dollars for me on Amazon, and then just switch it out. Yeah, whatever wow. I have on there that's fifty, just oh, buy okay. that, and I'll send you that instead. Do you have to give a cut to Amazon? Yeah, but that's cost of doing business. Yeah. Well, I mean, but the. I mean, it's a hundred dollar book, and then if you sell it for fifty, and then but there has to be postage, right? Uh, unless don't you, worry about it. I'll unless you it. got unless you got that book for ten dollars from someone that died or something. <laughs> um, I don't want you to not make any profit, but yeah, that sounds like a good book to get because that uh, with the money that. Captain Strange Life sent me a fifty dollar gift card for Amazon, and so that's what I was what I was talking about earlier. For those of you who just tuned in, if I, if the hard I part is finding me on Amazon, I'm sorry. The hard part is to find me on Amazon. Oh yeah, you just have to send me a link to one of your. I don't even know how to do that. But what is your name on Amazon? Gotham City Comics. Well, I'm sure my wife could figure that out. She 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 says I don't know much about computers, but she knows a lot more than me. Um uh, Paul says he's hungry for Myers says yes, he's hungry too. Oh my god, that's so great. Cleo says, laugh out loud. These little meals we've been getting are really good. There was someone that Cleo and I watched on YouTube that was a friend of friend of hers daughter that was really into makeup and looking like Jessica Rabbit. And she she would just say LOL. She'd say LOL. These she'd just say it out loud. And but she wasn't even smiling, but she'd say LOL to register that she was as uh, I guess amused, but <laughs> she never even smiled ever. This is key this is keto though. This Better is yet. Kato. Kato's food that Bruce Lee eats. No pasta. It's with spinach and garlic chili cauliflower. Hmm. I'll try right now. Much healthier. I don't know what that means. I'll try right now. Oh, she's going to try cooking one? My, my, I'm starting to get hungry. Yeah. Kevin, how many of those Smoke and Joe Garbage Pail Kids posters do you have? As many as I can print. I just print this is a piece of paper. I just printed this. Oh, is, and that's a flyer you're giving away at the counter so people know. My printing's not good either. See those I don't think those white lines are supposed to be on there. Yeah, no. But uh is have you put that flyer up on your Instagram? This is I don't think his beard's supposed to be blue. <laughs> no, not unless he's a social justice warrior. I don't know if those <laughs> Biden supporters have started dyeing their beards blue yet. They will just wait. Yeah. <laughs> their new thing is setting themselves on fire like monks in the Vietnam War. Yeah. That was real that was ridiculous. It, it was tragic, and but then, it was ridiculous. And then pretending that they're Trump supporters. <laughs> When Actually, uh, hey, I, I did some uh, research on that guy. He's kind of like uh, he wasn't for any side, actually. Yeah, yeah that's what they're issue. claiming. But there are pictures where he's posed with uh, Bill Clinton back in the nineties. I know. It looks like uh, he lost his mother a, a year or two ago, and ever since then, he kind of went down a 
kind of a rabbit hole. Okay, could be. Yeah, there's no telling. It's and then, every uh, day the news gets weirder and weirder. Cleo says, "No, I'm going. No, no, I'm going to try finding Gotham City Comics on Amazon." Oh, I thought she says, "I'm going to try." Well, he was talking food, about. Uh, she means try to find Kevin. Myers one thing I agreed with what he was talking about was he was saying uh, how cryptocurrency is like a modern day Ponzi scheme. Yeah, I don't trust that crypto stuff. Myers says, can you set two aside for me? I think he means the flyers for Smoking Joe, possibly. Is that correct, Meyer? Um, probably one for him and one for his son. Yeah, I could just print them out. I'll try cleaning my uh, I'll try cleaning my printer heads first before I print more out. Yeah. In order to in order to be trusted, crypto needs to have a stable value from day to day, and it doesn't. No crypto does. Yeah. Well, the fact like that it. they're using it mostly for trading, than for um, for for da for daily purchases, means that it's not being used for the the purpose that it was laid out as, as which is a replacement for regular currency. So it's it's only as an investment so so it it's not something that a normal person can can take advantage of uh, on a normal basis either you get lucky that with the day you bought and the day you sold or you don't yeah Myers says i will call next week and make a missing mars type order you can pick out some stuff for me who is the artist with the bat girl head of a second ago uh, Joshua Middleton. He did that creature cover that you like, the new creature book. Oh, the one with the claws? No, that was Joey Jones, the the uh, one where she, uh, oh, yeah, she's swimming. The one where she was swimming. The, are those art books with a bunch of art of one artist? Is that what you were showing? Yeah, they're like prints, poster books. Here's the... Here's Middleton. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Good, good. Yeah. I have blanks too, so you can draw your own. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let, <laughs> let I just, those are just, when I see that, I just picture the horrible Tijuana Bible possibilities that would, <laughs> that would wind up in somebody's long box in 100 years and they'd wonder who would have done this to this vintage comic book but i all i see when i see a blank cover is the 13 year old in me wanting to deface it um dan fraga well how much is that book about that has the batgirl head on it well, is that like a probably a 40 dollar book more than likely uh there's they're prints like you can it's perforated so you can tear them out Oh, okay. Well, are, is how good an artist is he? I mean, I don't. Is oh, is it sealed or is it open? It's sealed, but you can see the back. Oh, oh, it shows them all. Let's see. Yeah, he's pretty good, but yeah, I mean, he's pretty good, but yeah, not maybe good enough to have a bunch of that on my wall. Um, I like that Catwoman there. What is that on the left? What was that Wonder Woman? The that one? My God, <laughs> she's got a. That's kind of a. Yeah, this guy's pretty good. The, yeah, yeah, he's one of these people that might fool you into buying a comic book that has completely terrible interiors. Yeah, he's he's so basically he's a carny. He, he's tricking you to go in. And, and see like uh, a dead monkey torso glued to the fish tail with some amazing artwork outside telling you you're going to see a mermaid. Um, yeah. <laughs> so interesting. Okay. Well, you know, I like to learn about artists. Man, I wish, uh, 
I wish, you know, I, I saw a picture of Night Tiger's comic wall on Instagram this morning. It looked incredible. Like I imagine it, it looked like a newsstand in 1942. I, but I can't contact anyone. I'll try to put the link here again. Invite guests. Copy. Um, and that's what, two weekends from now, free comic book day? Yeah. So tomorrow's this, I'll be there. Yeah. Uh, about what, what time are you going to be there filming? I don't know. I have to set up at 8.30. Okay. My time, which is like, what, 6.30 your time? Okay. So you would, if you're setting up then, you're pr probably still going to be, still going to be kind of early my time by the time you're finished setting up. Yeah, let's see, 8.30, so I'll be done by 9.30. Okay. Well, if you guys want to come back for an early morning stream tomorrow to see inside a comic convention those of you that live out in the middle of nowhere and can't get to a comic convention uh, that'll uh, that'll be fun yeah i always get up early anyway because i have to feed the cat that's depressing to say the cat instead of the cats but look we're gonna get another because eh, man it's depressing look, we're gonna get another i just don't like that now alan is alone we're gonna get another cat this is over. Uh, how far? How Phoenix is real close, right? You've answered this before, but I've forgotten the answer. Yeah, the Phoenix is the is the we're part of Phoenix, pretty much. Yeah. I gotta open the store, guys. But maybe I'll pop pop back on. In a little okay, bit. sounds good. Um, okay, I didn't birthday. even know you weren't open. <laughs> okay, <laughs> All right. Let's see how I can get back to a view of everyone layout. I'll get better at this. I'm I'm still trying to remember how all this works. Okay, now there's three or two and a half because one's dark. Um. Myers says, Don Fraga has a channel and a YouTube presence. You may not mind being interviewed or shown live on stream at that appearance. Okay. And yeah. here's the link for anyone that doesn't have yard work to do. Dan Fraga was, he was Comic Skate, but he hasn't appeared on, on Ethan's live streams in a while. So I don't know what's hmm. his status there. Well... I don't pay much attention to to Ethan Vince Skyver and he, Ethan Vince Skyver's live streams. I mean, he's got he's gone full drama channels, so he doesn't he doesn't even talk that much about comics. Well, maybe he's matured, grew up. <laughs> uh, I don't. Talk yeah. Much about, well, I guess I do, but I, I mean, I don't talk <laughs> about modern comics. I there's nothing of interest in no, this channel he, to he, anyone that loves comics of today. The, when you become a drama channel, it's not about uh, talking about the comics that you don't like. It's about talking the people. Oh. Talking about the people in the YouTubers that you don't like. Oh, he's, I, I didn't hear that the first time. He's a drama nice. channel. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, he, to me, I, I've always thought he was that. He was always reacting against Star Wars or... Mm. Um, yeah, at least he tried to pretend he's, he, he was still mostly about comics, but he makes a lot more money uh talking about the 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 other online stuff than than about comics yeah because no one wants to hear about comics i mean what mm -hmm. is there to say about comics yeah i mean i i don't i mean like like kevin said that the that the robot chicken guys uh, they stole the idea from from toy fair magazine so, uh, but this was at a time when People who read comics pretended not to read comics, and now you have people who've never read a comic who pretend they know comics, 
but still nobody nobody actually care, cares about them the, the same way so i pre actually prefer the other way around because we could at least make a show out of knowing that somebody liked comics and now everybody says oh i like comics what comics do you like oh i like the movies well you don't like comics oh. so we're talking about liking comics but nobody actually does well i think uh what he's talking about is the the element from toy yeah. fair was sure the, yeah was but amigo action figures or dolls as they were yeah called. sure and, but and you 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 read toy fair and you get oh this would make a great tv show if you don't read toy fair you're not part of the of the comic book geek club and you won't want to and you won't think uh, about stealing it to do a tv show yeah well that guy what's his face that was in the austin powers movies that did what, what was it called again i forgot the show austin powers Mike Myers? Uh, I don't know. Is his name Seth something? Yes, the red red haired kid. Yeah, he's um he that played. guy's a creepy guy, and apparently he's really creepy, like uh oh, Seth Seth Green, yeah. Like the guy with the island. <laughs> kind of creepy. <laughs> and uh yeah, that's not all we have to say about that. So what it if they, he did a, a funny show, it's nice to know, okay, it really came from Toy Fair, so there's nothing to like there. It's, it's good to just know, okay, we can just dispose, dispose of him as, as far as being anything to look up to. Um, I don't know. Oh, look at this. Uh, what do I happen to find? I'll make it full screen. Uh, oh, someone looks like someone might be coming in. Or someone's, what are they saying here? It's private chat. I'm backstage, says Oh, Meyer. it's Meyer. Oh, okay. He's, he's private chatting me So I because I don't know. He knows I don't notice. Okay. Add to stage. All right. So. Meyer. Now we got four people. Let me give myself full screen for a second because uh, this will entertain Paulo. Possibly <laughs> no one else. But. It's careers in auto racing. <laughs> yeah, no, there's actually there's actually a, a guide. There used to be a guide about motorsport companies, so that people who wanted to work in auto racing knew knew who to send resumes to. <laughs> okay, so here in this country, in the libraries and the school libraries, every summer, the librarians are told to weed the library of books that are old-fashioned or have old style ideas you know mm -hmm. 1984 like or um you know it, it, things that don't that are archaic you know so well i yeah. loved in the 70s late 70s as a kid in the junior high library looking at books someday man we'll go to the moon and they show these these rocket ships that that are all these globes tied together these 1950s ideas of what space travel will look like i love those books i didn't mind that they were outdated and and okay, it was cool to see how people in the past thought the future would be like but now mm -hmm. they're told to get rid of these books and they're, they have to destroy them they have to make sure they wind up in the dumpster and so some librarians will say hey they you know i'll get rid of all the markings you know and here you put them in your classroom and you know then you know uh because i don't want to i can't throw books away but here i'll <laughs> sneak them to you you know so this is obviously i guess considered outdated because it's from oh man i thought it would be older it's from 1980 but uh, would you like to have a career in auto racing so um tell you about how to be a dr driver yeah. race car drivers make a living dangerously they whiz around tracks at speeds of well over 100 miles per hour here's the pit crew i guess they're showing that girls can be pit crew members too they always were in i mean the in the 1930 in the 1920s and 1930s Oh, that Sico uh, uh, and Cecile Rosetier in France, both and uh, Elizabeth Yunek in in Czechoslovakia, 
they used to prepare their own cars. Here's the technical inspector. Mm -hmm. Here's the announcer. Um, here's the flag man. You, that could be a career. That could be your career. A flag yeah, yeah. It, it's it's part of being a, a, a track marshal. Cleanup crew. You can be a scorer. Yep. Well, you don't really do it like that anymore because you have uh, electronics for that. <laughs> the pace, pace car driver. Pace car yeah, driver. Now you. Nineteen eighty. <laughs> yeah. Now nowadays, all pace car drivers uh, are um, professional racing drivers. Here's an, here's you can be an ambulance attendant. These guys uh, don't look too happy. That's medical. They, that's medical like, staff. Look at that guy they, with the beard. I don't think this one's gonna make it. <laughs> yeah, but those, <laughs> those are actual paramedics. Here's the cashier. <laughs> you can be a concessions manager. Is that a career? You can be a concessions manager. Uh, no, you you own, you own your own your you own your own trailer and you haul it to the track and you pay the track to be there. <laughs> and then you sell beer. Look at her. <laughs> Why do, yeah, she doesn't party. seem happy to be there. I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> Here's a track maintenance supervisor. That's also what part of being a track marshal. Like, public uh, relations manager? What, yeah, public relations. <laughs> yeah, you public relations up? manager. General manager. Well, I could. You could be. It's it, it, and that's. It's easy to become a track marshal. That's what most people want to get into motorsports, but don't have any money. Do uh, you join? You join a. Um, you you join a car club who organizes events, uh, and you learn how to. You learn all, all the regulations. You learn how to use how to use flags, and when it's appropriate to to use what flags, and and you're in contact with the race director, and. You're basically in charge of keeping all the the little details safe for the for the drivers and the public. Oh. And anyone can and anyone can do it. You, you take a course; it probably takes a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have to know any any. Oh, what? Or GD40. Uh, yeah. I've got some cars Ooh. that I can show off. I, I've yes. been. I didn't realize we were back, but I just yeah. uh, grabbed Sorry, a bunch yeah. of. So, um, here's some new Hot Wheels that I just picked up pretty recently. This Ford GT40. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is one of those, you know, it's a, it's like a not a real car that yeah. Hot Wheels make, but it was cool enough for me to grab because it looks like it's a combination of a yeah. couple different classic muscle cars. <laughs> Here's a Fast and the Furious 1970 Plymouth Barracuda. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is one of the premium Hot Wheel cars that they come out with now that have metal bottoms and rubber tires. Mm. Uh, fun fact, one of those real cars uh, raced in the French Hill Climb Championship. <laughs> really? Well, they yeah. say fun fact in Portugal too, huh? No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's great that you do. Here's a Those 16 Plymouth Roadrunner, and it's, it's one of these mm -hmm. kind of like uh, cartoons type cars. It's been kind of uh, no, the, the the car was actually called Plymouth Roadrunner. Oh no, I mean I mean the this model this mo is oh, okay. exaggerated. It's, 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 it's like chopped and molded. See how it's the body mm -hmm. style is not a typical yeah. real body style. It's like a, right, right. It them kind of outrageous. You can probably read I grab, well, I grab I can't. some of these uh, vintage car dealership promotional models. Oh, and I think we've looked at these and talked about them before, but I thought yeah, I'd yeah. say this is a 1966 Rambler. Uh -huh. And it says uh, Antigua red and frost white two tone. Yeah. And these are plastic cars that were, uh, you know, pre-constructed models that were given away at car dealerships to prospective buyers or buyers of these cars. Mm 
pretty good. With metal axles and other tires, and sometimes they have, like this one has a friction motor inside of it. Yeah. Too bad you can't open the doors. It'll, that would have been a cool addition at the time. Yeah, it would. It would have been. And these cars are molded in the colors, and they and they would have made individual models for each individual color at the dealership. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's that's from a dealership. I. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, these are these were promotional. These weren't for sale. These were given away at car dealerships, and it was part of the sell in the 50s, 60s, right. and even in the 70s, and even into the 80s and 90s. I have a couple of <laughs> cars that they still did it with. But the dealership would have a deal with a model company, and that model company would construct the cars and then send the cars to the dealership. And most of the time, they would be in these unmarked boxes, like this is a 84 Camaro in brown. And these just boxes of constructed models would arrive at the dealership right around the same time as the new cars would arrive. And uh, these would be placed on maybe the, the, the shelf in front of the receptionist at the dealership, maybe on salesmen's desks while they were cutting. A lot of times on the bottom of the cars, there's specifications written down here, talking about the warranty on the undercarriage, the muffler, uh, that type of stuff, all kinds of the, the warranty, warranty warranty on the drivetrain, it'll say all kinds of things to help remind the salesman uh, what to talk about. Like this one has it. This one says double safety brakes, coil spring seats. All this is like printed on the bottom to help uh, the salesman. And in right. addition to that, they would sometimes give these to prospective buyers, especially when it comes to sports cars. Like I've got a couple sports cars we'll look at. And so it was kind of set up the idea i think was that was that the 1982 corvette comes out and it comes out and it's in like 42 different colors right and you can but the dealership will have like four or five or six but you can special order these cars in the color that you want and so a guy will stop on his way home from work and test drive a corvette and he can't make the decision but the, the dealer He'll give him, he'll say, pick a color and he'll say, what would, what color Corvette would you like? You know, after test driving and everything, this is called. That's cool. Does that have dark. notes on the bottom for the salesman too? No, it doesn't. This is called dark claret, but they didn't do the, they weren't doing the notes in 1982. So then they'd give the guy this car to take home. And then this guy, he would be like, this is my dream car. He'd show it to his wife and convince her and talk her into it. And then hopefully yeah. go back and buy the car. Yeah, late model. The, the that Corvette went went out of production in '82, and the the brand new mo modern design one came out the, the next year. Yeah, it is. So this is yeah. this is a notable car right here. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And, I and love the that notes on the bottom. I don't think I've ever seen this car, this color before. Mm -hmm. It's all. It's got a kind of a metallic look to it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen many brown cars. To be honest with you. This is just like a modern day, like a Buick Regal. I forget the year on this, but look at all the, the effort they, that they went to to package these cars. <laughs> yeah. That they were just going to give away for free. Yeah. Yeah. Mid 90s, I think. That maybe... Yeah, like a 94 Buick Regal or something. Mm hmm. It's an 88. An 88, oh. 88 Buick Regal. Yeah, yeah, with that back, couldn't, couldn't be. The, the Regal didn't change much in terms of design, but you can tell the, the 80s from the 90s models. Well, for some reason, I have a lot of brown cars. Now, it may be because these brown cars are, are not popular. Nobody really wants these colors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm serious. Because when I bought these... I was buying, trying to buy everything for for around like twenty bucks a piece. The prices have really gone up on this stuff. Uh, uh, but my dad used to own a brown car, eighty four Camaro in brown, mm. classic, it's beautiful, right? Yeah, but yeah, my dad used to have a brown car in nineteen eighty two. He bought an Opel Cadet, Opel being the European General Motors brand, mm. uh, two uh, two door model with a full hatchback, one point three engine, still a four, uh, still a manual four speeder. 75 horsepower uh and 
and, and lasted about six years, but the car was always uh, the the battery was always going dead because when my 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 dad was my, when my dad was uh, was sailing was sailing on, on the petrol tanker, uh, my mom didn't drive, so yeah, sounds like my problem. I do the same thing. I don't drive my car, and the battery goes dead. This is a '79 Monza in camel. I think is this color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the in in Brazil, the the Chevrolet Monza was based on, based on a European model. It has a real Euro. This body style is very European. This is kind of yeah. the, of the sports hatchback, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they they were trying to integrate the European and the uh, and the American and American sides a little bit more. That's how they came up with the J body, for example. Uh, and that's the and so you got the the Chevrolet Cavalier, for example. Um, right. Yeah, that that was the the same as the Opel Ascona. And the oh, Isuzu, like which Isuzu was that? It was one of the. Like this. this is something later. Here's a ninety uh, Z28, nineteen ninety Z28. Mm. In a really nice color. Oh, yeah. Pure blue, metallic. So the other thing about these that I didn't mention is all of these these models all have instead of it being like a standard like model kit that you would put together, they they all have like they the bottom seals with screws or with rivets and they all have metal axles and rubber tires and this is really important because a, a a main purpose of this model is for it to sit on the desk and to spin really well and to look like the real car exactly and to be in the mm -hmm. actual color of, of the real car because it's a sales tool it's a marketing tool more than anything it's not a toy those are very cool Meyer. thanks vibes I have some older ones that are in the case, but they're kind of hard to get to. So I have a couple of these that are from the 50s and the 60s as well. How many what were those called? cars called? The they're called dealer get... promo models? Dealer promotional models is what you... No, I'm talking about something else. At a dealer, oh. they would get these cars that were miniature, but were working cars that... Oh, yeah. You, uh, yeah, that... that happened for a couple of years in the 60s during the beginning of the Mustang-like marketing. Yeah, what I've I know. seen a Thunderbird too, and and yeah, they probably did T-Birds too. You can take me off. I'm that's it for now. I think. Oh, okay. Well, I know that they would have them. Uh, have I a guess bunch the of the dealerships would get one, and they would they would give it away to you know customers. Yeah, I've, in, yeah, I've like seen a contest, and it would get more in like commercial. Yes. I don't yeah, know if any of them are still out there. It'd be interesting. They would be worth a fortune if they're still out there. Yeah. Well, I was uh, studying advertising in college, and I just found this project that they <laughs> the Chevy Cavalier was such a shitty car <laughs> that they they had college students like that were learning advertising try to figure out a way to sell it. So it was horrible. Um, so that we uh, I found this. All you know, done with a typewriter back then, so before computers. Oh man, yeah, I was stuck <laughs> with uh, three other people doing this. So I'll give myself the uh, I, things just keep turning up. This is the Chevy Cavalier, and, <laughs> and then uh, this was the this is probably the mid 1980s. We had this stupid. I, the, the thing was to use the Little Richard song, The Girl Can't Help It. And we made a fake commercial. And my friend Jorge, who goes by George, uh, did the, uh, <laughs> drew this, uh, you know, it's just, uh, oh, and here's the storyboard that I did for the commercial. You know, it was, That's like pretty good. Girls have really turned their heads or hear a guy's <laughs> turning their head because this girl's driving this stupid car. And the yeah. other one... It's, that looks it's, great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all very comical that this would have ever... Like they ever would have used a, a Little Richard song to sell these cars in the 1985 or whatever. And this this is cool. 
Um, Meyer, did you keep a jump log in the army? Not like that. No, I, I didn't. I just found this. It's like a, uh, that's really cool. I wished we had been given things like that. We didn't have jump, jump logs like that. Individual no. record of parachute jumps. That's starting awesome. Starting 17 September 58. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm, hopefully I'm not giving information that's, it's not like I'm giving a social security number or anything. I don't <laughs> think this is a confidential stuff. Oh, it's got like uh, all the different jumps, and then he's got notes about them. Right. He puts easy and soft. Really? Landed hard. <laughs> hard. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> and Ken, that's really out. cool. We, don't, we didn't do anything like this. We didn't do anything like this. What I was didn't. an ouch one like? <laughs> that's probably like horrible. An ouch one is going to be a horrible one. Are there any tree landings? Like, like I had a couple tree landings. See if he wrote tree landing or see if he wrote high winds. Collided with Lieutenant Posey. Hurt my back. Ah, that's outstanding. Did one of them says ouch? Does one of them say ouch? <laughs> yeah. <And> this <laughs> one says easy McKeever hurt leg. And this one says frozen from I can't it's like C O N V or C OLV, I don't know. Another one says frozen. Let's see what time of year this was. Uh, December, 10th, 10th of December. Where where would you think he's doing this? Headquarters, 82nd Airborne Division. Fort Bragg, same place okay. that I did most of my jumps, or all That's of my jumps. North Carolina, right? Yes. Okay. Um. Nice jump, Dolores's parents there. That's my mom, Dolores. So that means uh, my grandfather and grandmother were there. Afternoon jump, beautiful jump. That's we're at 12th of January. Landed back PLF shoot in trees. Is that what that says? Yeah, PLF parachute landing fall. Shoot in trees. Yeah, he landed in, in the trees. That's this what I was says asking. Easy yeah. with PAE bag. What is a PAE bag? I'm not sure. What read the whole thing again? What is, is this it say? stuff in focus? I can't tell. Easy with some PAV bag. Is that what it says? Yeah, I don't know what that is. PAE bag. It's E. Yeah, I'm not sure. This one says Colonel Valerie and First Sergeant. Johnson on same jump, and then it says easy. Oh, wait. Um, this may not be, this was France, I think. Because look, um, or I don't know, Normandy, Sicily. No, those are all drop zones at Fort Bragg, Sicily, oh, Normandy. Any like kind of simulating what it's like to be in Italy or France. Yeah, well, they're two. both. Not not so much as them just being ceremonial ceremonially named after actual jump sites. So there's at Fort Bragg, there's Sicily, Normandy, Salerno, Saint Mary Glees, uh, probably a couple other that I'm not thinking of right now. But I think there's okay. five or seven drop zones that are named after World War II drop zones. I just you know. this is all before I was born, but this one. There's an eight millimeter color film. I grew up watching this where in my my dad was always talking about this where he was coming down and he saw my older brothers running around the car. There's a Del Dolores and boys there. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, well, it's very cool. Yeah. Um, hold on. Um, Yeah, this one says landed in pine tree. Um, landed in mass drop of uh, gusty winds. Um, well, it's, I don't know. That one hit me kind of hard. Just uh, most of my family's not around anymore. And, 
But, uh, that's weird that I've seen, I've actually seen that jump from the camera filming him coming down. And then I've heard my dad talk about it, what it was like coming down and what he was seeing. And then, uh, you know, then seeing it there, and it looks like this thing was printed yesterday. It's in such good condition. That kind of was, uh. See what else I got here. Oh, I just found some comic books I drew way back in the when. Where did I put those? This looks like something I drew in the late seventies, but didn't finish. Um, give myself full screen. Uh, um. I don't know. Oh, that's great. Uh, man, I don't know how to get the lighting just right. That's here. great. Uh, yikes. This looks like it says Rod Sterling Fan Club there. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. This this is probably like fifth grade, I would think. It's the bloody Cyclops. I'm just going <laughs> through things and finding all kinds of Yeah, this this is probably fourth grade, I'm thinking. Here's some uh Dick Tracy characters. I think this is fourth or fifth grade. It's like prune face says Ben Grimm fan club. <laughs> Um, here's a mummy. I think I know what, what that, I'm trying to make this look like a photograph. I think that was for a history project. This is definitely like fourth grade, maybe fifth. Planet of the Apes. Yeah. He's, he's pushing a, <laughs> for some reason, a chimpanzee is pushing a human off a cliff. That's I awesome. thought they were the peaceful ones. That was great. Um, the orangutans were the peaceful ones. There's um, some people watching an old western in the theater. Here's <laughs> this looks like I was drawing a Batman Mad Magazine style Batman uh, with. Um, you know, some ultra violence here. Get a good <laughs> shot of that. Is that the Joker they're ripping apart there? Yeah. Is that clear? <laughs> um, yeah. I was using the Mego action figure as a model, you know, like an artist model. You can tell that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's what I would do during the summer, I think, when... Uh, this is definitely post Star Wars. This one. This was when Kung Fu movies were popular. This is probably done around 1974. And this this is a magazine that was never completed called Fantastic Freaks. Um, and this looks actually these look like people that and I'm not even kidding. These look like people that Joe Biden has actually appointed <laughs> into uh, office. I mean, like, uh, I mean, Rachel Levine is no different from like these. I don't know. I'm probably saying mean things, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> um, this looks like all those... Uh, <laughs> All those mean covers in the late 60s, early 70s where Batman and Robin were fighting or bums or, or shooting up on the covers. It's like Robin's like bashing Batman's brains out. <laughs> this is what I could do with one of those blank covers. They, they sell these comics with just the logo and a 
I'll give it to me. I'll put this on your comic. <laughs> and then you can get it slabbed. <laughs> um, this must be after Fangoria came out that I'd be drawing something that horrendous. That looks like Ed Piscor did that. <laughs> <laughs> This is <laughs> this is some civics homework. I got a B on it, and then at the bottom, I just start doodling. <laughs> Someone <laughs> biting the guy's nose off. I mean, that was not turned into the teacher that way. But oh, there's another guy biting a nose yeah, off. Yeah, you would never have gotten a B that way. <laughs> um, some of these, I was bored in class, and this is how I would take notes the drawings in the margin. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, we were learning to type before computers were even a thing in 1982. This is what I did in typing class. My typing teacher, Mrs. Johnson, <laughs> and I have illustrations of different mummies. This looks. <laughs> I. It's the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Yeah, you know, looking back on it, this probably was the most important class I ever took is learning to type in high school because uh, that's that's really the most important thing. Uh, here's a, a cramps fan whose brain is exploding with pleasure. I guess. <laughs> this, this is definitely college because it's like communications 4305. That's the name of the class. Yeah, it looks like I was doing uh, like a Mad Magazine. This is earlier. This is probably about 1977. Must be a this combination of Davy Crockett and Paul Bunyan. And this Have was you thought not... about republishing any of this stuff. It's really good, man. Well, uh, no, no, these are all original pieces of artwork, and they were <laughs> never printed. I think they're great. It would be really cool in a in a zine or a comic book yeah, or a magazine. I probably should. These this was not drawn by me, but I can't tell you who drew it. It could have been my brother, uh, but it's actually pretty good. This is about as good as the movie I saw last night. And the movie was not. I'm not knocking the movie. I stole this from the National Lampoon. They had a Spider-Man parody called. The Amazing Squirrel Man in their uh, fake <laughs> Sunday newspaper, and I, I stole that idea. This it could be a, the Gratu Army coloring book. This thing. This could be the Gratu Army coloring book. Yeah, here's there Blazing Battle Action, which is not that different from some of those pre-code war comics. It says, "Take this, you filthy rat." That's amazing. <laughs> this is this is the influence that National Lampoon hat on me <laughs> is doing parodies like that uh what else here's her i'm, I'm there's some sketches major mayhem nah. this was not done by me i think this was done by a friend that's that's so, I think this was done by a computer. I think he had an early computer. He's one of those guys that had a TRS-80 and all that. And uh, I, I think, yeah, he programmed his computer to make this guy, you know. <laughs> uh, what is going on? Man, this is just really insane. Uh, I, I can't really. I probably should. Here's a. Uh, this is definitely fifth grade. I can, sometimes you, I can just date the art by. This is a crashed UFO. That looks amazing. What does it say? I think we. I, I'm, I'm at that time for some reason I started writing like EC lettering or something. I, how, how did I even do that? 
That's weird. You know, in fifth, the fifth grade stuff, I, I'm writing like that. He says, I think we crashed, we crashed X all. Is that really how I visualized trees looking when I was in fifth grade? And there's the Enterprise. Like broccoli. Now, this was a character I created. I, I created a character called Carnage before Marvel did, but it was Captain Carnage. And uh, Nice. <laughs> This this is mid '80s when I did that. Um, here's a here's a picture of a communist. Apparently, <laughs> on the back of a. <laughs> um, I, I wrote on there F C me, and it's apparently the who's who assembly. And I just put in the names of various deities as the winners. <laughs> and then on this page, I wrote my name as the winner of everything. Somewhere this I have a been map. Done for college, that advertising class, it's like we were supposed to advertise Butler's Dental Floss. So I draw this horrible plaque monster. Huh. Three brushings a day can't keep me away. It's like... So only me would would try to sell the to housewives dental floss with an EC looking zombie corpse. It's insanity. I realized looking back on this that I've always been insane. This is you're selling a word book like a thesaurus or something. It's like just um, various different ads. Actually, I guess what I did is I, I'm an, eh, man, never mind. This is when, uh, oh, this isn't drawn by me. This is drawn by my friend uh, after we saw Terminator. He now uh, <laughs> does all the advertising for Six Flags Over Texas. In high school, when this TV show was on the air, we had to advertise the TV show. So I did this advertisement for Police Squad which was only on for about five or six weeks, but I thought it was brilliant. Uh, what is we got here? Uh, okay. This is what they gave us, this Bible from Chevrolet about the, Sh the Cavalier and all its information on this car that everyone hated. And, and that from that, I guess is what we used. I will uh, give everyone else a chance to talk now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going, going step, through stuff. I'm, I'm going to step here. out. I'm going to step out because uh, I'm going to have dinner soon. Uh, if you're oh, still yeah. on <laughs> in a couple of hours for one of your eight-hour streams, I'll come back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, yeah. Is it time for Donald Trump? Yeah, we'll see you. Maybe yeah, I'll probably still be here. Yeah, this, see, see you later. Have a, have a rest of a, of a good birthday if, if, if I don't come back. Thank you, Paulo. Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you later, Paulo. Yeah. Good to see you. Bye, good guys. Time. Um, let's see what else we we are saying in the chat. I, I ignore the chat people a lot. Um, brown equals ugly. These days I miss brown ugly, says my wife. Missing Mars, Cleo, do tell. In the 80s when I was a kid, almost everything everywhere was still brown. I, well, in the 70s, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, there were brown carpet, shag carpet, and, and a lot of earth tones, yeah. I missed almost everything from the past. Yeah. Beats the ugly almond and avocado green of the 70s. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah it was all pretty bad. Like we had some hideous paisley wallpaper warm. in the bathroom with bright colors and foil. It, it would be so cool today. Yeah, the things we hated in the past. Yeah, started. My mom started to have an really cool kitchen. It was like she special ordered like the, the 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 doors, the panels, the cabinets. It was like this bright orange, nineteen sixty nine. It was like a new thing, and it was like she was an edgy thing for her to do to make the whole kitchen this crazy bright orange. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Missing Mars says I still have that kind of wallpaper. Uh, my wife says you should join the stream and show us. LOL. And then Missing Mars is agreeing with something that Dr. Five said. I miss almost everything from the past. Oh, okay. 
Agreed, Dr. Fibes. I am a shy, Cleo. I'm a shy. Cleo says, I'm not shy. I'm just fat. I'm just fat. Fat AF. LOL. Gratu, you sound drugged. What the WTF? No, I need to blow my nose because I I started tearing up like a pussy because I was reading stuff my dad wrote in 1959. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry. Awesome drawings. <laughs> but how does she already say, oh, I see? Okay. It's like a time worker. John Goris Gratu would have made a great Ugandan film poster illustrator. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't go too fast, man. Yeah, some of them I'm going fast for a reason, Cleo, because you, there's stuff that I'm hiding <laughs> that I don't want people seeing on on the family program. Because sometimes I would draw horrible things while the professor was speaking. She should tweet all of your mean th thoughts, <laughs> says Cleo. There needs to be a coffee table book of this stuff, John Gorris says. I just got censored, LOL. Looks like broccoli. What does? I, uh, see, that's why I've got to do the chat like quickly because I don't know what people are talking about when I look at it 30 minutes later. FC me, that's hot. That the Saurus guy looks like a scoundrel. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's that just, oh, I would turn this stuff into teachers and, and not realize they probably just thought I was completely insane. It just gave me good grades, just hoping I'll go away. Um, anyway. Hey, I went and grabbed uh, the best cars real quick. The five right, best cars go. show to fives real quick. This is a 52 yeah. oh, Thunder. Nice. And this, early on, the cars had metal bottoms. See this? And nice. the only identifier on the bottom, it says AMT Incorporated, Birmingham, Michigan. So this was AMT models, like at the very beginning when they were making models, and they were working for Ford and making these models for Ford just for the dealerships to be given away to buyers of the 52 Thunderbird. And the, and the plastic that this is made of is a different grade of plastic than the other models that, we, that we're looking at. This, this is very thick and heavy, and over the years, it has warped a bit like old plastic does. See how it's kind of like bent a little bit? And this is just called the the, uh, the warp, they call it. And I'll show you some other cars right now. And, and the next one that I'll show you has the warp. And it's also another Thunderbird. It's a 58. And see how it pulls away from the lights back here? That's just because over the years, the plastic has kind of like shrunk in a different way than modern day plastics do. You know, pulled away from the grill and everything. And this was some odd custom job that somebody painted gold. That is really cool. And then here's one of my favorites. This is a 52 Mercury Monterey. Real nice. And one of the th things I love about this car is these these rear lights. Look at the brake lights. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're like these, like, you, you might remember this car just because of these brake lights. You might remember seeing these things sticking out the back. This model is a little unusual. Earlier, Paula was saying, wouldn't it be cool if the doors open? This one has an, an opening functioning hood the only model that I have, and it has like a little hey, spring. See that? I'm, I was pretty, are you, yeah, I'm not coming up to your level, but I can. Right. <laughs> See it? Mercury Monterey. And then this next one is the era, this is a 63 Thunderbird, and this is the era where they were really getting into writing a bunch of stuff on the bottom. This entire, I don't know Ooh. how much you can see, but like the entire bottom of this car is information for the salesman to memorize and remember to tell to the to you know to customers. I've always told Cleo that's like my dream car. That's like a bullet bird, right? Isn't this a beautiful car? Yeah, the beautiful. sixty-one to sixty-three I Thunderbird. I love this ridge that runs all the way down the side. My cousin had this car when I was a little kid. 
You can take a marble and put it right here, and it'll roll perfectly all the way down. See that? Real nice. nice. They have the metallic blue version. This car, like you may, like you remember seeing this car a lot. So there was a metallic blue, there was this gold, and there was like a metallic green. All of them were kind of this light Thank you. color. I'm sorry you felt bad. I didn't feel bad. It's just it's real nice. Dude, that's great. It's like a James Bond car, right? It's like a yeah, James it Bond is. Car that everybody can own. And then the last one we'll look at is kind of an unusual car because it's it's not a real car. It was just produced yeah. for the 1964 World's Fair. It's the turbine. Up here. Um, <laughs> the turbine engine. Uh, what's his name? Jay Leno has one of these original cars. They only made a very few of these cars. Wow. But they yeah. made they made like a like a small number of this car, but they made a bunch of models and they gave them away at the World's Fair in New York City in 1964 because they had this car on display and they kind of had this velodrome where they had the, this car driving around on an in on, on a track and people were like witnessing it and looking at it. it was like the car of tomorrow. So they gave away these models to everybody that was at the World's Fair. And I think also at the same time, there was, you could just mail in a request to like your local <laughs> Ford dealership and they would, they would send you the model. So there's a, there's a lot of these that still remain, but as far as the cars go, there's probably less than 10 that remain. I think. Yeah, those are very it's nice. The experimental Chrysler Corporation turbine car from 1964. No. And that's about it you know you showed that paratrooper stuff i don't have like a um a jump log but i do have this this was this thing called a paratroopers faith that give out to us that has a bunch of uh devotionals and prayers and essays about paratroopers and uh to inspire paratroopers real nice why well, they wouldn't dare give something out like that today? I bet. No, no, it, not at all. This is um, this is great. Maybe I'll make a video of this someday, and we'll look take a long time to look at it. It's full of some really good stuff. This is as close to I would come to doing what your dad did. This was a sticker that would go on our helmets. Everybody had a sticker that had uh, the number that you were on the stick and what side of the of the the plane you're exiting. So, well, I was going from the left. I was in the left stick. I was the sixth person out the door. This was my ninth jump at Sicily. DZ stands for drop zone. So I only saved a couple of these. This just happens to be the one that was on the shelf. Here's a booklet about radio telephone procedures. Probably not very much of this even applies anymore because of the way communications is done now. I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, they've changed uh, even uh, amongst um, first responders. You know, we used to always use the 10 code and they've just dumbed everything down. Uh, they yeah. said that, you know, they were having problems with people learning the 10 code and now you just kind of speak more of a normal English and I don't know, everything is being changed to accommodate people that are not that intelligent this is a card that has my three general orders written on it that that i had to memorize See over here it says pfc a troop medic and then on the back here's the chain of command the commander in chief was president ronald reagan look at the honorable casper weinberger remember him oh yeah yeah Here's, here's me with this mash style sign that I made of, with everybody in my tents, hometowns and how far. Uh, oops, oh, that's here. great. And then here's uh, my portion of that sign. That's great. So, you know, the, this is a wooden tent tent stake, but yeah. in the desert, these were basically ineffective. So, you know, there was nothing to do with them because we're having to use rebar to, to hammer into the into the hard pack sand and everything these weren't long about long enough or strong enough to be effective so i turned them into a sign 
Very clever. Here's the card that used to be on my desk at the squadron headquarters. We all had little desks and, and you're supposed to put this name card in the, in the upper right hand corner and it's just supposed to say your name and your rank. I don't think that my social security number is on here, but I just drew a bunch of stuff on mine because I was always doodling and stuff. That's great. Real nice. Oh, well, here's a flyer. This is like a, a, a flyer that would have been dropped from an, an aircraft by the Saudi Arabian Air Force, probably. To the Iraqi. What years were you over there, Meyer? 90, 91. Okay. That's it. You can go back. Oh, unless you guys want to see this. Look at this. You might like this. Uh, Fibes, have you ever seen this before? This is a really famous paratrooper poster. Um, oh, I'm the 82nd, nice. Have you seen this? I'm the 82nd Airborne, and this is as far as the bastards are going. No, I don't recall. That's, that is so great. Me, it's going to be difficult to read. This only a couple, only like a paragraph. Let me read it to you real quick. It says, December 24th, 1944, Battle of the Bulge. An entire U.S. armored division was retreating from the Germans in the Ardennes Forest when a sergeant and a tank destroy destroyer spotted an American digging a foxhole. The GI, PFD Martin of the, 20, of the 325th Glider Infantry Regiment, looked up and asked, are you looking for a safe place? Yeah, answered the tanker. Well, buddy, he drawled, just pull your vehicle behind me. I'm the 82nd Airborne, and this is as far as the bastards are going. <laughs> That's great. So this was, a, this was a popular poster in the barracks as well that would be given away by um, supply or by the reenlistment NCO. And they would like, they're like for free. They would just put them up in the barracks when you weren't looking, that sort of thing. All right. That's great. How many years were you in, Meyer? Eight years. Okay. Great time. Time of my life. Best job I ever had. Similar to your job, you get to work with your friends every day. And things change every day and it's exciting and fun at the same time, as well as it being uh, the opposite. And so it's the, it's the give and the take, right? It really absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's the thing I miss the most is the camaraderie. Yeah, that's what I always say all the time is that I miss my friends the most, then I miss the traveling and, I, and I, then I miss the meals because the meals are always with your friends. So I miss having meals with my friends every day that was kind of the main thing yeah yeah that's why the, the stream yard can be kind of a or youtube or whatever the heck can make can be kind of a, a cool thing because uh you can uh, link up with people across countries or across, oh, my friend Randy just sent an image that means he's man I'm a, uh, I wonder if Cleo's still watching I we need I need to get Randy on man seriously because that guy is like a an older brother to me and, and he's got stories um I've been moving stuff around and listening sorry if I Cleo and I've been making noises <laughs> But I've been paying attention. Um, oh, I did find some things here. Um, this is, uh, I was showing some of the magazine that I did with the students. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember how, what I'm doing. Um, this is, what is, what is that number? Is it like in the eight? You guys know Roman numerals? I can't remember. 
where is that? There it is. Is that a, like 80, 86 maybe? There's 76. Seven, okay, 70. so maybe this is volume yeah, 76. 76. Number two, yep. Wednesday, October 5th. Two. See, when I found those old school newspapers, this is the last logo they used in the early 60s. So I revived the newspaper and I did, um, you know, things. And, and I had all, all of a sudden, I, I went to the school district museum. I had all these old newspapers. So I was able to, like, here's the 1950. Well, which side am I looking at? 1951 team. Here's the 1957 team. And uh, number 54 there in the front row later became the 80th richest man in the world, a billionaire, uh, Richard Rainwater. And then then I've got at the bottom the eerie similarities between Elvis and Godzilla. I was just, I was stealing from <laughs> everywhere to make a magazine that would have entertained me when I was in seventh grade. So here you get to see the cheerleaders in the 50s and and then you know and then sometimes these people would come back to the school and they'd see posters of themselves in the hall or themselves in this and i would uh, what else did i do i even put batman in front of the school this is when uh, the hurricane katrina kids came and there were there was about maybe a dozen hurricane katrina kids that are families that lost their houses and they were there for a few weeks and there they are you know i guess praying before they were sent to the school and um um all kinds of stuff but then i'd also print old ads for spook shows <laughs> and uh you know i would uh and then i saw so i so i have this ad i'm sorry ad the picture of the volleyball team from 1958 and then every year I would restage in the exact spot, you know, the, the team from that year. And it would be, you know, like AB. Uh, and I would have old ads. And here's Godzilla looming over the school. That's great. Here's the guy the school's named after. You know, it was just a... Uh, but then I'd have old comic strips, you know, Superman, Batman, Fritzy Ritz. I don't know how many of them ever really read it. Here's the picture of the... Kind of a beatnik looking uh, art teacher back in the, when is that, 54, right? And then here's uh, one of the students I taught, and just the photograph looks like the same kid, you know? And I would, <laughs> it does. I would do that. I would, I would get kids around. There was like a picture of three or four kids having to share a locker back during the baby boom, and there were so many kids. So I'd get them, some kids together. So I'd stand in front of this locker. And, and uh, get kids that look like those kids. And it's like, just to kind of see, hey, you know, there were people here before us and they were a lot like us, even though they listened to Elvis or the Beatles or whatever. Um, and so I've got, you know, apes reading the newspaper. And, uh, let's see, uh, I don't know. Um, here's uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. So, of course, I get all the celebrities that I like. <laughs> so I, I find, well, I must have figured out that Yvonne DiCarlo had some Spanish blood, but I've got Rita Hayworth and people that no one would ever think of. Dolores Del Rio, <laughs> Anthony <Genius>. Quinn. <laughs> this is genius. I put Gomez Adams, even though. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. He's Hispanic, but he's playing one. So I bet he like. The kids don't know who that is. I've got Lupe Velez <laughs> that was uh, um, that was married to Tarzan, right? She, she killed herself. Selena, they knew who that was. We're, I can't even tell what I'm... Everything's backwards on this stupid stream yard. Desi Arnaz, Carmen Miranda, Frida Kahlo. Even though she's a communist, I allowed her in here. I got uh, Linda Carter. <laughs> <laughs> no, one even knows, no one even knows that. Eric Estrada, Sal, Salma Hayek, Jessica Alba. <laughs> I put Chiquita Banana there. Sometimes I look back and it's just like, wow. what are you insane? What were you thinking, man? Raquel Welch. I <laughs> put Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> oh, that's great. Cesar Romero, Sergio Aragon. <laughs> you got <laughs> You got Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same thing. 
but I somehow I got away with it. Here's, here's a record store that was uh, a few blocks away that was still in operation when I was working there. But there's a picture from, you know, where they're looking at Buddy Holly records from the 50s. Because you'd get these old yearbooks that have priced books and there would be great ads in the back for the local businesses and stuff like that. And this was a good movie. This is a poster, a little poster. You ever see School of Rock? I thought that was a good movie. Um, yeah. That, I, the actor I kind of I irritates me in some roles, but in that movie, I thought that was good. I thought it was all right. And here's just a cover for an issue of Haunt to Fear, which I really think I should. Oh, <laughs> and a sticker for, you know. I, I I need to organize. This this should be framed for sure. And here's uh yeah, this is remember this patriotic poster. This is uh was given to me by Joe Riley, who I hypnotic guy guy. This was a, a model kit post uh, box for a monster from Specter Man. And there's Spectre Man going to fight him. So it, it just little things like this that need to be framed. And this is probably a pile of stuff that was intended to be framed. But then the move happened. And, um, and now, two years later, I'm still trying to go through it. Here's, this is stuff that, that Cleo would probably want me to frame and, and put upstairs. And I'm cutting myself off. These are from the 1930s. These, these, I, I just got a bunch of the covers. They were sold only the covers by somebody on eBay or something. I, I would never have cut the covers off. Don't think you need to be someone like that. Well, shoot, you didn't see that, did you? Did Did you see what I just had? It didn't come out across on the camera, right? I didn't see it. Okay. It was just a picture of Anna and Nicole Smith, but I didn't want it. <laughs> I need to be careful what I put. I don't know what I'm going to pull out here. I'm being very, it's very risky. I need to be careful. <laughs> uh, oh, here's a crowd at a spook show. Raymond in his midnight spook show. That would have been the place to be. Uh, These were things I just printed on a really nice printer that are just pictures I found on the internet. But now I realize you throw these in a cheap frame from the dollar store and they're gonna look good. Like I, I just printed this, everything's falling. This uh, rocket ship ad from, what else is here? So, This ad always Frankenstein belt buckle. Can you imagine <laughs> a world where that was something kids wanted? That that's so wonderful. That's the world I want to live in where kids are excited about having a Frankenstein belt buckle. It looked like a 40-year-old man wearing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> with a nice suit on. I used to have this on the wall. Oh my glad I found it. Wanted by the FBI. Interstate flight, armed robbery, interstate stolen property. George Edward Wells. That's great. Born May 14th, 1916, Belmont County, Ohio. Height 5'8, weight 165 to 175 pounds. He's been a maintenance worker, a painter, scars and marks. Tattoos, heart with dagger, bird, left forearm. Cut scar, crosses, bird's wing. Remarks, reportedly has poor eyesight, may color hair, and wear dark glasses to disguise appearance. And they put his social security number there. What if someone steals his identity? They're not being very nice to this man. Uh, Wells is being sought in connection with armed robbery and other criminal activity involving use of firearms. He reportedly is always armed and should be considered da extremely dangerous. I guess if you steal his identity, well, then you just get, <laughs> what if you get arrested just being him? Oh, well. 
that's kind of stuff I'm finding here. I guess I should exit solo layout. What are people saying in the incredible chat? Um, people talking about Mexico City for some reason. Why are we even talking? About oh, it was uh, John. Oh, Captain Strange the... Life commented. Oh, okay. He says, "Happy birthday to you, Gru Gruto." <laughs> Gruto. That's actually better than Gratu. Gruto. Hope you're having a good day. I'm working in my garage and basement. So like Jamie, I'm also in and out. I'm watching here and there. Maybe join later. Great items. Meyer. Culty, which is another identity of my wife. That's what my dad sold when I asked him about the rest of the... I'm sorry, I can't read. That's what my dad said when I asked him about the rest of the fleet blowing up time in my life and he looks sincerely happy lol yeah that's how those those guys that that were there with Patton and you know like mel brooks said it too you know of course he i don't know he was uh yeah these guys yeah that was because they were fully alive and they were yeah hanging out with their friends and uh i don't know i mean he would think it wouldn't be the time of your life if, in uh world war ii but my comment got kind of mangled. Ricardo Montalban, Montalban. I forgot Ricardo Montalban. What was wrong with me? I should have had a picture of him from uh, Star Trek. <laughs> from the '60s Star Trek. My, I, I wouldn't have put him in there as the Fantasy Island guy. I would have put him in there from Star Trek. Well, if <laughs> I don't think I'll ever. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's like the things that you just a few years ago that was funny today someone that would probably wind up on cnn that a teacher put all those people together it's like how dare he i, I think those are all cool people putting gomez adams on there probably was a little bit questionable and speedy gonzalez i don't know man and what what the heck john goris he might have just been spanish though oh well this hispanic is spanish right it's a true country, I think. Because, but he was actually born in yeah. Mexico City. Oh, that's what people are talking. Okay, I, I'm behind on the chat. Ricardo was born in Mexico City. Okay, never been to Mexico City, says my wife. I wonder if it's safer there now. I hear it's really cosmopolitan, like New York. I'd just be afraid of the earthquakes, personally. You guys should all get belt buckles like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And somehow I've blown up the screen and I don't know how to shrink it. Every well-dressed man should have a Frankenstein belt buckle. I, what is going on? How, somehow I've touched the screen and I've blown it up where all I'm seeing is the chat and I can't see the picture now. Okay. Maybe if I hold ways. No, this happened to me last week. Oh, man. Oh, I fixed it. I hate this stupid shit. Um, oh, um, is just the two of us now? Meyer disappeared. Did he say something? Not that uh, I know. Doctor Five says I would wear it. My wife says hello, John. Are you still there, Meyer? Kind of like Bluto. Department of Travel says no to Mexico City. Says missing Mars. Sorry, I had to step out the back a bit. Thanks, Hans. Oh. Oh, oh, okay. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're okay. Uh, okay. What this room needs is a clock. I know where there's a clock. I'm gonna go get that clock. Um. So yeah, oh, basically, I bring my VCR uh, in. A Mexican is a uh, a mix of a Spaniard and the Native American, the Native uh, Indian in that area, and that's why you'll see yeah. some Mexicans that have more of a European look to them. Uh, because they have more of the Spaniard, the Spanish blood in them. Yeah. And obviously some of them look more uh, Indian. They look more Native American. So, you know, again, you'll see some that have no body hair, very little facial hair, um, which is more, you know, from that Mongolian look. And then obviously you see some uh, Mexicans that are covered in hair. So, and then I, just depends I, had on students, I had students that were Hispanic and I thought they were Asian. Uh, but it's yeah. because Native Americans 
walked exactly. across the land bridge that's no longer there. Technically, they're Asian if you go back far enough. Exactly, the Mongols were from Mexico. That I swear they looked. I, I never would have guessed. I would have thought they were Chinese. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, oh, we're not the. Uh, yeah. I don't know who this is. Cleo, is this some, uh, someone that you know? Because <laughs> I don't know who this person is. And I'm not going to throw it away, because but it's on the floor here. Um, so everything got so confusing in the move. Oh, where did I put the... Oh, there it is. I, the, my first VCR, I'm moving it in, and I'm going to put it next to this Philco predictive, because it's important to me. And it was in the garage. And... So how many trucks did it take, Gratu, to uh, move all of that stuff that far? I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I'll t remember when they look like this? <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. 500 pounds, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you that horrible story. Oh, it had to be a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Um, well, it, uh, my most precious stuff, I got my friend Gerald, um, to, um, help me drive U-Hauls here. I think we, must, I must have paid for, we must have done it four or five times with big U-Hauls. And then, uh, we had moving people come and put things in giant cages and the cages were sent to a nearby city and then were sent here at a certain time and um we were able to sell the house we were in and uh um and have some money left over for the move but i would say the move cost at least $20,000. Um, mm. And this this house we're in was less than $200,000. Um, but uh, it, this was... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's insane. I, you don't ever intend to move, I would assume. But uh, I don't want to scare you, but... Uh, Captain Strange's no, wife, think... who's thinking of moving in the next yes. year, so that's going to be a, a horrible thing. And uh, I'm sure there are people here in the chat or whatever that would maybe conceivably help him, but it's it's not an easy thing to do when you're what would I have been about 57. He's a few years older than he's he's in his early 70s. It's he's got a lot of stuff because he's been collecting since you know he was a kid in the fifties. He's got a good yeah. And as you know, you always end up breaking or losing something. It just stinks. I've uh, I've moved a few times, and yeah, there's a couple items that I have that have been broken. That... Well, like I've got to put this Tarzan model kit back together, you know, <laughs> but. Um... They're the part with he's standing on a lion he's just killed, and that can just be re-glued. It'll be fine. But the problem is there was a knife in the lion, and that got broken off. And I don't know where that knife is. And, and like, I've got a model kit of Vampira, and she's got the long cigarette holder, and that broke. And I don't know where that is. But they're little things. I mean, yeah. it could have been far worse. The move could have been far worse as far as things damaged. Um I, I thought more stuff was lost and then I found it. Um, it really wasn't bad, but here two years later, I'm still sorting through things. And now I've got the, um, not, they're not from the same time period, but I, you know, now I've got the Philco predict up there and, and the VCR next to it. So, it's i'm starting to build back better like it's great we should do by george soros or whoever came up with that 
Um, the TV is gorgeous. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you remember my friend Gerald. I don't know how long you've been watching. My, you, you've been watching just for a little while, right? Yeah, I don't remember Gerald. Yeah, yeah he was the friend that would come over every weekend. Uh, usually on Friday nights, he'd stay over his, uh, in the guest bedroom on Friday nights. And then he would uh, work in a vintage stereo store on Saturdays. And he, but he lived out in the country, and this was a he could get into work a lot easier that way and he'd hang out Friday we wa we all watch television and and stuff and he was like uh, this magical guy that could fix anything if the air conditioner wasn't working he knew how to fi fix it he could um, help me for my car running um, <laughs> he could fix the pinball machines the jukebox wasn't working he knew how to fix it he says oh I might have a tube for that out in the van and his van was like Felix the Cat's magic bag how do you have a 1950s tube just in your van it's just he has everything and so he's someone that's sorely missed he was a big rock and roll country music fan he was uh, just the nicest guy in the world um i need to call him i haven't talked with him in a while he was he worshiped this band the surfer jets it's a modern band that sounds like the ventures but they're yes i've, I've watched them on youtube they're great yeah he's a uh, he was really big into them. Um, okay, I'm down here for a reason. Oh, shit. I'm recording blank air on this disc. Damn it. Um, that's not good. Um, yeah, so what else? Uh, see, where are you at now? You're inside. What? You, what's behind I you? I am inside. What you got in the... Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm in the uh, kitchen. Okay, what what's on, in the display case behind you? Oh, there's all kinds of weird little oddities in there. Um, yeah, just various stuff, collections of this and that. Uh, in fact, I've got a jar right now that I'm filling, that I'm going to probably eventually put in a neat old antique. Uh, I'll put it in an antique jar so I can put it back here, but. Um, they're ticks and we're out in the country. So um, you wouldn't believe how many, I mean, there's just ticks all the time. You, you'll pull off your pants or whatever. And uh, so I put them in a jar of alcohol because alcohol will kill them instantly oh. and uh, preserves them too. So I've probably, you know, and we do have a, a tick collar on our dog. So what happens if the tick lands on our dog, it, uh, it usually dies. It doesn't, it's not able to, um, most of the time they're repelled, but if they don't repel and they start attaching themselves to the dog, then they die before they can uh -huh. do the damage. So I take those ticks and put them in this jar. So I will probably have a jar back behind me full of about 200 or plus ticks. Um, yeah, I've just got some larva back there. I've got uh, some animal bones and things from trips and a lot of antique stuff. Yeah. I wonder if you could sell the jar of ticks to someone on eBay. Maybe there's <laughs> people that collect ticks. <laughs> yeah. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's so many weird people in this world now, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that collects ticks and would love to have a collection of ticks. And some of these ticks are even full of blood. Oh, man. In fact, one time I saw somebody on YouTube who had taken a needle, a syringe, filled it with peroxide and shot it into a tick that was alive, full of blood. And, of course, that peroxide, you know what that does. It just immediately started foaming up and the, the tick exploded. And it's kind of a, a, a you know interesting video. But the comments were hilarious, and most and there was literally people that were upset, saying that that was evil and vicious to do to that tick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
got to worry about killing ticks now. I thought that that was the new thing is that we should eat bugs, that bugs don't have feelings. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's now, the whole thing, though. It's, it, it's full of hypocrisy, right? And now, you know, now that we know that trees secretly scream and communicate with each other, and it's like we got to feel bad about being a vegetarian because the plants actually feel pain. That's right. They're a living creature as well. So, so there's... So the only solution is just to just stop eating altogether and be a, right. What do right. they you call them? Be, a breatharian? Yeah, you have to be a breatharian now. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I realized that right side broadcasting is probably live now, so I've got to start my recording of the whole Trump events and which I think some people think is insane, but I do it for every one of them. So let's see here. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they're already... Whatever... See, uh, they're already live here, so I've got to rewind to the... What's up? I was just going to say, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever uh, you find is entertaining. I mean, again, everybody has different forms of entertainment. Yeah. And uh, things that are important to people, things that are, you know, they enjoy seeing. So, yeah, I get it. Okay. There we go. They're going to be in, what is it, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. Now... I need to get a clock for my office upstairs. And I just saw one down in the basement, so I'm going to go get that. Um, now, is it a vintage clock? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's not like from a... It's one of those 1970s alarm clocks that I don't... I guess it's vintage, but it's not really something that's really neat or anything. It's something you could probably get for a dollar at a... That's store. okay. But it, you know, it has it's I love evocative of Sundays. memories from when I was a kid. Absolutely. This morning I moved a jukebox uh, upstairs, which that's mm -hmm. one in elevators, helpful. Oh, and absolutely. I moved, uh, ooh, there's a lot more room in here now. Turn the light on. I. Uh, this is where I really need to be working is in this basement because I've got all these pinball machines. Let me give myself a full view here for a second. So we'll lay out. <clears throat> I've got these pinball machines, but they're all covered with stuff. Like these records need to go upstairs. And, and this Boot Hill game uh, was over there. And the Space Invaders game was, Shit. was over there too. And so I moved these pinball machines over some, and, uh, and I, I've got, let me take this Miller High Life. You know, that's how I originally discovered you, was uh, looking at vintage jukeboxes. And you did a video oh. years ago showing you starting up and playing one of your vintage jukeboxes. Oh, it was the AMI. And there were people that got really mad at me because they said the thing was playing too slow. That's because I hadn't, I hadn't played it in a while. And they said, why are you panning away from the, the item? You know, they, they wanted us to see only the jukebox. I was panning around and showing monster stuff. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I loved it. I loved about. it. That's what originally uh, made me subscribe to your channel because then that intrigued me and I started looking at other videos and then I realized... You were a big comic book guy, and so, yeah, that's uh, I, I subscribed and started watching your videos at that point. But that's what yeah. actually brought me to your channel. Yeah, that's why I probably should do more of uh, that kind of thing. Um, because then you get people in from other places. There's Eisenhower dies. Um, yeah, let me get these records upstairs.
Here's some artwork from uh, Night Tiger Comics. Um, now, was that artwork he did? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know he was an artist also. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he, I think when he was younger, he wanted to uh, be a comics artist. There's a, I made a color copy of this Men's Adventure magazine cover. I mean, that <laughs> That's a great cover. Wall. That's a yeah. great cover. This probably was part of a calendar in Japan. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I got to do down here. Um, I'll get this all. I'm going to, it's just, I, I think we'll all, no, I can do it during a live stream, but then you really can't <laughs> while you're holding the thing. But all on. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to see how I can get this better. Um, dang it. Yeah, yeah, these are 45 RPM records that were supposed to be in a jukebox, and they never got loaded. And then I was thinking, I need to go to the supermarket and break a dollar bill because I need quarters for because that machine was never put on free play. So I need to put a quarter in to hear records. And then I realized I don't have any money. Physical money and and I would well car um because I found a quarter, but I luckily I didn't shout out, oh a quarter. I was so excited like I was it would have been back in 1974 when I found the quarter, <laughs> but just mainly because I can make the jukebox work and I don't have to go through the hassle of getting a quarter from the supermarket. Um, the, the jukebox that I moved upstairs is a mid 60s one that uh, has black light glowing black light and uh, the very last episode of the prisoner uh, he, he's going down a corridor yes to this jukebox and not this particular one but one like it uh, this is it, it there oh very cool oh, yeah in fact that last episode um the uh, the Beatles were fans of that show, The Prisoner, and they allowed him to play that song, the Beatles song, right. All You Need to Love, which they never allowed anybody to do back then. But they gave uh, that company the permission, ITC permission, to uh, use their song because they were such big fans of uh, the show. Yeah, it says Discotech. This was their... Uh... That's the that's nothing to do with disco music. That was the original meaning right. of disco. Absolutely. And uh, so I got to get these records in the right slots. So that's. Uh, and you probably know this, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, the the juke juke uh, jukebox comes from the African word juka, which means to dance. Yeah, I used to know that, but and I. <laughs> But I something I've forgotten. But I remember knowing that at one time. Now that you mention it, ooh, someone is appearing. Oh, we got two people waiting. Add to stage. Uh, Kevin is back, and Meyer. Hey, Kevin. Is back. How's it going? I just got a package hey, in the mail. How are you? Or. So Let's see what he's Gretchen. showing. He's always showing something I got. Let's give him solo layup. What is oh, that? Nice. Oh, more stuff from uh, John Goris? Yeah, he just sent me a, another batch. Oh, wow. do I don't see how he can do with... Oh, wow. I want to, that's cool. Those Wait. are great. I would, could, could I, could I buy that one from you? That last one you showed. Oh, that one. If you're not keeping it, I would love that one. And if you still have oh, the one cool. with the bullet holes behind him from that you showed the other day, I was in love with that one too. 
<laughs> There's one with bullet holes, you say? Well, it's, yeah, it's probably gone. If your customers have any taste whatsoever, they would have taken that one. Oh, they're so They're all so That's probably it. There. <laughs> Want this one? That's, <laughs> he's so great, man. What time is it, guys? I'm trying to set a clock. You're all in different time zones. What am I talking what time well, I'm, a, I'm an hour ahead of you, and it's 3.30, 3.31 oh, oh, right now, 3.31. Okay, thank you. 12.31. Yeah. 3 Every one of those is an original piece of art that is a sticker. Yeah, all done on, on post it doesn't, it doesn't sign them. I have to sign each one. So. They're all U.S. mail stickers. <laughs> he must. They must have wanted posters in the post office for him. He probably takes all the stickers and draws on them. It's what, 31, you say? Yeah, it's 31 still. Yep. Okay. What's 31? The time. I'm trying to set a clock. <laughs> oh, military. Military time. Came into the Deadpool. I was wondering if you were going to make that. I'll show you what I'm doing here. It's not very bright, but nice. Well, get a chance. Eh? Uh, I remember <laughs> those. Of a different time period. Oh yeah. Yes. But uh, this way, I no. It's I put twelve. It's two thirty-one. Yeah. Yes, for you it's uh, two thirty-two right now. That's right. Two thirty-two. All right. There you go. Now I won't be behind for the next Trump rally. I still have one of those that has the individual numbers that flick like a Rolodex. You know the one I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah. I have Where one like that in the kitchen. <laughs> it's That's not feasible, the but there, there must be how many cards inside of there that are spinning around it's you know what i mean the one that switches the numbers oh i know yes. exactly yeah. what you mean i know exactly yeah yeah i still have it i use it only as a radio now i just use it to listen to the radio to the baseball games i really i haven't used it to listen to a baseball game for like 10 years though um oh dr yeah, five here's a... that here's that ship interesting so, so i thought you might know about this because the the postmark on this postcard is from grand rapids michigan 1982 interesting no i'm not uh, familiar with that ship so there's there's kind of it says uh the mystery ship from 19 fathoms built 1846 sank 1864 raised 1969 the Alvin Clark is being preserved by the Mystery Ship Preservation Society, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the preservation of Great Lakes maritime history, Menominee, Michigan. And then I think it's kind of, there's this interesting cryptic message to Kathleen, you know, I have this, this collection of postcards that I'm going over of all of these glamorous places that her family and friends used to send her postcards from. It says, Dear Kathleen, Plans are underway to bring this boat to Montague if they can collect $200,000. We leave for California on the 28th, but coming by air. Be limited to travel when we get there. Love, CL and Dor. Isn't that funny or interesting? Yeah, that back. is. That is fascinating. Now, there is a uh, World War II submarine that is um in the water docked uh just south of uh grand rapids that i stayed at um with the boy scouts when my son was in the boy scouts we got to go on that and stay overnight on the actual world war ii submarine they used it in a movie also this sub and uh boy you talk about tight quarters unbelievably tight crazy yeah i don't know how they could do it oh those guys were insane in world war ii i mean yeah and you know they uh they got the best food and they were they relaxed their uh their rules as far as their facial hair and their the length of their hair 
um, for yeah. obvious reasons being on this sub. But um, yeah, that was the one extra perk that they got was they got better food than anybody else. And of course, you know, that wouldn't be enough to draw me to be a, on a submarine during World War II. Yeah, um, it was an all-volunteer service as well, I pretty, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. And so there were different – people were there for different reasons. Um, a lot of those guys were acclimated to that, and it was easier for them to focus on certain stuff. And, you know, on, on time might have moved in a, better, in a better way. I don't know. Everybody has a, has a – you know, makes a choice for what they're doing. But I'm pretty sure it was all volunteer. Those guys were choosing to be down there. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of wild when you think about it, because I would I chose to be completely the opposite. I wanted to be just with a small number of people in the jungle or the desert or the forest, you know, six or eight or 10 or 12 of us kind of sleeping in the dirt. It felt much safer to me. Right. Regardless of whether we were jumping out of airplanes or helicopters, that was the fun part. That was the getting into it. I've been making these videos about these postcards that I inherited from this this woman in Carmel, and um, they're pretty cool. I've got they're very more. cool. I um, enjoyed that video. Thank you. Got a couple more videos coming up because I still have a lot more postcards. And some of the messages on the back are, are really fascinating and interesting. These were kind of well talent or well traveled people, and um, what they write can sometimes be interesting. But they were all over the world. Okay, so my wife says she's cooking. Uh, should I need to eat in about ten minutes? So I might have to disappear for ten minutes for in, in a few minutes. Um, huh. So, Gratu, your wife uh, mentioned uh, the prints that were behind me. A couple of uh, I'll, I'll show you. Just oh yeah, I don't know what she's talking about. I can barely these, see anything. Oh, these oh, prints right here. So there are a couple of dandies. These prints actually date to the 1890s. And I have two other prints that I haven't put up. But, yeah, I thought they were kind of cool. They're old. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hey, what you mentioned just like casually the other day that you used to own a restaurant. What's the deal with that? Yeah, I did. Um, I did back uh, – that would have been um, – 1998 uh, through 2002, um, I had a restaurant and in Ann Arbor, and I had bands that would play there. And what happened was um, one of the um, the owners of the building, we were we were bringing in crowds, and in the evening time, um, we would have literally people standing outside looking through the windows to watch certain bands. I remember when Death Cab for Cutie came and uh, they were playing. Um, we had people in the alleyway looking through the window and people out front looking through the window that because we were sold out, they couldn't come in. So they were just standing out there just to watch them perform. And uh, the owner's parents lived on the top floor of this building. And they, of course, complained that they couldn't get to their car. They couldn't come and go as they wanted to. So. He ended up making things very difficult for me and didn't want to have the live music. And I said, well, I'm not going to do this place if I can't have live music. I mean, that's a lot of my bread and butter. I was bringing in my crowds. So um, so anyway, we kind of came to an agreement that um, I would get out of it. He would uh, let me break my lease. And, and it was getting a bit much for me because I was still working as a full-time firefighter. And on my days off, um, I was there from morning, early in the morning until, you know, sometimes two in the morning. And I just didn't have a life. I was a single guy then, thank, God, thank goodness. But, um, yeah, I just didn't have any time to do anything. So it was uh, kind of a mixed blessing. I mean, I didn't want to uh, sell it and, and close. But on the other hand, I, I just kind of needed to because it was a bit too much. So that's oh. what ended up happening. Was that during the time you were living above the movie theater? No, that was uh, later. That The time when I was living uh, above the movie theater would have been uh, the late 80s, early 90s. So from about 1988 until 90, 
three or four probably. And then I ended up moving to another place downtown that was even a cooler setup. It was literally like, I, I felt like Bruce Wayne because I was on the top floor of this building. It was full of attorneys during the daytime. And I told the owner, I said, listen, if you let me convert these two offices into living space, you'll have a great apartment afterwards when I'm done, but you got to give me a really good rate. And the same thing I did with the Capitol Theater. That's how I was able to live there. So cheap is that I told the, the owner of the building, I'll do the work, but you got to give me a really good deal. And of course they did. So the other guy agreed to the same thing because when I left the Capitol, um, it was mainly for safety reasons because the Capitol Theater was obviously a theater that was open to the public. And there was a few incidents that were happening um, because they had a nightclub that they opened up in the theater. Make a long story short, what happened was uh, there was some um, uh, homeless people that were coming into the theater at night and wanting to sleep in the hallways. And um, so during the wintertime, I had come across a couple of them because I was able to kind of shut off the stairway to that would lead you upstairs to where my, the hall, um, where my apartment was. Um, but with the club operating, sometimes they would leave those gates open. And um, when I came across these people, I'd say, listen, I'll let you sleep here. But if you urinate or shit anywhere in the hallway, you're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be really bad news for you. Trust me. And they were cool about it. You know, they would use the public restroom. Um, but then what happened, a couple of these college students started harassing a guy and messing with them. Well, and he came up with a uh, some kind of a razor blade straight razor, I don't know what, but he sliced them up pretty bad. And um, so when my girlfriend at the time was going, coming to my place, there was just blood everywhere. It looked like a scene from, you know, <laughs> Charles Manson. And there was blood everywhere. And of course, you know, they hadn't cleaned it up yet. The police and everything had come. So I just thought, well, it's too dangerous for my girlfriend to be coming and going in this place now that we've got crap going on. So I moved from there to another building called the McKinnon Building. And this is the one where I say it was really set up cool for me because I had an entrance in the back of the building. I would drive down an alley. I would have my own garage door opener. The garage door would open. I'd pull under, underground, had underground parking. Garage door would go down behind me. I'd get out of my car. I'd go over to, there was two elevators. There was a public one. And then there was the, um, the, the worker. that was like a, one of those old fashioned gate, you know, elevators that you would take the lever and uh, have to, you know, close the gate and bring it up. Well, that way, this freight, they called it a freight elevator. That was private. You had to have a key. That was my elevator that would take you to my apartment. So it would take you up to the top floor and you'd be in my apartment. And I, and I, it was so cool that I had it set up. I knocked out a couple of walls. I had a nice bathroom in there, bedroom uh, area where I had all my uh, music and stuff set up. So friends would come over and we'd play music. I had my drum kit set up there. And after 5 p.m., that whole office building would empty out. So then I could make all the noise I wanted. I was the only person in the building. And the owner of the building liked it because he liked having a firefighter in there. He knew it was secure. It's like having 24-hour security service yeah. there. So it was good for him. It was good for me because, like I say, during the business hours, you know, I couldn't be loud. I couldn't be in there playing music real loud. But it was fine. I mean, I was, you know, uh, but after 5 p.m., I could make all the noise I wanted. So it was a sweet setup. And I lived there for several years. Do you have photographs or videos of? I do. I do. I have uh, videos of, of, you know, bands and stuff coming over and playing music at both of the locations. I wish I regret that I didn't get photographs of a lot of the famous bands that were coming through at the Capitol Theater. Because again, you know, I would sit and visit with some of these guys and meet them. Um, a lot of them, like, as I was telling you, I wasn't familiar with, uh, you know, Red Cross or uh, oh, Alien great. Sex Queen, you know, Alien Sex Queen, all these weird bands. A lot of them, I just, I wasn't into them at that time. Um, it was all new to me, a lot of that, because I was, you know, into a different, different scene. Um, yeah, but Red Cross is great. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm sure you've learned to appreciate them. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to put these videos on YouTube, hopefully? You know, I don't have, right now, what I need to do 
is um, that stuff was all shot on Hi8 video. Okay. Um, high definition, eight millimeter video. And I don't have a camera anymore or a machine that runs that. Now I've gone online and looked and you can get them. You could, it's, it's basically like a small VCR, right? So tape that's yeah. about this big. Yeah. And that's what I need to do is I need to convert all of that stuff because yeah. um, I've got, oh, probably a hundred videotapes of, you know, my life. I mean, everything from, you know, trips to some of this stuff with uh, bands and concerts that we've played and just lots of stuff. And yeah, I would like to uh, to definitely get some of that stuff converted because some of that stuff would really be entertaining to see. Yes, get get one of those machines. They can't be that expensive. And start getting that on YouTube. It'll be fantastic. Do you have flyers for the bands that played at your restaurant? I flyers? I do. I have some. I do. I have I have some of this, the flyers um, that I've saved. Um, some of the tapes, and uh, you know, because everybody, when you have a, a venue that you're playing you have everybody sending you, you know, their CD or their tape saying, Hey, can we play at your place? And of course we, I would listen to it, but it got so busy that I ended up having to have some other people, you know, I'd say, Hey, can you listen to this and see if it's worth having at our, at our, uh, at our restaurant, at my restaurant to play? Because needless to say, there's some bands that are just terrible and they, you know, you're just like, no, there's no way that, that they should play here. But others, you know, they'd be like really, really good. And then we would have, because I was dealing with Prism and a couple of other companies, we would have more of the, you know, mainstream groups because we were, we were small. So, you know, we wouldn't have anybody that was real big. But I remember like when Death Cab for Cutie were first starting out, you know, we had them. Um, we had... Um, I don't oh, know okay. much about that band, I have to admit. I okay, heard. yeah, they're... They were a newer band. Um, we had some stuff from the a few different people from uh, from the '60s that were there. Um, we had a uh, John Sinclair who just recently died. Um, he was the one that they did the John Sinclair rally for. John Lennon and Yoko Ono and Bob Seger was at that event, and all these different people performed. This was back in 1970, 71. I think it was 71. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, he uh, had him there. Um, gosh, I could give you, I mean, it's kind of, I'm drawing a blank right now, now but um, we had uh, Flash, there was a band I never even heard of before. This is crazy, called Flash Paper. Never heard of, I couldn't believe how many people wanted to come and see this band. It was ridiculous. I mean, we had phone calls coming from everywhere because I was in a college town. So, you know, we were bringing in a lot of those acts that were more geared towards the college audience. And um, we had people standing down all the way down the street, just wanting to be able to see these guys and meet them. And I've got a one CD where they do a cover of a Nick Drake song. That's, that's pretty good. But other than that, uh, they were kind of like one of those lo-fi bands. Are you familiar with the band Lo? They're from, okay, anyway, they were kind of that style, but um, yeah, we, uh, and then we had some, uh, a few kind of more, they weren't really hardcore punk, because that really wasn't our venue. The Blind Pig was a place that you would probably play if you were going to be more hardcore punk, but uh, we did have a few bands that they called themselves punk. What kind of food did you serve in the, re what kind of restaurant was it? Well, it was a restaurant that um, was mainly uh, British fare. Uh, so, but it was also your your typical bar food, right? You had uh, hamburgers and, and fries and, and fish and chips was our big seller. We did, uh, so we did a lot of that kind of pub food. And the theme so it was I like had. like a pub. Yeah. And the theme I had was uh, the Beatles mainly. Um, I had oh, a lot okay. of uh, memorabilia all on the walls. Tons of memorabilia hanging everywhere on the walls. So that's yep. all the stuff that's now in your basement. Yes, and in, that that's also, I, I had the British phone booth in there as well, inside the restaurant. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, it all makes, now it's starting to, I'm starting to make connections here. Yeah, yeah so that's, that's how I got a lot of the stuff framed uh, because of that. 
I had a lot of like all my music memorabilia framed and it was hanging in the, uh, in the restaurant. So. My wife says, I'm sure you had shepherd's pie. Yes, absolutely. It, it reminds me of a place that Cleo and I liked back in the old country called, uh, J.R. Bentley's in Arlington, Texas. It, it was a, it was the same kind of thing, college town and great. And I hung out there when I was in college long before I met uh, Cleo. Uh, but that's, uh, <laughs> I have memories of that place. Uh, that was, <laughs> yeah, that's where I first, uh, my first, uh, not my first glass of beer, but my first, uh, yeah, it was in that restaurant. And my friend, <laughs> uh, my friend Tom, the one time some Madonna song came on in the middle of the, it was in the 1980s, and <laughs> he was trying to register. He didn't like that. And he coughed, and then at the same time, he real hard hit against the big wooden uh, chairs for sitting. At. And then the owner came over, was, 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 a, was real friendly with us, but he was real mad at him. <laughs> Apparently, on the other side of this big wooden, uh, seat we were in what had broken off on the other side <laughs> <laughs> and uh and so he was like saying it's about, they think and uh anyway he was saying i i apologize it's like defacing the cordova what was it called in clockwork orange the cordova milk bars <laughs> it was insane i mean so many crazy stories about that and, uh um and then the owner was like saying, well, it's kind of like the time you did this to the bathroom. And then his friend was saying, he's accusing us of something that we didn't do. And they had all this drama. I think, uh, shit. Uh, did, but you don't remember any other bands that played there? Or offhand? Um, you know, we had, um, oh, I'm trying to, the, the guy from, um, you know, I'll pull some of these CDs out because, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, but there was uh, one that was a British I guy. run to eat. It'll take me five minutes, but you guys can keep talking. I'll be hearing on the TV, and I'm going to try to sure. like call a couple of people and see if they can come on today. Um, let's see. So, uh, all right, so oh, I'll go ahead and my wife's continue saying, talking. I, I bet that you can bartend, too. She says, make me a Bloody Mary, Dr. Fives, LOL. Are you also a bartender? <laughs> no, I'm says, not, no. You just finished cooking. I'm not, but yeah, I mean, uh, my wife. Okay, I'll be right back. Sorry, guys, to leave to abandon you. So one of the things that uh, that we had that was really popular, and I'll tell you the secret ingredient, was our fish and chips. We made a beer batter. Okay, so while I was coming up with ideas of of how to do this, you know, you you start working with different people. I had a a, a friend who had gone to a chef school, and he was, you know kind of over the top. I mean, he, when we first started, he was literally making the mayonnaise homemade. And when I started, I, I was like tasting the mayonnaise and then I would taste Hellman's. And it's like, you know what? I don't really know it's a difference. So why the heck are we going through all the trouble of making homemade mayonnaise when his tastes just like Hellman's in my opinion? You know, you know it's I like- ask, Is there a difference between mayonnaise and aioli or is it just the name? Like it sounds, it, sound, it sounds fancier if you call it aioli. Is it the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, anyway, um, so here was what I was going to say about the beer batter. So I'm trying out, we're making this beer batter, and I'm just using Drake's, um, you know, batter mix, right, in the beginning. And I'm trying all these different exotic beers. I'm thinking, well, I want to make this taste special, different. So I'm using everything from... Uh, ales, Guinness, Stout, to uh, really expensive beers. And believe it or not, the best tasting beer batter that we made, and everybody would, you know, agree that, oh, yeah, this is the one. And you would think it would be an expensive beer. It was the cheapest beer that we could buy, which was a malt liquor. Literally, if you bought Colt 45 malt liquor, that's the one because of the malt. Okay. That made the difference, is what we figured. What, what it was that made the difference? If it was the yeah, cheaper. Okay. yeah, because you know some of those cheap beers are stronger, but they also, if you get the malt liquor, you know, mm -hmm. that's a different 
taste. And of course, most people do not want the cheap beers. They're not going to drink a cheap beer like, you know, Colt 45 malt liquor. But uh, yeah, that's what made the difference. And that made a better beer batter for your fish than the expensive beers. Mm -hmm. So just a little, you know, tip there. If you're going to ever make a beer batter, I would uh, add a malt liquor. I definitely beer. will remember that. Yeah, yeah beer with, uh, with the malt in it. And, uh, and we actually made real malts at our, uh, at our restaurant. You know, a lot of people nowadays, malts are kind of a thing of the past. Now it's just yeah. shakes. Everybody has a shake. And, um, and as you know, there's a big difference between a shake and a malt. And a malt has malt in it. And then a lot of places, because it's uh, easier and it's cheaper, they will use the liquid malt. It's not the same. You right. want to get the powdered malt. Makes a difference. Um, yeah, it that, does. I miss it. And, that, and I prefer a malt to a shake. I always have. I'd rather get a chocolate malt. I agree. There's a difference. There's a big difference. So, yeah, I would definitely have a malt over over a shake any day. But very few play, you know, very few people do it. It's hard to find a, a restaurant that does a malt. Yeah, and when you ask me, the, go the ahead. Product, the, uh, that granulated malted milk mix isn't even like a, a forefront product anymore. That, you know, it used to be right. on the shelf next to Hershey's and everything, right? Yeah. Carnation malted milk mix, maybe it was. I don't remember. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's it's hard to find. And uh, it's, it's still made, but it's hard to find. Hey, Kevin, uh, I see you, uh, you're on. Is there anything that you want to show? No, I was just, uh, it was like Night of the Living Dead just now. I was trying to keep out a fentanyl zombie out of the, I'm coming in. Oh, really? Great. What happened? I don't know. Some guy wanted, he came up and he wanted to, me to give him a shirt. I didn't have any old like shirts or maybe I would have given him one, but, and then he just kept bothering us. He's trying to come in through the back door. Really? So I locked the door and then he tried coming in through the front door. So I locked that door. Well, if he's still sticking around, call the police. Yeah, I will. But he, it looks like he moved on. That's why I just locked the door. So okay. he would just move, he would just move along. So you then I, just went out, I went out to check the neighbors and make sure they weren't getting uh, messed with. You've got somebody there at the store with you, don't you, Kevin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you have uh, much of a problem with that at all, with some of the vagrants and stuff coming around, or not really? Well, not really. Not too oh, bad. Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, they cleaned up the Phoenix. They cleaned up Phoenix. They used to have like a, a whole, I don't know what they called it, like Tent City, but no, they didn't call it Tent City because that was what they called the prison. And they had tents set up for uh, Sheriff Joe Apio. Yeah. They used to call that tent to make them wear pink boxers. But no, that's, they call it something else, but it was a whole tent city. That's what it was. It was like a whole campground downtown Phoenix. And they basically put every business out of uh, out of business down there, and they just cleaned it up. I think last month moved them moved them along. So now yeah. they're coming. Now they're just coming into other parts of the valley. Of course. Yeah, I was going to ask about yeah. the heat and about the in, the increase in the heat and the changing of the seasons. How that increases or affects the movement of homeless people. Or yeah, they're going to have to try to find uh, shade somewhere or, shade yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Now, do you have uh, a problem with that where you're at, Meyer? Year round here because the weather is always yeah. the same, but not in my neighborhood. No. Okay. Um, my neighborhood is pretty much free of what of what you're used to seeing on the news about San Francisco. Yeah, that's uh, what I figured. A lot of it has to do with uh, lack of resources for street people, for like drug addicts and homeless people. There's no liquor stores out here. There's no parking lots. There's no street corners. There's no fast food restaurants, no places for people to congregate. And it's a small neighborhood with a fairly proactive police department. You know, our district has a police department that will act pretty quickly. Um, and that's so they, what's important. What's that? It's real important. Yeah. It is very important. And so they're, they're always, it's pretty clean here. 
you see it in my videos. It, it looks like that all the time, even you know, through the times recently. It's still pretty much has stayed the same. Good. But people do come down every night to the beach and and sleep there and stay up all night and party there. There's very little enforcement of any laws down on the beach where I live. Like okay, you know, yeah. There's nobody patrolling down there anymore like they used to. Yeah, and you're talking about moving. I know. Um, yeah, so now, are you in an apartment, or are you actually uh, own the place you're at? In an apartment. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to move from the place you're at right now, and looking at moving where your son is, which would look beautiful. Look like a great yeah, place to a, to, a, to and probably you know to another apartment or a condo sure. up there. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Plus, you're close to your son, which would be nice too. Yeah, that's the main reason. The main reason yeah. is I want to be able to, to see him, you know, every day that I possibly can at this point and, and hang sure. out. And also, it's a very, like, this place is not a retirement atmosphere. I'm kind of like, I'm done with the city at this point. There's not much more, you know, for me here. So it's time to, to retire pretty much. Okay. So what kind of work um, do you do? Nothing right now. Um, okay. I've done a I've done other stuff like I've worked in the medical field and then I've worked in producing and performing on stage here in San Francisco. Oh, really? So what, what do you do? Most of what I do is modern dance. I've been in a couple of modern dance performances and then I produced and wrote for some of those different performances and different. I did readings. I used to do a I used to write a lot and so I used to do live readings of my work and sometimes there would be dancers, you know, that would be around me and it would be lit and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you have more of that Bohemian uh, scene there. It's a very San Francisco thing. I was, yeah. I was, I was recruited into it uh, through my writing that I had been doing. Sure. With the, the veterans administration with this creative art guild that I was in and people came from the outside to recruit some of us and I was recruited and then I continued to do more work for some other dance companies here in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. You're definitely going to have more of that scene. I liked San Francisco. Uh, my wife used to live there for several years. And um, the first time I went to San Francisco would have been 1979 as a kid, uh, went out there to visit some family and um, I loved it then. And then I went again in uh, the early 2000s, and we had a great time. Um, and it's just a shame that it, it's getting to the way it, you know, what, what's happening to that city. It's just disgusting because it was yeah. it was such a great city. It was a lot of fun. I love going to Chinatown. Food was amazing. Just incredible food that you could get there, dirt cheap. And then, of course, there's a lot of great restaurants of every type, you know, the um, mom and pop type place, as well as the really high end. I mean, it's all there. Right. There's yeah. a real famous tiki room here. Like the, the, uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. You know, that says uh, the, there's a big tiki restaurant here. I think it's at maybe the Fillmore hotel. I'm trying or not the Fillmore. It's at the, it's at the top of the mark, the Fremont, maybe the Fremont hotel. There's a, a real famous San Francisco tiki restaurant and bar that has a, uh, like a water show like a rainforest type situation that goes on where it rains uh -huh. in every night. Um, I've never been, I can't remember the name of it. It might be just called the, it's not the Tiki room. I don't know. Well, you know, that guy uh, that I was talking about spikes uh -huh. um, breezeway. Okay. He, his channel, he, I noticed that there, you know, he's got a ton of reviews where he goes to these restaurants all over the place. And one of them did say San Francisco. So it's probably the place you're talking about. Yeah, I would think it is. It's a it's a famous place. It's one of the oldest tiki restaurants in the U.S. I think. I think it was opened like after World War II. Okay, I bet it is. Then I bet you he does a review of it. It's an interesting channel. The guy um, goes. Hey, all what was the name of that channel? I want to write it down. Spikes. Spikes. It's called there you go. Yeah. Spikes. Say it one more time. Spike Breezeway Cocktail. Did you hear that, Kevin? I got spikes something. Breezeway. Okay. Alley.
Can you guys hear me up there? A lot of noise at uh, Gotham City. Uh, I see uh, right. Ratu's wife is asking a question about what city we're talking about. So we're talking about San Francisco. Yeah. It happened in really quick, too, too, Martin. It happened like in 10, 15 years. It, it was a steady, quick degradation. So when I first moved here 15 years ago, it wasn't like it is now. It still yeah. had that old flavor. I worked downtown, and I used to do these performances like i'm telling you and sometimes i would have to be out till four o'clock in the morning because after you do these performances there's there's rap parties or dinners or cocktail hours that you're oh, invited sure. to and i go and you go to these after hours parties it's kind of part of your job in a way it's almost half of what you're doing here in san francisco if you're performing on stage is smoozing with other with the it's smoozing with the donors in a way the people that are responsible for paying for the show will put on events like during the show's run and you have to go to those events and be there and, and absolutely sit there and sometimes it goes till three or four in the morning it oh, was yeah. completely safe this city i would come home by myself on the train it would be me and a bag lady waiting at the train stop there would be no criminals no heroin i didn't see any heroin addicts it really wasn't until the last eight or ten years that you started to have to step over heroin addicts and people sleeping in the tunnels and the trains. Yeah. And then as it got worse, I dropped out of that field. And so I stopped having to go downtown and I just spent my time here at the beach. And so I don't, I don't deal with downtown at all anymore because of th those reasons. It's, it's unsafe, but I used to go out to North beach, Chinatown all night, the whole, the whole thing in, in different parts of the city, we would traipse around and, and it was totally safe. Yeah, but not at all anymore. Now it's like a uh, barter town in, you know, Mad Max or something. You know? Right. Right. Literally, it is. Yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. And then afterwards, you're right. You got to get to, you got to do the networking. You got to make connections. And when, with that, of course, it, it opens more doors. And yeah, every time it does. That's what you're basically doing is <laughs> you're going from job to job in that way is making sure. connections. And, sure. And, uh, so, Kevin, um, Greta Orloff, she posted the name of the uh, YouTube channel um, just a little while ago. It was it was posted, but it is the Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour. And if you put that in on YouTube, you'll find the channel. And it's a cool channel. It really is. It's it's an entertaining channel to uh, watch. I don't know if Kevin heard me. I think yeah. he might be busy with a customer. You know what I thought of that I can tell you about real quick that's kind of a kick that you might like to hear about? So the year that I spent in Seoul, I lived real close to this famous neighborhood in Seoul that's called Itaewon. It's like a it's a, a famous partying neighborhood that, that was kind of just built up around that main army base in Seoul. And there's tremendous neon signs there, right? And so when you first see it, like you're kind of marveled by all of this neon that's going all night, every night, right? So I'd only been there for a short time, like a couple of days. This guy that I met, you know, at work, he's all, dude, I got to take you down to the twilight zone and you got to get cheese ramen. And I'm all, all right, I mean, sure. Well, I guess we'll go down to the oh, wow. What about going to the bill? The bill. One day the bill. So I'm like, sure, I've never been to the bill. You got to show you, you got to show me around and everything. So we get down there. And the name of this, this restaurant or club is actually the Twilight Zone. And it has the exact logo of the Twilight Zone. And all the clubs, for the most part, are not street level. They're on the second floor. You know how that works in Asia. And you go up some steps, you know, uh, some stairway, and there's a little door on the street level, and you go up these stairways to the club. So it, but it's cool. just, you go up there into the Twilight Zone. It's just a regular, like, club. But it, there's a lot of, like, uh, maybe a lot of, of shiny silver stuff and everything like that. But it's, it's just a bowl of ramen. So then I grow to know the Ville and get used to it all. Now, there was this great club that was called the Boston Club, and all it was was a giant neon sign of the Boston logo exactly off the album cover, and it was spectacular. 
it was like 10 feet by 15 feet and it was huge looking up in the street and you go up the stairs and it's just a dingy little club right there's nothing about boston wow. on the inside but it looks really awesome you know but they're playing boston in there you know it's a everything is yacht rock you know they're they're about 10 or 20 or 30 years behind us they love american heavy metal and rock <laughs> Speaking of heavy metal. so then the the next club i'm going to tell you about is an actual good club that i discovered that blew my mind it was called the heavy metal club and it had the exact logo of heavy metal with the lazy y oh that's so, great and it, a huge sign but this club was up high like five stories up in this kind of dilapidated building so you had to go up this concrete stairway that was almost like a stairway in a parking garage to get up to where the club was but when you get up into the club the whole club was pink neon and black light and the whole place was the walls were covered with bootleg frank frazetta velvet black light paintings that were like that were like you know somebody duplicating like like looking at a picture and painting you know and korean artists very good but it wasn't top of the line but it was still obviously a guy copy, copying all of these frazetta pieces on on velvet with neon it looked great this place had couches inside of it and had a dj that you would walk up and you would write down your request on a little slip of paper and give him a dollar and put it in you know in, in and he had a little like an order like order thing where he put it on you know on on a on a spike and he and he would just go through everybody's requests totally live place but one of the other the last thing about this place that was funny so this was a place that i often often frequented but you go in the bathroom in this place and the urinals were smashed out so like you stand up to the full urinal the porcelain urinal it looked like somebody had taken a hammer or a sledgehammer and bashed right through the porcelain and all the way through the wall. So when you peed, you were peeing down through this brick structure, through the cinder blocks you could directly see. And you could see the pee against the cinder blocks going down the inside of the building all the way like four or five floors down. It was like. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes. Yes. That's incredible. So uh, with all that neon, was it kind of like a, like a Blade Runner feel to it? You know, the movie Blade Runner? Complete Blade Runner feel to, to it. All of this in the middle of this alley, I'm, I'm telling you about part of it is a huge open fish market. So there's just <laughs> everything you could think of. Sea creatures that you'd never imagine actually existed, you see there. You're like, what the <laughs> hell is that thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could just imagine. Also, there were these giant tanks of eels right huge fish tanks but there's so many eels in them that almost there's almost no water the eels are so packed in there that they're displacing the, the water in the in the tank and these you you get a get an eel and they pull it out put it on a spike and they do this whole thing right there and then you're supposed to drink the blood and you eat parts of it all raw all like boom they do it real quick the the whole the eel action is quick but i never tried the eel wow and, but I ate all the other stuff for the most part, just not like live on the street like that. I love Korean food. I love oh, it. So good. And, it and the old movies, they would it, it just like I don't know if there's movies like this, but they feed you without you paying extra or anything. There's this whole traditional deal where they, you, you settle in a bar, you pick one of these bars. Many of them are very small with very few patrons, so they want you to stay there all night. So. There'll be a staff of three or four girls taking care of a, of, a, of a booth of three or four GIs. They want to keep us there. They have a chogi boy come and bring full course meals. And then the girls cover the table with plates and bowls and they'll roll sushi and actually literally feed you with chopsticks and uh, bring pitchers of beer, the whole thing, soju over the top, everything for like 20 bucks a night, basically. It was kind of a, it was a great time. Wow. Yeah, I bet you've got some amazing stories being there. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I, like I said, mentioned before, I worked in the ER there. And a lot of the times I worked the, the evening shift from 3 to 11. So you get off at 11 o'clock at night and you've seen like the rush of the, the evening emergency room rush until 11 o'clock, 1130. Then you get off and we're all ready to party. So we're all ready to go out on the Ville and be there by midnight, stay out until four or five in the morning catch breakfast on the way home and then do it all over again. You kind of get 
sucked into that cycle. Then you don't have to get up, you know, until, you know, 10 o'clock or, you know, 11 o'clock the next morning, that sort of thing, 12 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would, uh, I would, I'd love being in uh, South Korea. Um, it'd be a neat experience. I've never been to uh, Asia. Oh, I thought you had been. I thought, I I've never been happened. there. I've been to South America, Europe, of course, North Africa, um, been all over Europe, but I've never been to an Asian country. And I would, I would love hey, Dr. to. Dr. Fibes, what part of Michigan are, you, Michigan are you from? I'm originally from Flint, the hell Flint. hole. Yeah, the hellhole. Yeah. I have a customer from Sag. Was it called Saginaw? Saginaw. Saginaw. I got a customer here from there. I know Saginaw well. In fact, my father-in-law uh, grew up in Saginaw, born and raised yeah. in Saginaw. Yes. Yep. So he he's familiar with Flint. He knows Flint, Midland, that whole area, Bay City. Yeah. 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 So I live. Uh, uh, outside of Ann Arbor now. I'm west of Ann Arbor. I'm out in the country. So I'm in oh Manchester. My goodness, a marathon gas station in that area. Oh, is that right? Near Ann Arbor. Okay, I got approved here. Yeah. What happened last time you came out? Put it on top of that cardboard. So, Meyer, you were born and raised in the uh, San Francisco area, right? Yes. Yeah, I've heard you say that. Yeah, when you were a kid, you were, you yeah. know. Yeah, when I was in. Well, obviously, you've seen a lot of change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And not for the better. None of it, except for the pop tops on the, on the cans. I mean, you, you cut your feet on those. I'm glad we got rid of those. But other than that, everything moved <laughs> down the street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can remember about a dozen films that Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing did together. Yeah. They say there's two dozen. So next time yeah. I come here, I'm going to have the 12 I can remember and see if you guys can remember any others. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go to the library and go on Wikipedia. To yeah, Internet Movie Database. Just go on there. And you'll find them all. I'm a huge Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing fan. And I have a ton of movies. And pretty much if it's available, I have it if it's got Christopher Lee. And if it, you know, if it's within the uh, genres that I like. But I, I love it. Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee both. Now I don't have all of Christopher, Lee, Christopher Lee's movies. Not all of them are good, and uh, especially some of the stuff that's not within the genres that I like, you know. But um, but I do have a lot, and I and I anything that he's done as far as science fiction, horror, or fantasy, I, I do have. I like all of the Hammer stuff from the late seventies. Jimmy Sangster, is that the guy's yes, name? Yes, that's the guy's name. Anything with that, that was by him, I just I, I like, and I like all the Dracula movies. All those those five is there like five? I got them all on VHS. I used to watch them a lot. Yeah. Yep. Well, I started yeah. out. Good. I have them all on Blu-ray. I'm. Uh, I have a this huge uh, film collection. Pretty fun at age too. <laughs> In fact, that's what I kind of plan to do is to talk a little bit more about film, you know, the, the old classic horror sci-fi. I was just thinking today, I was just talking to somebody today about making a video about my VHS tape collection, going through and talking about the movies that I have on VHS. And that's some yeah. of the stuff I'm looking at. Here. That'd be cool. So I see you're back, Gratu. Yeah, I was in the Dollar General. Which apparently people oh. call the DG. I didn't, oh, know, I didn't that. know that. So I was me, I was commanded to get water, bottled water, and then I had to get uh, two can. Apparently they make candles shaped like numbers, so I had to get a five and a nine. Either that or get fifty nine individual candles, which <laughs> I would think would yeah. be a fire hazard. Yeah, that is. You and need then, a. Uh, 
Um, and I got, yeah, important provisions like that. So, so here's uh, one of the uh, guys that I could not remember uh, that I'm sure that you or your wife would be familiar with. You remember the band, the Stranglers, the British band? Of course. Okay, well, Hugh Cornwell, he was the main singer of the Stranglers, the main writer. Anyway, Hugh played at my restaurant, and I have to, I, I honestly can't say good things about him. <laughs> the guy was a jerk. He was a complete jerk. And, and you know, really? yeah, and I tell you, I think part of the problem was – he was he was angry at his promoter. He was angry with the tour. Um, he was angry that he was playing a place as small as mine, as opposed to a large theater. Um, I think that all kind of, you know, is what created the bad mood, because when he arrived, I, you know, again, he I think he was really hoping, based on his past and how popular the Stranglers were, that he was going to be you know, playing the Michigan theater, which is, you know, 3,500 people. And it's like, no, you're not drawing that many people. So he was just really pissy and, and grouchy and was not friendly at all. He was not a nice person to deal with. And, um, and at first I was kind of excited about having him there. And after his attitude, I was just like, you know what? You're an asshole. I don't, I don't even want to deal with you anymore. So I kind of didn't deal with him that much because I knew I was going to probably say something or do something I would regret because I didn't have the patience uh, for him. So, um, but another uh, name that was, that's fairly big is an artist. Now this is from the sixties and, and early seventies. Uh, his name is Sean Phillips. And Sean Phillips was a guy who co-wrote and did a lot of stuff with Donovan. And in fact, Sean Phillips, was uh, one of the guys that, in, in fact, there's photographs of him hanging out at uh, Abbey Road while the Beatles were recording Sgt. Pepper. And all of the sitar that you hear on any of the Donovan songs, that's Sean Phillips playing. And Sean was really good friends with Jimmy Page, who also uh, plays on a Donovan song, Hurdy Gurdy Man, Jimmy Page, you know, from Led Zeppelin. But anyway, um, Sean Phillips was a great, great guy. He was such a friendly, friendly man. He's uh, He lives in Texas. He's actually not British. A lot of people thought he was British because he was such a big part of the British scene and was over there introducing the sitar to all of these, these guys because he was actually doing it before George Harrison. And George Harrison uh, got introduced to it through the film Help, watching the, the guys in the movie play the sitar, and he was fascinated with it. And then, of course, hooked up with Ravi Shankar, who was the master of the sitar. But um, Sean Phillips was somebody who had also uh, studied under Ravi Shankar and was was a big uh, big influence on on music. But yeah, he was a really really cool guy. Loved having him there, um, and he packed the place. He packed the house. Um, and uh, yeah, and as far as some of the other smaller, I'm trying to think. There was a few bands that I know that went on like that became more popular after they played our place because our place was small to where, you know, if you're going to draw a big crowd, you weren't playing, playing at my place. I mean, we could have probably, I think 250 people, which is small, but, um, but those are a lot of times, like a lot of the music that I'm into now, um, I still love, you know, classic rock. Um, I've seen all those bands and um, most of them I've seen live. But so I was a big fan of the 60s music. I love psychedelic music um, in that era. Uh, I loved early 60s, you know, um, Brit pop, um, you know, and even the California scene. I, I love that music. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of the birds and um, a lot of that, that 60s music. But um, the later stuff, um, is more kind of independent music that I'm into. And um, most of those bands would play the small venues in Detroit. And I enjoyed those shows a lot more because they're just small and personal, you know, 
you go see a band like the magnetic fields or somebody and it's just a again it's like the, you know 150 people 200 people at the most and uh, those are the shows that i enjoy a lot more you know i really like those music videos the band that you played with has a great sound and uh, well, thanks the videos are really good man I, all of them i really like the one of the that I guess found footage that bicycle safety film of the kids <laughs> yeah. the mask, and then also obviously I really like the other one of the kids square dancing in the living room. Yeah, uh, the clogging. A great, a great reel of film, really, really great. Yeah, you know, I just happened to find some of that stuff on the internet, you know, on on YouTube, and it just kind of worked with the music. So that's what, what I did. I just simply filmed it and put the music to it, and that was it. And um, I've actually, I've got a couple more songs that I want to post. And I've got the, the footage that I found that I'm going to use. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, taking the time to do it. Mm -hmm. So right now I am going to post first the uh, video of going to the comic book shop and then going to the Tiki Bar. And uh, I'll put that on. And then after that, I probably will do another uh, one of our songs and just, you know, make it a video. But... Uh, <laughs> But I definitely want to get into um, doing like what you guys do, and that's showing your collections. You know, I, I've looked at a lot of your videos of you uh, showing some of your toys and your marks, figures, and I, and I was really into that as well. I mean, um, I had all of several of the marks play sets. I had the Vikings and the, the Knights. I had the metal oh. one that opened up, you know, like a suitcase. Yeah, that's what I have. I have a couple of those. Yeah, I, I love that. Now that I don't have anymore. I wish I did. I have all the figures, but I don't have the actual uh, metal case. And and I've you know gone online, and at some point I will buy one um, because I just I loved it. I have parts of it, um, and I have all the figures. Like I say, all the little you know the Vikings and the uh, the knights. Um, but I also had um, the Fort Apache fort. I have that still. Yep, me too. And yep, and I've also got the uh, that I got from my uncle, the um, Civil War Mark set, where it has the Confederates and the the Union, you know, fighting each yep, other. That was a great one. I had that as a kid, but I don't have it anymore. I would, yeah. I, really want, I would love to get the the Navarone set, but it's really expensive. Is it? I, I have really, that. I really want it. I, I really like the box. So so certain toys I want I want complete with the box, and mm -hmm. I really like that purple box art you know what i'm talking about it's like oh, that's the one i have yeah and that's so just that takes me back just like seeing like gratu a second ago on one of his pinball machines i think was hugo man of a thousand faces i saw that box and the box is just takes me back when i see it but but yeah that's so, the one that i want it's pretty expensive and hard to find so hang on to that okay then, yeah. and the hugo man of a thousand faces did you have that as a kid yeah i did okay yeah. so do i I have it. Yeah. I still have it. Oh, see, I wish I still had mine. So much of my stuff was gone in garage sales, and I didn't, I, I didn't care for it once I reached a certain age. So I let my mom do cleaning, and she'd come through my room and just take toys out and put them in for sale or give them to my cousins. So a lot of my stuff went that way. I didn't. I only saved certain things. But that's great that you saved it. I, I'm always looking for Hugo as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a great toy. I loved that one. And I don't have the box, but I do have the the, the figure with all of the attachments that you right. could stick on his face and the, the hair, the wig, and all of that. He was cool. That was a cool toy. It really was. Yeah. yeah it was very creative. So it was... I'm talking about Hugo, the man of a thousand, man of a thousand faces. Right. Werewolf by lunchtime. I saw my bloody Valentine when they were five pounds a ticket. Same with Picky Pixies. Okay. Hey, who saw them then? I Werewolf didn't... by lunchtime. He's in Australia. Oh, okay. They were amazing. Cleo saw them a few times, plus once when I immigrated to Oz. Maybe he's not from Australia, but he lives in Australia. To Oz from where? My wife's already asking the questions. <sighs> so. Uh, so anyway, I drove out to Dollar General, got some water and some candles for the cake. And uh, uh, so. Um, yeah, now what about the cake that uh, your wife ordered for you? How was that? 
oh, well, she ordered it. And then she was pretty mad because I was just doing a live stream and I had it sitting on the floor down there. I, I, <laughs> right. I was supposed to put it in the refrigerator. So I put it in the refrigerator and it was already cold and they must have put something in it that made it. It was still, plus it was cold outside. We were sitting on the steps. So it's, it, but we're, we wait until tonight. We're going to, um, okay, candles good. on it and all that garbage. Good. And, uh, and I got some garbage bags too. Now that I mentioned garbage, um, grew up in the UK, immigrated in 2006 is where we'll spend much time. So. <clears throat> So there's a there's a bottle of Muhair. God, my hand really does shake now. Muhair X. Let me get myself full screen. I figure the comic book fans will enjoy seeing this. Um Perfume, Mujer X. No, that's great. Made in Mexico. I'll put that out since it's a highly valuable collectible. I'm just going through those a drawer look, here. Those look uh, like street walkers on that bottle, don't they? Yeah, I know. They're I really don't good. understand. <laughs> I don't know who they're marketing that to. I think it was bought <laughs> in one of those voodoo shops, you know, where you buy the candles and Santeria kind of stuff. There's a little toy. Um, the kinds of these things in this drawer here. Uh, here's a, I don't know what this was from, but it's a pretty well sculpted Aquaman. Oh, that is. That's from an Aquaman set from the, I don't know, the late 60s. Um, oh, it yeah. can't be. Is it? I know there yeah. was a Justice League set. No, there was one Aquaman set that was like a like a, a water toy, and it came with that and a, either a, a, a dolphin, a shark, or a whale, if I remember right. I believe you, but I just I didn't have any idea this was that cool. You I know, mean, it's who, cool, but I didn't know it was sixty. You know who would know and who probably has it is that old guy that the not not old in age, the guy that used to come on the show that collected all the play sets and had all those figures, like he had the oh yeah, King yeah, that guy. I thought he was mainly into monster stuff, but not. Superior. He had that other stuff as well, and he probably has that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, what was his name? I I feel yeah. like it was Michael something. I can't remember it. Though. Oh, that's right. He just had a real name. He didn't have like a YouTube handle. Yeah, he emerged for just a little bit and then just disappeared. Yeah. Oh, well. Gods and spacemen in the ancient West. Um, it's, oh, he, wait, 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 wait. Uh, he's shooting. Um, I met my Aussie wife in London, got married and moved over here, being from here, being Perth, Australia. You must have seen Emil and the Sniffers. Yeah, we discovered that band on, on YouTube. They're Australian. They're really, really good. Yes, I saw them at a pub recently, and they were brilliant. Love Amy. <laughs> I saw this video. She's she's singing, and she just reaches up and smashes the fluorescent bulbs up, <laughs> lighting them above them. It's just like, which probably rains mercury down on her, but it was really <laughs> funny. Nice. I used to like a band called Zombie Ghost Train. I don't know that band. Um, I'm trying to figure out, should I just, because we're probably going to go to a restaurant at five, which is in an hour and a half. Should I just keep the stream going and come back or start a new stream? Uh, I'd say I probably start do, a new stream. Now that I have unlimited, I can just do 12-hour streams. I can just put a stream on the cat and just record 
am sleeping for hours. And that's the kind of thing I like to do. Like when I used to go to the buffet and I would eat extraordinary amounts of food, I figure I'll wring every second out of uh, StreamYard. That was around the time he moved there. What are you talking about? Start a new stream and give everyone an intermission. <laughs> she was saying you're keeping these guys hostage. <laughs> they probably have other things to do. Huh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't been know. A, there will be people that will want to come back maybe and see the cake or see you talk about dinner and wish you happy birthday. Yeah, I mean, they could always fast forward past the dead spots or I could put it on Drew while we go to the restaurant. It looks like it. I don't know if you saw the commotion. It's normally there's no cars downtown and there's a million cars. And I don't know how this might affect when we go to that rest. Or apparently it's prom tonight because there were all these people in prom dresses. Did, could you see that, or was it? And, and I didn't see it. No. I saw a girl in a prom dress flipping someone off. I, and <laughs> so apparently they must be doing something at the local movie theater before the Godzilla movie starts. Maybe all the prom people come there and have their picture taken. I don't know exactly. Where wow, the wasn't... Mom dance itself takes place, but we're dealing with a very small high school class that is probably not more than 30, 40 people, if even that. It's like a classroom that would be in a big city. It's the whole senior graduating class. Although I guess juniors might go along to a prom as dates. What do I know? But it just, there was a lot of commotion and the neighbor, oh, What's going on? What happened just now? Anyway, so that's, uh, I don't know. Look at this face on Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's punching you. <laughs> but in reality, he's, he's giving his yell. His head's supposed to be back like that. But uh, I can have him punch people out. Uh, uh, I, I hate that this, I'm tethered to this, let me, uh, cause this thing has um, died just now, but it, it came back quicker this time. Drew is wanting food. So yeah, maybe we do a, uh, an intermission. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to do an intermission. <laughs> whether people want to stay and talk while I'm gone or whether I just record a cat or a dog during that time. Well, well, or I might point it at the right side broadcasting feed. Um, while so real quick, people waiting to get in the Trump rally. The only problem is that is they might play a copyrighted song or two while they're waiting for him to come out on the stage. Then I get zapped on uh, YouTube for that. Um, yeah, I, well, I I'm going to go get something to eat and I'll come back later. That's Are you going to eat? Uh, that's cool. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to eat and I'll, I'll see you guys later. I'll come back later on if you come back, when you come back. All right. All right? Sounds cool. All right. Yeah. Talk to you later. Okay. See you later. So real quick, Gratu, your wife asked if uh, I if I was familiar with uh, Jordan Belson, filmmaker. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit. Uh he actually came to Ann Arbor years ago. Um, Ann Arbor has one of the longest um, running experimental independent film festivals in the United States. It started in 1963, I believe, and it's still going. And um, they would bring in a lot of different people that would do experimental films. They've changed the format a bit. It's changed a little bit through the years, but back in the 80s and 90s is when I was mainly going to it. Um, I don't go to it anymore. But um, anyway, uh, he came and uh, spoke one time at the uh, at the film festival. He had some of his films that he was showing. Um, yeah, they're 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 cool. A lot of like weird images and you know you could use like as a backdrop. What's the guy's name? Jordan Belson. I kind of sounds familiar, but yeah, he I don't was know. Uh, he was an older gentleman when I saw him. 
he's probably dead by now. He's got to be. And he was an experimental filmmaker? Yeah. Yeah. I saw a lot of really good film there and a lot of really bad film there. I mean, stuff that was unwatchable. That's the problem with some of the experimental stuff is, I mean, you know, they'll, uh, it, it could be anything. And my wife says I should start a new stream later and give everyone an intermission. And then Werewolf by Lunchtime says, my wife went to see Nick Cave recently, but I had to work. I was annoyed, but glad she saw him. And my wife says, oh, I love him. And then Werewolf says, it hurt me how much she raved about about it oh well then uh haha -ha, there's always next time mercy seat one of my favorite songs so many good ones stagger lee murder ballads stop recording <laughs> yes the, those are sweet what's the one with the bunny that's mrs werewolf's favorite the death of Bunny Monroe? I mentioned it to Gratu like 10 years ago. Nah, just Google it. Breathless, amazing song. Check it out. Okay. Nah, I don't really know what they're talking about. Um, this They're talking about Nick Cave? Yeah, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Yeah, I, oh, I know Nick Cave, yeah, but Stagger Lee is obviously, a, I guess he covered Stagger Lee. Yeah, yeah, I know Nick Cave. I don't have extensive knowledge of him, but I know he's... Yeah, I like some of his stuff. And I like the other band that he uh, formed. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, it's kind of a side Bad project. Seeds. No, it was another uh, group that... Uh, it was a side project that he did just a few years ago. And it's, it's oh. a good album. Yeah, um... What, what kind of music do you listen to most often? Um, you know, it's a, it's an array of a lot of different stuff. I, um, I, I never listen to the radio. I never listen to anything that's, uh, you know, put out by the, uh, all the garbage that's, you know, that you're hearing. I mean, the mainstream stuff, the stuff I'm listening to is much more of the indie music, small labels, um, you know, and it just varies from different. And then you know, I still like a lot of, of course, the old uh, music from the 80s and the 70s and the 60s. I love a lot of the uh, 60s psychedelia. Got a huge collection of uh, psychedelic bands from the 60s, American and uh, British, and from all over, actually. Yeah. There's a good radio station that I can pick up during the day from Fort Dodge that plays real old country and it's amazing. Oh yeah, the good stuff. But sometimes the 40s, uh, 50s, 60s, uh, maybe a little from the 70s, but it's obviously meant for very old farmers to listen to, but I really love it. And uh, cause they'll do farm reports during the day that go on for a long, long time. And uh, um, that's good, but yeah, mostly I don't. Um, I'm constantly discovering, putting together discs from YouTube. I record right from YouTube, and okay, um, you, you're listening to that Seaberg 1000 in your office, the website. Yeah. And I'm, I've been recording hours and hours of right from the Seaberg records. Um, a Christmas playlist. I forget the guy's name, but I, I've yes. found it before. I'm sure. Yes, I, I. Yep, I belong to that same uh, YouTube channel. It's like Vulture's Nest or something like that. I don't remember. Some. I'll. Next time I, I can't get to it right now, but I'll I'll tell the viewers that name when I next encounter it. So they're up. Uh, they're they're way they've got this big crowd. He's gonna speak at seven o'clock Eastern time, six o'clock my time. So, um, 
probably what will happen in about an hour. I guess I'll cut the feed and then I'll start another one. I'll watch the Trump rally and then I'll maybe I'll come back late tonight. There's a lot of people that are saying, ah, we're, I'm doing yard work and everything. And then they can come on or they'll come up with another excuse. <laughs> but uh, right. I'm doing night work. Uh, but, that sounds good. I'll uh, yeah. I'll be back then. I'll come back. I'll be checking. You yeah, out. yeah. I'm I'm gonna. I uh, I guess yeah. Yeah, I'll get, I guess I I need to spend some time with her and and we'll only promise, man. I hope if that we might have to go to a different restaurant if it's that crowded. Hopefully, those prom people will disperse to some other location because. <laughs> <laughs> Or they're not all getting. No one's gonna eat in a barbecue restaurant for their prom date. I don't think. But where do you? Well, what fancy restaurant do you go when you have a, a small prom town. in a small town? You don't go to Subway. <laughs> you don't go to. There's a Mexican restaurant, but it's it's an old gas station. It's between, <laughs> that's not where you go wearing a tuxedo. Where do you? You'll have to go to a neighboring town. But in any neighboring town is at least a 30 minute drive. Wow. And these are young drivers, you know, because they're high school. I don't, know. I don't know what they do, but I know to this is one, one restaurant was closed there next to the theater. And now I know why, because there was, it's prom day. So anyway. Well, I, hope, I hope that young girl wasn't flipping off her date. That would, uh... Uh, someone riding by. And then I, oh, saw okay. I tried to get a picture of the neighbor's car. I, I don't, I don't, it's some cool uh, muscle car. He doesn't take it out of the garage much, but I saw him turning. It's a green car. I think it's a road runner. I, I'm not entirely sure. It's some, some fancy muscle car. That's only the second time I've seen it. So, uh, man, that's unbelievable. This shop. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love um, it, Kevin. I was, I was going to talk earlier. You know, people are talking about conventions and things. I've got a giant three-car garage. It's big enough to have bands play in it. And I always thought, what if a bunch of people got together and we had like a convention in the garage? But I, I don't know the logistics of that. Or you should I do that. I, uh, there's another YouTuber that did that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know. Of course, there's not, you know, I don't know if I'd get people from the neighboring city or if some of you guys could come or, I mean, I've got friends that are all over the place. You guys are all set. Um, oh, let's see what we're reading in the comments here. Hold on a second. Uh, oops. We're not, I'm not getting you in trouble, Dr. Fives, keeping you on too long, am I? Uh, let's see. My parents bought me the Velvet Underground's loaded album for my birthday, says Werewolf by Lunchtime. Cleo imagines Dr. Fives listening to a lot of goth and death rock. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, um... I saw Oh, I'm sorry, but I was I, no. You go yeah, ahead. I mean, I was I was definitely into, and I, and I still enjoy um, Love and Rockets and The Cure and and Bauhaus and bands like that. Um, you know, Echo and the Bunnymen, uh, Morrissey. Um, you know, the list goes on. Though those bands of the '80s. Um, yeah. You know, I was I was into that, and uh, in fact, I did some uh, um, photography for uh, Love and Rockets. And uh, they're really, really cool guys. I, I hear that P Peter Murphy's a piece of work. I mean, I hear he's difficult to get along with. In fact, that's why they constantly keep getting back together and then breaking up, getting back and breaking up. He's really Love and Rockets was named after the comic book or was it the other way around? No, I believe it was, um, I think the, the comic book came first. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Susie and the Banshees, that's oh yeah, I, mean, love I saw Susie and the Banshees at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Fucking amazing! Yeah, I always love Susie and the Banshees. Yeah, I love Susie and the Banshees. That's she says. That's awesome, lover. There, man. No one ever talks about this band, but I really liked them. I everyone back then they were, I guess, big. But I, I thought, oh, that's probably crap. And I listened to it, and I loved it. it was the Jesus and Mary Chain? I liked 
them. Yeah. The Sonic person. Yeah, Juju they were from, was a masterpiece. They were from Scotland, Jesus and the Mary Chain. They were a Scottish band. That is that is the fancy restaurant, LOL. <laughs> I guess it is, you know. Holy smoke. Dog is going after the cat here. Is there a golf course with a country club? There is a golf course. Maybe they go to the American Legion. I've never been there. There's got to be a place that's nice, but I mean, there's no place to dance on the town square. I think it looked like they were congregating around the movie theater. The, I know I saw Godzilla's playing there at seven, so they're not all going to go to see Godzilla on their prom night. So they'll be cleared out, I think, by then. I don't know what they're doing. I saw The Cure on Disintegration Tour. Although I prefer kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me stuff. I prefer kiss. I prefer kiss me, kiss me, kiss me stuff. Oh, I thought at first <laughs> I prefer the band kiss. I, <laughs> I guess that's a song by the cure. No, man, they're probably going to be at the BBQ restaurant or the Mexican restaurant. There is a golf course. I've never seen it. I've never, there's, there's a nice town. That's not far away actually with expensive properties i love the cure yeah those those are my two favorites can you imagine the comic book that john goris drew do you can you imagine if he drew for dc that would be, i would buy it he could have already uh, he could already had the comic book done with all these pieces of art how, how i i i i want to see a video john if you're watching where you draw these I want you to put a camera and I want to actually see you draw live because it will be funny as hell to see it transform from a U.S. mail sticker to that. And I just want to see if, thank you for doing that, uh, by the way, Kevin. Uh, I want to see how, because I, how long do you think it takes them to do each sticker? Like a minute and a half, five minutes? What do you think? Kevin? I have no How long idea. Do you think it take? I would say I at, no least, at least more than five minutes. I think it he's take got me it, he's got it down to a science. My wife asked, What about a Christian death? Um, girls like the band Christian Death, I've noticed. When I was in the heavy metal club days, I used to always request Just Like Heaven by The Cure every night, pretty much. He should make a comic book. Absolutely. The man is too cool. <laughs> have you, uh, Dr. Fives, have you gone and watched his his cartoons on the John Goris channel on YouTube? Absolutely. I love them. If you watch enough, you just get into this hypnotic trance. It's like wonderful. <laughs> if you just let him play in an endless stream. <laughs> It's so yeah, great. I, love uh, I, I can't believe I, I, love I that know whole... someone like that. It's like knowing Richard Corbin or something. Yeah, it has this whole underground kind of gorilla, uh, you know, style and, to it. And um, yeah, um, yeah, and people know who he is. I just, it's, it's hard to, I, I can't believe he he needs more subscribers because he should be famous. Why is Taylor Swift a billionaire? I don't even get it. Literally, she's, she's a billionaire. Yeah, and she's pushed by the machine. She's got this massive marketing machine pushing her. It's it's the way it's always worked for the last you know 30, 40 years, um, where there's certain artists. You know, there was what there was a time in America where a DJ could literally grab a forty five, start playing it. And it would take off, and all of a sudden, that person would become a rock star because people liked it. That's you know, since all of the radio stations now are owned by you know basically one company, they're going to push push their artists. So that's the problem you have with the whole machine now is that somebody like Taylor Swift, they're going to tell all of these kids that drink the Kool Aid, hey, she's amazing. You will love her, and you will love everything she does. And of course, they do. They go, oh, you're right. And that's all they see. That's all they know. And they just think she's the greatest thing in the world. But we all know that she's like um, Britney Spears. She's going to be flash in the pan. But, you know, Britney Spears in the late 90s, some of her songs were really good. 
But Taylor, uh, I could see, I mean, they really were. I know it sounds asinine, but her, her, her hits in the late 90s were pretty good. And that song, Toxic, is a really, has a really cool sound to it. Um, yeah, but just right now she's like a burnout uh, mental patient. Uh, obviously, horrible things happen to her from her family and her whoever's runs her. And she's you, you go on Instagram and it's like, oh, there, there she is naked. And she's just like constantly taking naked pictures of herself. It's like uh, kind of horrifying. Yeah, yeah, F she seems Swift to be a real mess. Of Sir Chloe, hello. Have you have you seen this uh, band called Sir Chloe? No, I'm not familiar no, with them. Look, look up Sir Chloe. Um, it's. I will. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, on fr my first instinct is to hate it because you know she's calling herself Sir Chloe, and it's like a little gender bending and. Uh, but to me, it sounds like uh, it, it, it it has a great sound. I mean, it, but she's, I don't know. She does weird, it's, it's. I think it's really good. And I'm discussed, I keep getting these things that pop up on Instagram, that ba different bands, and I'll go to their profile and I'll like them. There's, there's some good stuff coming out now that, Amel and the Sniffers, that they were good. And I seems like we discovered oh Cleo, who was the the African American singer with the big giant afro that we discovered about around that same time? Uh she was a, she's this hilarious punk rocker. It was pretty good. Uh she'll remember the name. <laughs> this is like I have dreams where I'm in a place like this, where I'm in a thrift store and it has all this kind of stuff. And then I wake up and then, oh, you got super chicken. <laughs> that that's pretty great. So these are sold and they look like soda cans and these things fit inside them. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. I don't know. Cleo may not be watching right now, but uh, I think it's censoring me from telling you, LOL. Oh, is there, maybe the name of the band is is a curse word? <laughs> so she can't type it in the chat. That's unfortunate. It's hard to promote your band if you've got a word in your, the name of your band that keeps you from saying it. <laughs> um, well, well, can you uh, put some asterisks in the in it to try to fool the AI bots? <laughs> oh well. Oh, uh, maybe you're trying to tell me the name of the song. I think the song had curse word, a curse word in it. But oh well. Dude, it censored me even with asterisks. Wow. Um, that's, that's ridiculous. The name of the band or the song that we liked. <laughs> that's that's I, obviously the band does not want you to listen to a band like that. Apparently, starts with P. Okay, well, the band. What? Well, get just spell it one letter at a time. What's the next letter? Just. We'll spell it out that way. P. <laughs> What's the second letter? <laughs> or you can give it to us. Oh, oh, okay. So it's like, like, oh, really? You can't say that on YouTube. Okay, like the the lady in in uh, Goldfinger. P. Yep. Okay, all right. And yep. then Gillette. Okay, so yeah. it's. All right, we get it. Uh, Pousse, we won't say it correctly so they don't get mad at us. Gillette. Okay, they were good. That's another band to look up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're ever going to become popular, but uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. 
There was that Russian band that also used that uh, word. What were they called? Do you remember them? The Russian girls? Oh, yeah. The, they were. And it uh, was. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, that's where they they were playing half naked in a church and they got arrested and put in prison for a little while. And there was a documentary about that. And everyone was saying how horrible um, Putin was for that. But in all honesty, <laughs> they could have played somewhere other than a church. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think they should be put in prison, but I kind of, it's kind of nice to have some values in your country. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I'll take, the, I'll take the other side. My wife says I really like her. Yeah, I just, yeah. So there is some actually uh, good stuff happening today. and Yeah, I agree. There is. And uh, but a lot of them, of course, are not popular. They're they're still in that, you know, kind of underground fringe and you got to really seek them out. But, yeah, there's a lot of bands that I like that nobody's heard of. Yeah. That's one thing I'd like to do, you know, when we get together on Thursday nights is. Uh, is try to enter try to help each other out you know what is actually good out there it's not just in comic books but in bands and culture what movies are actually watchable so that we can keep our sanity in this horrible uh, social society degenerating into socialism and and um ugliness be nice to you know, and also show stuff from the past, but I kind of would like there to be some good new stuff too. Um, yeah. So I think I'm trying to think. Well, if he goes on at six o'clock, I might I might come back at like seven thirty Central Time and start a second uh, stream, um, and that'll okay. give everyone a chance. To the either that oh look at all this cool stuff. You're also that all monsters attack is great. It is. I have that. Did you seek that out after I showed it? Are you no, I got you that from. It? No, I just got this from uh, Ron from over at Monster Bash. Oh, okay. See, he has that, and he's selling it. Did he just sell sell one to you, or does he have an ad showing it? No, I think he he had one in stock, and I bought it from him. Oh, okay, yeah, I was he's a good a guy. Back. It's a Meyer says, Cleo. I looked up Keith Morris. He's from Hermosa Beach. I've always liked the Circle Jerks. Simon is also a big fan of the band and era. I. I know of the Circle Jerks, but I wouldn't be able to tell you if I've heard one of their songs. I met him and he talked to me. He was nice. Yeah, I don't. The the cramps are what I was mainly into. I think uh, I'm gonna watch this today. Oh that oh yeah, that's the actual VHS. Uh, yeah, I have that, or I have a a bootleg of it. Most all the spook show stuff is going to be on the uh, the disc of um, Monsters Crash the Pajama Party disc, I think, whatever that's called. The that one disc they put out of spook show stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, I have that one as well. I love the um, something weird video. Yeah, they. Um, yeah, the, yeah, Lisa Petrucci's keeping it open. and um, Is that his wife? Oh, uh, yeah, I have a... There's a record album they put out of the Spook Show, and then there's an intermission. There's two records that Something Weird put out. Is that right, Kevin? I, don't, I only have one. You have the... The I one that's you, this, yeah, yeah, because I I have one in, on hold there. Yeah, that's the only one I know about or I have. Okay, well, there's another one 
and it's someone's got it on YouTube. I I've got it in one of my playlists, so you can just listen to it right off oh, YouTube. Or oh yeah, I know what you're talking about now. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so yeah. it has like more of the drive-in stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah, there is that record. Yeah. Um, let's see. He understood kids like me. LOL. When I was a young. Yeah, you. But you also met the the main guy of the mentors, right? He was real nice. Um, she's got all kinds of stories. Hopefully, when I come on later tonight, she'll come on too, and she can tell stories. That'll be a yeah. highlight. She, she needs to come, come on. on very often on this show. She needs but to I'm come. I'm trying on. to get her to come on as a regular uh, feature. Sure, that'd be great. So, all right, uh, all right, brought you. So then I'll go ahead right. and uh, check yeah, out. I'm gonna close out. Okay, and I will. Uh, I'll see you later. All right, take care. See you. All right, happy birthday again. Uh, happy, yeah. Thank you. I was gonna say happy birthday back. I should because your birthday was a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to both of us. Take care. Thanks. She says, "El Duce was like my dad." <laughs> That yeah, yeah. People well, probably that. don't understand that 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 he was actually a nice guy. It's probably hard to explain that. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, solo layout. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's yeah. So, so there's a few things that aren't in the box. Are, are those the, the action figures from the pre code horror aren't in the box? And that isn't in the box. And that Erie Publications poster book doesn't fit in the box. But other than no, that, everything's figures, in the box. Those figures fit in there. Oh. Oh, okay. Then I really have reduced what's. I've really reduced my whole pile a lot, haven't I? Yeah, this booklet is in that with that record too. Oh, neat! Actually, I haven't reduced it. It's thanks to wonderful folks out there in Television Land, all you cool friends. That's this has been a marvelous birthday. Now I I still have a wonderful dinner and a cake left, and then I'll come back tonight and finish out the the birthday party. Um, Uh, so let me see here um, the dog is walking on me the dog is telling me to stop the stream and feed her and then all the <laughs> she, she she puts her her paw right uh, right below your rib cage <laughs> right where it really hurts Okay, well, I'll, I'll be back, uh, and, uh, and I'll see you maybe will, uh, later tonight. What's that? I'll see you maybe later tonight. All right, take care. <laughs> all right. Be uh, mauled here. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, guys. Well, uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, later tonight, after the, guys all turn in, tune into Right Side Broadcasting. Watch the Trump rally. Uh, I don't know when the next stream will start. I'll put a time on there, but it'll actually start as soon as Trump walks off the stage to uh, hold on. I'm coming by uh, Sam and Dave. When, when Sa the Sam and Dave music starts, I'll come on and uh, eat cake and uh, possibly we'll hear all kinds of cool stories from Cleo and whoever else comes on this evening. Who Hopefully it'll be you. But let's go ahead and end this stream if I remember how to do it. End stream.